Welcome to my channel, if you have already seen this manga, then I specially made a continuation at your request, so I advise you to watch to the end, enjoy watching. The hero was lost in his thoughts and thought about what he would do if he one day received superpowers. But it was necessary to return to reality, since here the train arrived at Shindurum Station. The hero went inside, he was an introvert by character type and his name was Kim San. His life was not filled with interesting events, and the grey routine was repeated every day. The only thing that interested him in this life was Manawas, and he spent all the money that appeared on them. He liked them because in mangas he was very attracted to charismatic villains, not pious heroes. Kim San was not at all interested in the heroes who always saved the city's residents. Despite the fact that at first it was not clear to him why he thought this way, after a short time he figured it out. After all Kim believed that being a hero was simply humiliating, and the great potential of superpowers should not be wasted like that. But other people did not understand him, and even a small number of friends did not share these opinions. A week ago, neither of us walked home from school as usual and discussed the computer game League of Legends. Their dialogue mostly revolved around this until someone addressed them. Kim San was very scared when he heard this voice, because he realized that it was a gang of thugs from another school. One of them asked Kim Sun if he wanted to hang out with the older students. This group of high school students from Tion School, its members had extremely disgusting characters. Kim San and his friend realized this, and for some time they could not even move out of fear. When these scoundrels came closer, they beat Kim San and his friend very badly. Moreover, this beating was very brutal, and at some point Kim even thought that he might die. According to these same people, they did all this just for fun and they didn't need money. Then the guy really thought that he was going to die, but before his death he decided to do at least something. He grabbed some small pebble on the floor and decided to throw it straight at his offender. Despite the fact that it was not possible to swing very strongly, this stone still flew into his head at high speed. Obviously, the one who was hit by this stone was very angry. He grabbed Kim San's head and asked what it was, assuming it was dried dog shit. Kim asked him to forgive him and began to apologize, but the high school student said that if San eats this item, he will forgive him. The guy didn't even understand what kind of object it was and whether it was edible. But at the same time, he understood that he had no other choice, and would have to adapt. Literally a moment later, the bastard had already limited Kim San's movement and began to shove this object into his mouth. The guy didn't remember what happened after that, at such moments he simply hated being an orphan. After all, no one helped him, and for seven whole days he was on the verge of passing out. But nevertheless, one day Kim San woke up and still felt terrible. The mobile phone that was lying next to him suddenly rang, and the guy realized that he needed to start moving. There was an unpleasant sensation in my mouth that felt like there was some sand in there. The guy got out of bed and began to go to the refrigerator because he was terribly hungry. Despite the fact that there was only carbonated coke, Kim realized that he would have to take at least that. After drinking one can, he thought that it was impossible to constantly eat such rubbish instead of breakfast. After that, he squeezed this jar in his hand and thought about what to do next. He threw this jar away, he realized that Kolya had not been able to quench his thirst and he needed to go find water. He threw this can past the trash can, but what was interesting was something completely different. After the guy squeezed it in his hand, it turned into a very thin piece of iron. It was already evening and Kim San went outside to find water for himself. Despite the fact that all the stores were already closed, he still tried to find at least one and was thinking at the same time. He remembered that moment as an opponent who was much stronger than him mocked him. He really liked what was happening in front of him, and he was sincerely happy about it. Grabbing Kim San by the head, he tried to push that incomprehensible object down his throat. When the guy remembered this, he suddenly stopped near the pillar, because he felt very unpleasant. He realized that the more he thought about it, the angrier he became. And on top of everything, he felt bad for himself, because, in his opinion, he behaved shamefully. He waved his hand to the side and said that if only he knew how to fight well, everything would be different. But suddenly Kim realized that he hit the pillar that stood nearby with his hand. When he turned his head, he saw that multiple cracks had appeared on this pillar, and it could barely stand. And when I decided to examine it better, I noticed that the damage had spread along the entire length of the pillar. Then, at the very top of this pillar, something lit up, and a bright flash illuminated everything around the hero. At this moment, a bright light appeared in every room that was connected to this network. 
The light was on even for those who did not have it turned on, and literally half a second later it disappeared for everyone in the apartment. Kim San heard everyone shouting very angrily that Sveta had suddenly disappeared. The guy listened to all these screams in fear, and only after a short time he realized that he was the culprit of all this. He also very quickly realized that he needed to run away, as people began to talk about calling the police. He began to run as fast as he could and still could not understand how this could even happen. The guy was very scared, because he understood that he would have to bear responsibility for what he had done. A few minutes later he was already at home, and there was a gorilla light in his apartment since he was in a different area. When he entered his home, at about the same moment he realized what powers he had. He looked at his hands and could not believe that this really happened to him. All due to the fact that in this very hand was the can that he squeezed before leaving the apartment. He decided to find another object to test his strength on it. Finding a 501 coin, he placed it in his palm to squeeze it later. And when he did this, he didn't even feel how easily he crushed this coin. He was very frightened by the fact that this coin turned into something incomprehensible, and that he squeezed it like a piece of paper. After that, he took some book that was at hand, since it was even more difficult to break it. Taking this book in his hands, he easily divided it into two parts without even feeling anything. Walking into the kitchen, he performed the same action but with a heavy-duty non-stick frying pan. Still in the same kitchen, he thought that he needed to try something else. But this action was already much more difficult, and required more willpower. He took one of the strongest and sharpest kitchen knives and prepared to carry out one of the checks. Kim San understood that if this worked, then he would definitely believe that he had superpowers. But it was difficult to do this, because all this could only be some kind of hallucination. The guy closed his eyes and told himself that he could and only needed to act. He swung the knife even harder, and the blade pierced his hand at great speed. When the guy opened his eyes, he felt like some object was flying away from him at a great distance. In front of him, he saw a completely intact hand and a knife from which a huge part of the blade had broken off. Kim realized that he really had superpowers, and several at once. He did not understand why this happened, but he was sure that he had now become a superman. And he wondered what the limit of his capabilities was, he prepared himself and looked around to make sure that no one was there. He then crouched down very hard to jump high, while simultaneously testing how high he could get. He thought about what might break when he falls back. But he still decided to jump because he would survive a fall from 5 meters. He strained with all his strength to direct maximum effort to his legs. Within a moment, he pushed off with great force from the place where he stood. He flew so high and moved so fast that the spreading air made his head very hot. He couldn't even open his eyes because of the flow of air that surrounded him. Opening his eyes, the guy thought that he had flown up at least 30 meters and decided to check it out. But when he opened his eyes slightly, what he saw in front of him made him open them completely. From the angle at which he was now, one could see the entire mainland of Korea and another part of the globe. Clear to the guy that he was now in space, and felt that fire due to the fact that he had overcome the Earth's atmosphere. But more than that, it was strange why Kim San could speak here, and moreover, breathe. Suddenly the guy felt that he began to move a little in space. Within a few seconds, this movement became very fast, and his body flew towards the Earth. The speed picked up more and more, and very soon Kim San began to feel the heat again. If you looked at it from the outside, it looked like a meteorite. The guy's body was heated to several thousand degrees, and he was a short distance from a place in the desert in China. A rather large explosion occurred in this desert when Kim San finally reached the sand. He felt really bad when he landed, and his body was even a little buried in sand. Kim didn't remember how many days he lay here unconscious, but it seemed to him that every bone was already broken. However, when the guy woke up, he realized that he had been completely fine all this time. He also realized that it was quite easy to get home because you just had to run. A few minutes later he was already sitting at home, and did not know what to do with all these abilities. He was just watching TV where they were talking about the hip-hop queen competition. The guy started flipping through these channels, since he was not at all interested in music news. But suddenly one of the channels was talking about a sudden power outage. They said that the cause of the breakdown was the breakdown of a lamp post that someone had deliberately damaged. Kim San didn't really want to listen to this, so he switched to a channel that was talking about the hero. Then the guy remembered that in this world there are several types of superhumans. Some of them constantly appear in reports and on television in general, 
and they constantly say that they will save everyone. This time they showed a hero who defended the city and constantly left his life in danger. Kim was not at all interested in hearing about this, and he did not understand why these protective heroes were so popular. He would like no one else to know about them, and he considered them defective. And when Kim noticed the villain whom this hero had caught, he realized that if he had become a villain, he would have done better. Literally a few seconds after he thought about it, the guy realized that he had such an opportunity. After all, now nothing was impossible for him, if even this scum was considered a villain, then Kim could become much better. He thought that he could become a cool and attractive villain and fight these uninteresting heroes. He returned to his knowledge that he received from comics. There, according to the plot, the villains were always rich and had murderous charisma. And the heroes were doing completely different, not so interesting things. They usually dealt with problems and received insults from antagonists. While the government and ordinary citizens grumbled why the villains were attacking them at all. At that moment, Kim didn't understand why become a boring hero and savior, because no matter how you look at it, the villain is cooler. Every time I closed the manhwa, the guy thought that these charming villains inspired him. After all, he dreamed of becoming one of these cool villains, and now Kim San has already decided everything. He promised himself that he would definitely become a villain, and would also show this world what he was capable of. Meanwhile, three days have passed since the guy decided to become a villain. But he still wanted to go to school for classes and listen to his teacher's uninteresting stories. He was determined to turn into a villain, but did not know where to start or what to do. After all, he had not yet managed to make any grandiose plans, and there was no particular desire. The lesson ended and there was noise in the class as everyone was deciding what to do next. A friend named Jun Siab approached the guy and asked how he was doing. He asked why the hero did not come to school, and suggested that it seemed that the guy was sick. But Kim said that he was a little unwell and asked his friend how he was doing. Jun said that everything was fine with him, and if they had fought equally with those idiots, he would have killed them. Kim said that he was lying further than he could see, and suddenly Kim Sun's girlfriend appeared behind his friend's back. The moment the guy saw Ji Yoon, he was very embarrassed because he really liked that girl. The girl asked Kim why he skipped so often, and Jun Saab, meanwhile, asked why she didn't say hello to him. Well then the girl said that it looked like Jun was jealous, well then that guy asked the girl to take her hand off his shoulder. Meanwhile, Kim San said that he was a little busy, and everyone heard his voice trembling. Then Ji asked the guy not to miss classes and said that she would keep an eye on him, after which she said goodbye. When she left Jun said that this girl has a pretty cute face, and asked the guy if it was worth seducing her. In a trembling voice, Kim said that he was not particularly sure, and told Jun that he probably shouldn't do this. His friend laughed and said that it was already obvious to everyone that Kim San was in love with this girl. He did not have time to finish this sentence because someone hit the school board very hard with his hand. The person who did this asked everyone who was in the class why they were so noisy. He asked if everyone remembered that today was the day of collecting money, and said that they needed to deal with this quickly and get back to their business. He reminded that they collect 101 from each person per week, and since this is not enough, the class should be grateful. Kim San really didn't like the fact that they were paying for the third year, and they were also walking around the class and yelling at everyone. Moreover, 501 per week is actually quite a large amount for students. When one of these high school students passed by June, he hurried him and the guy said in a frightened voice that he would now give everything up. Kim San is already fed up with this gang of bandits and he decides to kick their ass now that he has the strength. When one of these men approached Ji, she said that she would give 501 and wished them to get rich. Kim really didn't like that the bandits dared to introduce themselves to his beloved. He watched as they came closer and closer to his desk. The guy thought that if he wanted, he would turn these stinking skunks into a ram's horn. When they got close enough, Kim San told them to get lost. At first, the high school student did not hear what the guy told him at all. Then the guy looked at him with an angry face and said that if he doesn't want to die, then let him get lost right now. But that student again did not hear anything and asked Kim again what he said. He added that this guy's voice was like that of a bug, and ordered him to repeat it again. The student bent over to him and told the guy to stop talking and quickly put the money in the cup. The guy put down his 501 and regretted that he had not just beaten up all these high school students. One of them slapped the guy on the head and told him to behave decently, after which the bandits left the class. 
After them, Jun shouted in a low voice that he would beat them all right now if he wanted. Kim San looked at his friend and realized that he was even more timid than himself. Meanwhile, it was already late in the evening, and the guy thought about something. He thought that at least he had become a superman, but inside nothing had changed at all, he was still the same pathetic coward. While thinking about this, he suddenly picked up a stone that was lying on the road near him. Then he squeezed it in his hand, and this action turned this very stone into literal powder. With Kim's strength, he could grind stones into powder and the skulls of his enemies into dust, but he was still mentally weak. It was unpleasant for him to realize that he was even scared of the punks who demanded 501 from him. Then he began to think about where to start his villainous path. The guy very quickly realized that he could easily do the same fundraising. He jumped up from the bench he was sitting on and said that extortion and collecting money is something he can handle. Kim realized that he would take away the money using his power, but there was still one problem. The guy understood that it was wrong to take money from ordinary people. So he needed to do this to whiten his conscience. The idea came to mind that you can take money from the school gang, because this money is already theirs. When the guy came home after training, he already had something to do. He sewed a mask for himself from a small piece of black fabric. It was quite a difficult and painstaking task, but the guy was quite motivated. A few hours later, he practically had the first version of the villain's mask. This mask was held on by a small white elastic band and covered the small area around Kim's eyes. When he put it on and looked in the mirror, he realized that he looked like a real villain. Kim San began to talk to himself and choose some pseudonym for himself, most of all he liked Mark the First. Then he fell silent for a while and simply looked at the mask that was in his hands. After that, he turned to the imaginary hero and ordered everyone around him not to move. But as soon as he said this, one of the fastenings on the mask suddenly fell off. With the mask, everything turned out completely different from what Kim San imagined, and he was glad that no one saw this failure. He had a plan B in case the mask did not want to stay in front of his eyes. Instead, he used an ordinary mask, since previously the villains had only used them. Every day, Kim Asana ran circles around Tion's school, but as luck would have it, few scumbags gathered there. Sometimes he encountered other bandits, and once he even approached them from afar. Well, when they looked in his direction and asked what he had just blurted out, everything in the guy's head changed. He immediately turned around and walked as far away from that place as possible. He was very frightened by the faces of these bandits, and despite his extraterrestrial powers, he was simply terribly afraid of them. The guy had been wandering around the alleys at night for the second week now and hadn't robbed anyone. Despite the fact that he was already accustomed to the disgusting faces of the bandits, he was still afraid of them, he was scared to stand next to them. Therefore, he began to look for other enemies with whom everything would be much simpler. One day he met members of the school Taeyang, and they didn't seem to look as scary as those bandits. He told himself that now he needed to show all his charisma, and vowed that now he would do everything possible. Meanwhile, those two students were talking among themselves about the Nanju school students they despised. But suddenly they noticed that some guy started talking to them and tried to ask something. Closer to them, he told them to immediately give them all the money, and said that if he had to search, he would beat him for every ten one he found. He was proud of himself for daring to say it, but his voice was still quite scared. Those guys didn't even understand how to react to such threats from the little guy. One of them said that this idiot was talking, and the second laughed very loudly. They asked the guy why he was wearing a mask, and when Kim wanted to answer something, his voice began to shake again. Coming closer to Kim San, they asked how much money he had, and began to threaten that now I would beat him. The guy was scared, as these two unfamiliar students, who were clearly older, were coming closer and closer. One of them asked why Kim was so scared if he was so brave in conversation. One of them waved his bell and said that he should be beaten before they take all his money. But suddenly someone grabbed this student's hand and said that it was time to stop. The bandit did not understand why he could not move this hand and looked towards the problem. In front of him, he saw a man who said that he usually does not interfere in children's squabbles. He also added that another person is responsible for protecting teenagers, but this time it's worth making an exception. Before Kim San there was a hero named Respol, and he told the bandits that this time he could not pass by. This hero immediately threw his opponents a little to the side and they began to retreat. One of the schoolchildren immediately told his friend that they needed to leave, because in front of him was a real hero. 
Well then his friend said that despite the fact that he is a hero, he is the same person as them. At the same time, he took out a knife and began to threaten him, and Kim Sag thought about what he had only recently seen in the news about this hero. Then the representative said that the youth these days are really very cruel, and said that he was very disappointed. Then one of the students began to shout and say that he would not be afraid to use this knife against Respol. He began to run towards the hero and at that moment Respol he said it shouldn't be done. The student pointed his knife directly towards the enemy, or Respol, in turn, only put his finger in the path of this knife. Then the heroes ran their finger along the blade of this knife and a small explosion occurred. After this explosion, part of the knife blade flew off to the side, and he said that this was already an attempted murder. He further informed the student that at first he wanted to let them go, but now he would not tolerate this. He gave only one slap, but even from that the student flew several meters to the side. A friend is a student who stood aside all this time and looked at how his friend's body fell to the floor. Then the hero told the yellow-haired one to take his friend under the armpit and leave here as quickly as possible. He also said that real men fight with their fists, and from now on there is no need to use a knife in fights. Well then the yellow-haired one said that they would still see who would win who, and said that he would not leave it just like that. Then he asked what he had just said, and also asked what they were going to do to him. But then the yellow-haired man's face became kinder and he said that the heroes had heard everything and wished him a good journey. They began to leave and at the same time the hero said that it was necessary to amend the law on minors. After he dealt with these opponents, he turned his head towards Kim. He asked him why he wanted to take money from these students at such a young age. The hero said that it was necessary to choose the victim wisely, adding that at that age it is not at all worth doing such things. After that, he asked Kim San why he was silent and whether he was hurt. Well, the guy didn't answer anything, then the hero began to leave and said that to become a bandit you need to gain strength. He also added that he would not recommend becoming a villain, because then he would have to deal with him. Who remained in that place and thought only that this situation turned out to be quite shameful. The feeling of this very shame consumed San, and he became disappointed in himself and was very angry at his own weakness. This was the first time he experienced such intense anger, because he had once told himself that he would rather die than accept help from a hero. Suddenly a voice in his head ordered him to simply kill the offenders, and constantly asked what Kim was waiting for. This voice told him that Kim has such enormous power, and he is invincible. The voice also said that if Kim Sana is so weak, then he will help him do everything for him. Some time passed and several more students from that same school approached the guy. They noticed that someone was standing in front of them, and it looked like he was feeling bad. They immediately asked the guy what he was doing in the middle of a dark alley on the asphalt. One of them named Song Chan Yil asked Kim why he was standing in such a strange position here. He started laughing because I thought that the guy was behaving this way because he was very scared. And Chan Yil's friend said that apparently someone beat up this guy, and suggested that it was their Adnoklas Niki. He told Kim that he shouldn't have tried to force himself on them, since it was obvious that they were much stronger. Spruce said that Kim looks just pathetic, and at the same time a voice told the guy to kill them all. These guys thought that Kim was deaf, since he did not react at all to their words. Y'all even said that you need to beat the crap out of such freaks right away so that they don't show off anymore. He put his hand on the guy's head and asked if he could hear him. Yeol was very angry that Kim was ignoring him, but at that time San only heard his inner voice. One of Yal's friends brought a metal stick to the hall that lay nearby. The voice told the guy that he didn't need to endure this humiliation and insult from such monsters. He ordered him to kill, and as he said that everything would happen quickly and they would not even feel the pain. Kim started shouting that he didn't want this, and everyone around him heard it. But Yeol didn't react to this in any way, and this even added more interest to him. Kim tried to drown out the voice in his head, which over and over again ordered him to kill everyone. Suddenly, everything before the guy's eyes became as if in space, he could not see at all what was in front of him. He screamed at the top of his lungs to shut up his inner voice once and for all. As soon as he shouted this, he immediately struck a very strong and fast blow to his opponent's arm. Yeo looked at his hand and after a second realized that it had disappeared somewhere. Kim San couldn't believe his eyes and thought he was in a dream. For some time Yeo did not feel pain and asked his friends where his hand was. Kim went up to her opponent and said that he didn't do it on purpose and offered to help. Yeol said in a trembling voice that his shoulder was still burning, and he was starting to feel pain. 
Then his face began to turn blue, and the man said that he was in great pain. He felt very strong pain and fell dead to the ground from painful shock. His friend said that it looked like Ye Ol had died, and the second friend asked his friend what to do now. But instead of thinking about how to help their friend, they looked towards Kim San. After that, they began to run away from this alley and shout that they needed help. Now Kim San was left alone with the lifeless body of the man he had just killed. For some time he just looked at Ye Ol's body and thought about how best to behave. But due to the fact that the guy was very scared, of course he chose the simplest option. He turned around and began to run as fast as he could away from the crime scene. Within a few seconds, he reached the end of the alley, and Ye Ol's body was left all alone in the dark alley. The next day, all the news said was that the body of an 18-year-old man without an arm had been discovered. The victim's name was Chan Ye Ol, who lived as an ordinary school student and did not have very good academic results. The doctor who was in the laboratory said that the criminal swelled the victim's right arm, after which the student died. He also added that the hand was cut off with a sharp object, presumably an axe. Rispel he said that the body was found together where he was making his rounds yesterday and he should have walked there again. He also turned his head to the doctor and said that it was obvious that the hand was cut off by something other than a sharp object. Due to the fact that eyewitnesses testified that the criminal did it with his bare hands, the doctor said that it was simply impossible, and the hero replied that he was confident in this because those guys were there. The hero also added that he knows several people who could have done this. The doctor said that an ordinary person could not do this, so perhaps an evil hand was involved in this. Rispel agreed that this theory has a place to be, but there are many people in the world who are capable of this. The doctor also said that he had information that the killer was wearing a mask, and perhaps this would somehow help the hero. The hero immediately thought that perhaps it was the little guy from the alley. Then Rispel told the doctor that he needed to go to meet someone. He also added that he needed to talk to those who could kill this poor fellow. Meanwhile, it was a sunny day in the city and the couple was talking about how it was just beautiful outside today. The man told his girlfriend that they should have lunch together somewhere. But suddenly there was an explosion and a purple organism flew down from a tall building. After he landed on the ground, a rather strong explosion occurred and fragments scattered in different directions. The girl asked what it was all about, she was incredibly scared. Then the man said that he could not believe his eyes. All because that same evil hand was in front of him, and this organism was looking in his direction. Everyone started shouting that they needed to evacuate, and didn't know where better to run. Then the evil hand pushed off from the place where it stood in order to move as close as possible to the man. When the evil hand landed, it immediately pierced his body with its hand. The girl who witnessed all this was in real horror. After all, her very close person died right before her eyes in such a cruel way. There was another explosion and all the people who were on the street said that they needed to call the police. But the other objected and said that most likely it was necessary to call the military, but he was not destined to finish this. All because another creature came out from right around the corner and looked very hostile. This man could not believe that he would die so ingloriously. A second later, this street saw a large splash of blood at the place where that man died. Everyone began to run away from this corner, but among the entire crowd one man stood out who was walking in that direction. He just adjusted his glasses and ignored people's cries that he couldn't go there. Suddenly, this same man, with one movement of his hand, took off his outerwear. After that, he unbuttoned his shirt and underneath it was a superhero uniform. Meanwhile, the evil hand was just tormenting the body of the first murdered man. And the hero came closer and closer to her from behind. Turning around a little, the body asked who was sneaking up on her so absurdly. And the villains were very scared when he saw a Hanel in front of him, who was standing a few meters away from him. At that same second, he jumped away from the place where he was standing in order to take a more advantageous position. The evil hand said that it did not expect that the hero would deign to come to kill innocent citizens. After all, not just heroes came, but the strongest man on the planet, Hanel. The villain said that he couldn't wait to check if the rumors were true and if he really was the strongest hero. Then Hanel turned to the evil hand and asked why all his opponents always ask him about the same thing. Looking straight into the eyes of his enemy, he said that he should not worry, because he would soon feel all his power. The hero took a fighting stance and ordered the evil hand to attack right now. At the same time, he used offensive insults towards his opponent, and this made the evil hand very angry. He immediately jumped away from the place on the wall where he had been sitting all this time, and meanwhile the hero got ready. 
Lightning remained circulating around his body and especially near his hand. Within a moment, the Haino sent a huge stream of lightning directly into the body of his opponent. The comrade of the evil hand watched all this from the side and could not believe that the hero dealt with him so quickly. This threw him into despair and filled his mind with anger, because despite the fact that he was a villain, he also had a comrade. It was Sowen, the fire devil, and he swore that now he would never forgive the Haino for his action. He swung his hand to send a stream of fire towards the hero. But suddenly Sowen noticed some bright glow behind his shoulders. When he turned around, he saw the spirit of the Holy Virgin Seo Wangsel, he also noticed that everything around him had disappeared somewhere. He simply levitated in space and saw in front of him only a gigantic image of the spirit of the Holy Virgin. Sowen could not do anything at all until the moment when the hands of this virgin slammed him. After Wangsel eliminated this enemy, her image began to disappear somewhere, and after a second it completely evaporated. Meanwhile, it became clear that Hanel had been holding some kind of card in his hand all this time, which began to evaporate. All the people who were on this street watched the hero deal with his enemies. Their emotion could be described as the highest degree of surprise, because these villains seemed very strong. But despite this, the Hanel easily managed to deal with all of them. They began to shout to the hero that they believe in him and that he is none other than the hope of all mankind. People continued to scream and said that the hero killed two monsters at once without blinking an eye, and began asking for autographs. Mom came up with her daughter and said that she was a little fan and asked to take a photo with her. The hero smiled and said that it would be a great honor for him to take a photo with a little fan. He picked her up, took out his phone and told the girl that he didn't promise good photos because he was a bad photographer. In fact, the photo turned out quite well, and the girl was the happiest of all. She thanked her hero and said that she would keep this photo for the rest of her life. After that, she said that she would marry the hero when she grows up, and he said that he would only be happy. After that, all the other people who were on the street also asked to take pictures with Hanel. But the hero said that he had things to do, despite the fact that the crowd didn't care. Everyone wanted to take a photo, and they already forgot that they must first call an ambulance for the injured and seriously wounded. Suddenly, his agent approached the hero and said that they were calling him very urgently. It was the response that called, and when the hero realized that this call was very important, he asked the crowd to take a selfie next time. His face became more serious when he heard what his friend said, he immediately asked when this happened. It was unpleasant for him to hear that someone's hand was cut off, and he also agreed that they needed to meet tonight. Hanel turned his head a little towards the agent and said that they were gathering everyone tonight. After all, evil does not sleep, and if it is not punished, it will fill the whole world. According to a Jewish proverb, the Gregori never sleep and are always silent. This was the name of the team of the strongest heroes, dominating all other teams on the planet. And now there was a meeting at the headquarters of the Gregori team, and the representative said that he had made several conclusions. He said that now someone is committing atrocities that the team still does not know about. A member of the team, Grigori, with the pseudonym Bloody Lynx, said that he did not think that the topic would be so non-sensational. Then Master Jean, who was also a member of the team, said that if the Republic gathered everyone, it means it's a serious matter. Then he also added that the hand of the one who simply gave it was not just cut off, it was literally cut off with his bare hands. And when he said that even he did not have such power, people in the hall began to whisper. A team member under the pseudonym Russian Blue said that she doesn't even know who to suspect, even if the rep is not capable of it. But then Respol he said that of all the heroes he knows, only the Russian Blue Cat and Hanel have the strength to do this. At that moment, the Lynx interrupted the hero and said that he could do it too if he really wanted to. In response, the Repol did not answer anything, but a second later he said that naturally the bloody Lynx had no way of doing this. This really hurt the hero and he asked the police what he had just said. Coming closer, he said that it seemed that Rispel had completely lost his way, and asked how long ago he had received a worthy opponent. He began to come closer and closer to the hero, asking if he was really that confident in himself. Rispel smiled and said that, in his opinion, he had not received a bloody lynx in his face for a long time. The bloody lynx was very angry because Rispel constantly mocked him. Meanwhile, Esther, who was also a member of the team, watched this performance. Suddenly, the Russian blue cat asked where Dark was now, and perhaps it was worth entrusting this matter to him. 
Then Rispel said that he was missing the meeting again because he was killing criminals somewhere in a dark alley. Hanel entered the dialogue and said that he understood something. In his opinion, a person with incredible superpowers has now appeared on their territory. And at the moment it is unclear whether he will become a hero or a powerful villain. But in the meantime, the one they were talking about at this headquarters was simply sitting at home. He felt very uneasy and while on his bed, he only thought about the fact that he had just killed a man. He understood that the news had definitely shown him, and they were talking about how someone had inhumanly cut off his hand. But the worst thing was that Kim San felt absolutely no guilt after what he had done. An inner voice asked him why he was so afraid of such simple actions. Moreover, this voice claimed that Kim did everything right, and this was the only way out. He asked San whether he was scared because he killed a man, or was he simply afraid that no one would find out about it. Kim couldn't get rid of this voice in his head, which told him that this was the essence of the guy. After some time, Kim San stopped hearing these voices, and he felt calmer. Meanwhile, at school everything was as usual, and Jun was talking with his friend about the game. He really didn't like that when he played yesterday, a member of his team really pissed him off. Un approached this group and asked if Kim San would come today. Then Jun said that he probably won't come today, and the girl asked why the guy misses so often. Jun began to get nervous and said that perhaps Kim San was just sick as usual. The girl said that it might be worth visiting him, because he lives alone. Well then June he said that he wrote it and he said that everything was fine. After that, he decided to ask the girl why she was so worried about Kim San. In fact, Ji was very worried, but she told June that she wasn't worried at all and just noticed that Kim wasn't there. A month has already passed since the first murder, lately Kim has been skipping classes and continuing to pay for the district. He didn't feel particularly guilty about that incident and so far everything was going well for him. Now he calmly accepted the sight of bandits with disgusting faces and was no longer afraid of them at all. Moreover, with the help of his powers, he professionally evaded their blows and could fight back. He regularly took their money for himself, and he really liked the idea that now he could earn it so easily. One day, after another racket, Kim thought that he should have thought of this earlier. When he came out of the next gateway, he heard some girl call his name. After that, she came around the corner a little and began shouting after Kim, asking if it was him. Very quickly the guy realized that Ji Eun was shouting after her. When the girl completely went outside, she said that she really didn't expect to see Kim San here. The guy didn't understand how she recognized him if he was wearing a mask all this time, but Ji also asked what was on Kim's face. The guy hastily took off his mask and in a trembling voice asked Ji Eun what fate she had ended up here. The girl said that she was very worried about her classmate, but now she is glad that he is safe and sound. When Ji asked what the guy had in his hands, he said in an even more trembling voice that there was nothing there. She asked why the guy skipped classes since he was completely healthy, and was offended that she had to go to his house. Then the guy suggested that the teacher asked his student to check on Kim in order to find out if everything was okay with him. The girl was very embarrassed when she heard this and didn't hit the guy hard in the face, saying that it wasn't important at all. But the guy felt this blow as quite strong, and noticed that Ji was quite nimble. Hit him in the shoulder several more times and gave a small slap to his cheek. Her voice became more uncertain and she said that if Kim skips again, he's dead. After that, she calmed down and said that she was waiting for Kim at school, and added that San should definitely come tomorrow. Then the guy said that he understood everything and offered to take the girl home. At the same time, he thought that with such a heavy fist, she definitely didn't need help. And Ji said that she was not small and would get there on her own. She began to leave and, waving her hand to the guy, said that everything was fine, and San thought that he still needed to see her off. After they said goodbye, the guy no longer remembered how he got home. But when he arrived, he immediately fell into bed and thought that he had completely forgotten about school. She faded into the background, and Kim wondered if such a powerful villain needed her at all. But he remembered how Ji said that he must definitely come there tomorrow. At that moment, despite the fact that he was there, he became embarrassed and said that he still needed to come tomorrow. The next day came, it was morning and of course Kim San came to school. As he moved along the corridor, he suddenly heard a very familiar voice behind him. It was Jun Saab, and it looked like he was very happy to see his friend back at school. He immediately asked Kim why he had been away from school for so long, and noted that it was disappointing. 
Well then the guy replied that he was just terribly busy, and teased his friend by saying that he seemed bored. He added that he was really busy, but at the same time he was only thinking about whether Ji had come to school. And entering the classroom, he saw a girl who, noticing Kim, began to smile. She smiled very widely and said that she was glad that Kim San finally came to school. The guy greeted her with a trembling voice, and at that moment he thought that the girl looked like a real angel. A very loud scream was heard throughout the whole class, which ordered everyone to sit down. Kim immediately drew attention to the source of this scream, and realized that these were high school students. They said that today was the day of collecting tribute, and ordered everyone to quickly get the money. The guy completely forgot that today high school students are squeezing out money. One of them told everyone to take out 501, also noting that it was only a couple of coins and they should be grateful. Probably due to the fact that Kim had been looking at the gangster faces for a long time now, he was no longer afraid of them. June, meanwhile, had already given away all his money, at that moment San thought that if he didn't want to cause a commotion, then he would have to pay. He began to take his wallet out of the inner pocket of his school jacket, but quickly realized that something was wrong. He said that he forgot that he needed to pay today and because of this he didn't even take 501 with him. Then one of the high school students told his friend to move away, and Kim attracted his attention. After that, he gave Kim San a very strong slap in the face, and of course he didn't expect it. For some time he just hung in this position and did not know how to act. A high school student asked the guy if he really wanted to bully him. He said that you would never believe that Kim doesn't even have 501 with her, and his friend said that it looks like this is the one who pissed them off last time. San became very unpleasant, apparently slapped in the face by a man who represents absolutely nothing. An inner voice ordered him to be killed, at the same time asking how this mortal even dared to hit. One of the high school student's friends asked what happened, and the bully said that he had everything under control. The voice became louder and louder and constantly ordered Kim to kill him now. Meanwhile, the high school students began to leave and the bully said that they needed to go to the next class. Suddenly Kim, in a low voice, asked the bully where he should wait for them. The high school student was very surprised when he heard this and asked the guy what he had just said. San said that the high school student himself just said that he needed to wait, and now Kim is wondering where exactly. Meanwhile, June asked his friend in a whisper if he was crazy, and advised him to quickly apologize. The whole class watched everything that was happening with horror, because they understood that the high school student could now just kill Kim. The bully said he couldn't believe the guy said that and asked him to repeat it. San said that it looks like he has a problem with his ears, and repeated his sentence now in letters. The bully got very angry when the guy said it that way, and realized that he needed to be taught a lesson. He waved his hand and said that from that moment on, Kim San was really in trouble. But suddenly the bell rang, and because of this, the high school student lowered his hand down. His comrade at the same time said that he needed to return as soon as possible, because if he finds out about this, then they will not be happy. But in the end, the bully went up to Kim and said that they would see each other after school. He also added that if the guy tries to escape, and Kim replied that he should come faster because he doesn't want to wait. I really liked this formulation of the bully, but now he didn't have time to figure out who. Meanwhile, someone entered the classroom and told a group of high school students that the bell had already rung for a long time. The bully turned his head to Kim and said that he had said everything and now San was staying after school. The guy, in turn, simply remained silent and watched as the high school students left the class. They were urged on by that strange man, and the high school students said they were already on their way. After they left, June turned to his friend and asked why he did all this. But Ji was most worried, because she understood what these high school students were capable of. The lesson began, and Kim San was now remembering his words. It seemed to him that he had gone a little overboard, because he really may have intervened in this dialogue in vain. Well, he was reassured by the knowledge that Ji Eun was at school today, and perhaps she would see everything. He wondered if he seemed cool to her when he answered that high school student. After some time, classes were over and the last bell rang for the entire school. The girl immediately went up to Kim's desk and told him to run away quickly. She was very loud and angry and told the guy that the bandits would come for him and he needed to run away. But then Kim San said that he didn't need to run away because it was all nothing, advising the girl not to worry. Ji became even louder and said that if he was going to fight, then he was acting like a little boy. These words wounded the guy to the very heart, 
because he believed that with this gesture he would only get the girl's attention. He was confused for a while and didn't know what to say, but then he persuaded the girl that he wasn't even going to fight. It seems that Ji Eun didn't really believe in it and asked the guy if he was sure about it. But suddenly they both heard someone start to open the front door to the classroom. The guy turned his head and saw that these were the same high school students with whom he had an appointment. The bully was the first to enter the class and said that overall he was quite surprised. He said that it looks like Kim San has really gone crazy, if he hasn't already run away from school. Then Ji ran out to meet the high school students and said that she would tell the teacher everything. But the bully said that the girl could tell her anything, and then ordered Kim to leave the class. San began to follow the high school student and assured Ji that everything would be fine and he was not going to fight. The bully said that there was no need to fight, because they would beat him up faster. Once again, the guy told his girlfriend that there was no need to call the teacher, but the high school students began to urge him on. It was very unpleasant for the girls to watch Kim San leave the classroom along with a crowd of high school students. Meanwhile, the group had already climbed to the roof so that no one would watch them. There were two girls here who didn't understand why high school students came here with a minor. But the bully told you to shut up, and his friend added that there was serious business going on here. The bully turned to Kim and said that it looked like he was completely insolent, since he behaved like that in class. But the guy said that he just went a little too far, because after returning from sick leave, he completely forgot about the money. The bully said that he now behaves completely differently when he realized that he was about to be beaten. After everyone laughed, this high school student hit Kim right in the face with his palm. He told Kim to stop smiling himself, because in this case he would lose absolutely all his teeth. The guy again, but this time with his fist right in the nose. The bully's comrade said that Kim San was behaving inappropriately and ordered him to stand up. Bully came closer to him and said that this time he would definitely smack him. Girls approached the crowd and one of them asked to also hit this youngster a couple of times. The voice in Kim's head awakened again, and San himself began to think about the fact that it might be worth killing them all. Kim San didn't know how to act, and the high school student at that time constantly threatened him. A voice in his head said that these people were just scum if they dared to touch Kim himself. He constantly ordered the guy to kill them all now. But instead, Kim extended his hand, apologized and said that they should end this. The voice began to ask why he began to apologize if he killed them all right now. He tried to calm this voice, but Kim answered him that it was impossible to kill someone just like that. In response, the voice laughed, and at that moment the guy asked him why he was laughing so much. Then the voice answered him that he had already killed, and this happened quite recently. Meanwhile, the bully grabbed Kim by the collar and said that he wouldn't get off just like that. He hit him in the face and said that if Kim did something like that again, he would die. He prepared to strike again and swung his arm. A voice inside Kim said that this high school student is just a pathetic and weak person. Suddenly the guy grabbed the hand of his offender, and he could no longer move it. He told his comrades that Kim dared to grab his hand, and ordered him to release it immediately. But suddenly Kim San felt that he was able to restrain this hand quite easily. Within a few seconds the guy began to squeeze her, and this brought the bully a huge amount of pain. The comrades immediately noticed this and began to watch what was happening more closely. The high school student began to beg Kim to let go of his hand, as he was in great pain. The guy realized that the bully was very weak, and his hand now felt like a marshmallow. He realized that in the end this bully was extremely powerless. After all, all you had to do was lightly press it, and the high school student already began to shout that he would break it like that. Then Kim began to squeeze her even harder, and after that he let go of the offender's hand. The high school student began to scream very loudly and grabbed his injured arm with his other hand. The guy didn't even initially quite understand how much harm he had caused to his opponent. He just thought about what would happen if he squeezed it harder, but it looked like the bully's arm was already broken. Literally seconds later, his comrades began to run towards Kim, as they realized that their friend could not cope on his own. They tried to strike at Kim San, but both missed as he quickly moved. High school students began to threaten him and say that they were going to kill him. One of them came to his senses faster than the others and swung his fist to hit the guy right in the face. But since he came quite close, Kim San had quite a lot of time to maneuver and he kicked him. Despite the fact that this blow was not particularly strong, the femur, which is the strongest bone in the human body, immediately cracked. Because of this, the high school student fell to the floor and began to feel unbearable pain. 
After that, Kim turned his body towards the last high school student who seemed to no longer want to fight. Due to the fact that he did not understand what was happening, he began to retreat, but San was still able to reach him with his hand. The last high school student began to shout that the guy should wait a little, he could explain everything. But instead, Kim gave him a gentle slap in the face, but cracks had already appeared in the guy's skull. Because of this, he fell firmly to the floor and stopped showing any signs of life. The bully asked Kim who he even was and what he was doing. Well, when the guy came closer to him, he immediately began to apologize and said that they were wrong. The guy liked that he was on his knees and sincerely apologized to him. The man with the broken leg also said that they sincerely apologize for what they did. Kim asked, do you really think that the bully will just forgive him? The high school student was sweating a lot at that moment because he understood that it would cost the guy nothing to kill him. The girls who had been watching what happened all this time were whispering among themselves. They are on the swing shouting at the guy not to do anything to them since they have no business here at all. But when Kim looked in their direction, it became clear that his gaze looked rather stern. When the guy began to descend from the roof, the bodies of these girls also lay unconscious on the ground. Everyone who was on the roof at that time was transferred to the emergency department. It looked quite comical that they were all in one common and large room. One of the high school students said that maybe they should call Tejin. Well, then the bully said that even if they told him all the details, it wouldn't change anything. A high school student whose skull was fractured could not say anything at all and could only mumble. One of them said that they didn't even have time to collect all the money until the end, and if Tay finds out about this, it won't be good for them. Well, then the bully told his friend to be quieter, since he was quite noisy. Said in a quieter voice that there would be no questions with Tay, unlike the saint, because they were screwed if he found out that they didn't do the work. Suddenly the door to the general ward began to move and someone began to walk inside. Everyone immediately realized that it was Tay Jean, and for some reason he decided to come here. It was a student from Ensign High School, and upon entering the room he immediately called everyone present disabled. Everyone who was lying on the bed was in incredible pain, and Jean said what was going on here. After he heard one of the versions, he asked the bully if the guy really beat everyone alone. He asked for forgiveness and said that they had no excuses. Leaving the room, Jean told everyone to recover for now, but the bully suddenly stopped him. He said that if Jean suddenly wants to take revenge for them, then he shouldn't even think about it. Then the guy asked what he meant, because now he understood absolutely nothing. The bully said that this guy is not a man, but just a real monster. Jean said that he didn't understand anything, was that guy really a forest animal? Then Tay asked what was the matter and asked the high school students to explain it to him more precisely. And the bully said that he really wasn't a man, but a man couldn't have such power. When Jean looked at all the other high school students, he saw that they had very frightened faces. He didn't even know what to think after such words, because from now on he would rarely meet someone like that. After a fairly short time, Jean had already left the hospital and the city was covered in evening. He talked to his assistant who asked Jean what he was going to do with that scumbag. He said that maybe he should be taught a lesson, but Jean didn't agree with that at all. The guy immediately asked if the assistant really wants him dead, because it is obvious that Kim is a very strong opponent. Then the assistant said that he could not even think about it, because Jean is the thunderstorm of the Sindarin region. Gina calmly explained to his assistant that if one of the high school students had a broken femur, then it was obvious that this was not just a person. He even suggested that he might have superpowers, but the assistant immediately rejected this option. Tay he said that if he gets into a fight with him, it is obvious that he will either die or become disabled for the rest of his life. Suddenly, Jean heard whose voice it was, and realizing whose it really was, he became very tense. Yen San high school student who was also a gang leader and he asked Jean what he was doing here. Then Tay greeted with a trembling voice, and Yong San in turn began to speak addressing Jean. He asked him in a calm voice if he knew what day it was yesterday. Jean said that yesterday was the day of the fundraiser, but they had a small problem and they are already fixing it. After that, Yen San slapped Jean quite hard. He told him that the Jeans were all relaxed, and he didn't like the fact that he lived very calmly. Yong San ordered Tay to bring him all the money tomorrow, since everything needs to be done on time. Jina started apologizing, especially when Yong Sang he said that because of him he is in complete ass. It was very difficult for him to say the word sorry, but he also understood that in this situation it was simply necessary to apologize. 
Yong San began to walk away and his bodyguard ordered to work properly, otherwise it would lead to consequences. Jin's friend immediately asked how he was after that slap, and he looked very angry. He said that if it weren't for the subordination, he would have immediately beaten him half to death. The guy really didn't like this whole situation and he said that he was thinking about giving up everything and leaving. He felt very ashamed of all this and thought that he needed a very strong ally in order to defend himself. Suddenly, it came to his mind that he had just such a rather strong ally, which was that madman. He immediately laughed and said to himself how he hadn't thought of this before. The laughter grew louder and he said that soon they would have an ace up their sleeve, but his assistant still did not understand anything. Then Jean said that if he manages to settle one matter, it won't be difficult for him to bring the high school students to their knees. The next day, classes at school went pretty much as usual, and Kim was getting ready to go home. Goodbye to all his friends and headed to his home. You leave school. He thought about who he should rob today and how to earn more money. But suddenly he noticed a very familiar face in front of him, and immediately tensed. It was Jean, and he told the guys that he didn't even think that all these rumors would turn out to be true. After that, he asked the guy if he knew him, and also expressed surprise that he had stayed until the end of the lessons. At that moment, Kim realized that this was the cool Jean who was the first year. He was successful in everything because he fought well, studied well, and was also handsome. Jean became famous when he was in high school, then he was called the Thunderstorm of Cinderima. He said that he knew that in front of him was Kim San from Class F, and added to his remark that he knew that he had offended his friends. The guy became more serious and asked if Jean wanted to take revenge on him right now. Well, then the test said that, of course, everything is not so. After all, he understands that in terms of strength, he is far from equal to Kim. The guy asked what was the matter then, and why did Jean even come here and talk to him. Then Jean said that it seemed like Kim was very impatient, and suggested getting straight to the point. He invited the guy to unite and seize power in the school. But the guy didn't even think about it, and said that he didn't want it and in general he needed to go home. Jean panicked and said that there was no need to rush, because this offer was quite profitable. For some time, Kim San thought and silently looked into the eyes of his interlocutor. Jean said that fame awaits him and everyone will obey him, but Kim was not interested. San began to walk further and further, but suddenly Jean said that there would be enough money if you continue to collect it. At that moment the guy thought, because real villains should always have big money. And besides, he will no longer have to wander around the city at night, and perhaps this really is not a bad offer. Jean asked Kim if they could talk about the body somewhere else. In general, the guy agreed with this since he didn't have much to do today. They moved to a coffee shop nearby to discuss the details. Jean asked the guy what he thought about this, because the offer was really good. He told him a detailed plan on how to conquer the school. Well then the guy asked why, if Tae is so good, he decided to turn to Kim San. Then TH said that he is not as strong as Kim, San was very surprised when he heard this, because he thought that it was a secret. Moreover, Jean said that his strength cannot compare with the guy's strength. Well then Kim San said that he never showed his abilities, and it's unlikely that Tae knows everything. Was silent for a while and then said that he assumed that Kim was a superman. The guy immediately panicked when he heard this, because he didn't understand how Jean even knew this. But nevertheless, Tae was very happy when he realized that this was so, and said that an ordinary person could not do such a thing. He also added that it was very cool, and asked the guy why he was hiding his superpowers. The guy admitted that the plan to conquer the school is good, but first he would like to clarify something. He said that he would never obey anyone and would do what he wanted. Then assistant Jean said that San was already starting to piss him off, and asked if he was taking them for fools. At this moment, Kim began to panic, but Jean thought that this situation needed to be corrected. Therefore, he told his assistant to shut up, because it was obvious that Kim would simply crush him in battle. Tae assured the guy that he would do whatever he wanted in this union. Jean also added that since San is the strongest among them, he will be the leader. The guy agreed since he wouldn't have to do anything special, and said that Jean should be the leader. They shook hands and Tae said that he was glad that they were now working together and were in the same boat. Kim was at a loss because Jean guessed who he was, but since he offered money, San decided to try anyway. The actions were transferred to another hero, who was always greedy and had a very nasty character. He turned onto a slippery slope and became a bandit, feeling like a fish in water. In a fight, 
he always tried to win no matter what. After all, he believed that only the strongest survive in this world, and for him the word defeat did not exist. When he was in high school he was such an authority that every dog knew him. He was a real king and he liked to be on top, but then he moved to high school. One day, when he was walking along the corridor with his comrades, he was discussing a trifle. But suddenly a man approached them from behind and said that it looked like he had found him after all. He turned to the one who was walking in the middle, and when the bandit turned around, he decided to understand who was walking behind them. This man's name was Ojiite, and he said that he had long noticed that Cheon Jiang Su was quite famous. At the first meeting, this stranger infuriated Jiang Su with his disdainful greetings. But then Jiaite said that he didn't like that he was rude to him, despite the fact that he was older. Jiang Su spat at himself, because he did not consider that guy to be the leader. But he knew that he was the son of a martial arts master. He was not a bandit, and did everything fairly and always lived according to his conscience. Jiang Su asked what this guy wanted, and he immediately didn't like the fact that he didn't know who he was. Jones said that he didn't understand anything at all and instead of saying maybe they should fight one on one, Ojiite told him that the guy would most likely regret it very much if he agreed to this. They moved to the roof where most of the fighting took place, and Jiang Su was already feeling really bad. After all, at that moment he realized that his opponent was incredibly strong, and he lost to him. Ojiite said it was in vain that Su insisted on the fight, because he understood how it would end. Everyone who stood on the roof with him and praised Jiaite for paying so well with martial arts. But then he turned to him because he wanted to tell him something. But Jiaite said that after such a good warm-up they should go eat noodles. Zhang Su was very surprised when he heard this, and even more could not understand when he realized that this guy was paying for everything. After that day, they were inseparable, and they did not care about the age difference. Oh Jiaite treasured him, and in general he liked Zhang Su. They became friends, that guy was easygoing and always behaved like a real man. A year later, the whole school was theirs, and they did what they wanted without any hesitation. It seemed to them that the whole world was in their hands, until one day changed everything. That day, a group of them beat one of the students with wooden sticks. After that, they demanded from him something worthwhile, or a large amount of money. Well, then the guy said that they only have a family jewel, this is a wristwatch. At first, the guys didn't know whether to take this watch, but Zhang Su made them understand what to do. He kicked this student quite hard and ordered the watch to be taken away. They began to leave, and the students, with all their might, asked not to take them away. When they arrived, Ji Tae was very angry about what the gang has been doing lately, because he had just been at the police station. He said that there are already rumors about what the boys are doing at school. He also said that you need to act within reasonable limits, and not go around and beat children with sticks. But then Zhang Su appeared and said that it was he who ordered them to do all this. Then he said that he was just an idiot, and they were not some kind of bandits to do such a thing. Then one of the guys said that Ji Tae was talking very rudely to them. At that same second, he received a rather strong blow to the jaw from the guy himself. He began to shout that they would never understand such a banal truth, and constantly repeated that they were not bandits. But suddenly he asked Ji Tae who they were if not bandits. The guy got even more angry and asked Zhang Su what he just said. And he answered him that they do not study, do not go to various sections, and do not work anywhere. All they do is drink, fight and take money from students. He said that it was absolutely obvious that they were bandits, just not very popular. That the pump said he didn't want to do it, but it looks like he'll have to. He threw his candy on the floor and crushed it with his shoe, he told Ji Tae that they should fight and settle everything. Ji Tae immediately asked what this guy was going to solve in this way. Zhang Su said that whoever wins will be the leader of the gang and will decide how to conduct business. Then Ji Tae said that he really likes Su, but his way of doing things is too outdated. The guy replied that they were ordinary bandits and wanted to fight and have fun, because that's all they were interested in. Ji Tae got very angry when he heard this and decided to address the audience. He asked the guys around if they would remain silent and allow Zhang Su to talk such nonsense. Then they said that maybe Zhang Su told the whole truth. Ji Tae became even more angry, and understood that a fight could not be avoided. Zhang Su said that they are dishonest gangsters from TV series, because this is all just a complete show. Lately everyone has started whispering about them, because I don't know who will become the head of the gang. 
Zhang Su offered to fight just once, and said that the loser should leave the school. Ji Te began to shout and say that they were not highwaymen, and it was definitely not worth leaving school. He began to prove that this would not resolve the situation in any way, and says that Zhang Su has gone crazy. Then the guy replied that it looked like he was simply afraid of losing, and they would still see who was crazy here. Ji Te clearly realized that this battle could not be avoided, and was very angry. Zhang Su said that you just need to fight without any additional conditions in order to decide who will be the leader. Ji Te repeated the phrase he said quite often about the fact that the guy might regret this. He immediately asked his opponent if he had forgotten how he lost that time. Zhang Su immediately answered him, saying that he could not forget the moment when he beat him almost to death. Then his opponent said that today he would have new memories, because history would repeat itself again. The two of them stood in a stance, and Zhang Su said that Ji Te was very polite. But he said that this time he would not give in to him, after these words the battle began. He instinctively felt strong opponents, and now he felt that his opponent was quite strong. He felt like a git at great speed came quite close to him, and decided to attack first. Zhang Su suggested that perhaps he had superpowers, he felt how strong the enemy was even just standing in front of him. And when a year ago he saw him, he knew for sure that he would lose. A year later, Zhang Su realized that not much had actually changed. Despite the fact that he trained often and took part in battles even more often, Still, he could not reach the pinnacle of martial arts that his opponent had. He understood that he was destined to lose again, since they were not equal in strength. But this did not mean that you had to give up and not even try. Even after he fell to the ground, he thought about how to end the battle in his favor. All the people who stood nearby shouted GITE, and realized that he would win quite easily. But despite this, there was a small group of people who were unhappy that Zhang Su was losing. The man stood over the body of Chang Su, who was lying on the floor, and said that although he had become stronger, he was still uneven. After that, he asked if he was satisfied with the outcome, and asked why all this was started. But he did not take into account the fact that Zhang Su still had strength in his body, and he could fight. He crawled a little closer to Ji Te until he said that he would take him to the first aid station, and there was absolutely no need to leave school. The guy didn't react to this at all, so Ji Te suggested calling an ambulance. But with the last of his strength, Zhang Su asked his opponent why he was so relaxed. At that moment, the guy didn't quite understand what he meant, since it was obvious that he had already won. It was at this moment that Zhang Su hit his opponent with all his strength with his fist right at his opponent's leg. Ji Te immediately felt unimaginable pain, and did not understand how one could hit so hard with just a fist. All because Zhang Su used brass knuckles, because it was one of the options for defeating such a big guy. Ji Te fell to the ground because he felt severe pain in his leg, and his opponent said that he had not given up yet. He added that this is not a hand to hand combat competition, and there is no need to say so much here. After all, in a duel between bandits, the one who remains on his feet until the end wins. Ji Te realized that his leg was broken, and at the same time he realized that it seemed like he had lost. Then the Sioux said that this thing on his hand saved him a lot. Without just one blow, his opponent's bones broke like matchsticks. He started laughing and saying that Ji Te was too kind and that's why he lost. His opponent was truly pissed off at how things turned out and shouted Zhang Su's name. After that, this same Zhang Su hit him quite hard with this brass knuckles right in the temple. After this, the guy immediately lost consciousness and began to fall to the floor. It's good that he stopped showing signs of life. Otherwise Zhang Su wouldn't have stopped there. He finally fell and stopped moving completely, it became obvious who won. All those who stood on the roof silently watched everything that was happening and did not know what to think. They talked about how this Zhang Su is a complete idiot, and that this fight can be considered unfair. One of them even shouted that Zhang Su is a complete idiot and there is nothing wrong with his head. He came closer to him and asked what kind of idiotic tricks he was doing, because only a coward would act like that. At that very second he turned around and hit this man right in the nose with his bones. With such a blow, his body instantly fell to the floor and stopped moving. The other guys who watched this said that Zhang Su would not get away with this. But at that moment this guy felt all the power in himself, and shouted at the top of his lungs that he was now the boss in this school. He began to repeat this over and over again, so that everyone could make sure that he was now a leader. And he shouted that if anyone had an objection, he should come out here and fight him. 
At that moment, everyone who stood on the roof fell silent, because no one wanted to fight with him. They understood that they could not attack in one crowd, and in a one-on-one -on -one battle they had no chance. Then Sony calmed down a lot and looked at the lifeless body of his opponent with such a sting on the floor. At that moment, he felt sorry for his old friend, who seemed to have stopped being a friend just ten minutes ago. He turned to his assistant and told him to take him to the infirmary as soon as possible. Jiang Su also said that you need to take care of your head and carry it as carefully as possible. His assistant said that he was very glad that the scientist was finally able to take the throne of the leader. The guy himself said that he is now the boss, and now everything will be a little different. Since that day, a lot has changed and after that the world was at the feet of Jiang Su, everyone in this school obeyed him. He still often ate lollipops, but for some reason he could never fully enjoy them. Even ordinary candy did not want to fit into his mouth. Suddenly, one of his subordinates said that something bad happened to Ji Te, and then Zhang Su tensed up. The subordinate said that he wrote a letter of resignation from school and would not appear here again. The rest of the subordinates who were walking near Zhang Su were very surprised when they heard this. But it seems that the boss himself was expecting this, since no reaction appeared on his face. But after a few seconds, a little anger appeared on his face, despite the fact that he expected it. After all, he understood that his friend did it for the sake of Zhang Su, and as soon as he left, he stopped holding back and went all out. Behind his back they called him a traitor or scum. However, everyone standing in front of him fell silent. He created a system for collecting money and destroyed all his rivals, all this was easy for him because there was no one stronger in this school. This guy was a real king and no one dared to contradict him, everything was just perfect for him. The day came when everything changed, then he stood on the same roof and was very surprised. A slightly surprised Kim San stood in front of him, and Jean was next to him. The bodies of almost all his subordinates were scattered around, and Zhang Su understood that he could now lose the throne. But five minutes earlier everything looked different, one of the assistants asked the guests what they had just said. Then at that moment Jean said that from that day on this school belongs to them. Everyone around started laughing asking each other if today was April 1st. Well then Jean said that Zhang Su also won this school in his second year. They started laughing even louder, but one of them said that they looked like they were serious. The only one who wasn't laughing was Zhang Su, all because he saw Kim's sincere essence. It was the first time I saw high school students so close, and it was remarkable in its own way. Even though they weren't anything special, he still seemed nervous about them being a little older. One of the wards approached the boy and asked why he was at Tejin, Esbek and Kal. Zhang Su's most important assistant said that he can rest because they will sort it out themselves. But Zhang Su didn't bring up who the guy in front of him was, because he looked unremarkable. He had never met such a person, and did not understand why he was seized with chilling horror. Was it really only he who saw in front of him not a person, but something else? After all, in him he saw a creature that, even if it were really here, they would leave a wet spot from everyone. In that case, they would all die, and so Zhang Su concluded that they had a chance. The subordinates told their boss that he could rest, since they could handle it themselves. But suddenly he told them to stop, because this guy is dangerous. But at that moment they no longer listened to him and said that it would be nice to warm up now. Meanwhile, Jean said that he probably won't fight for now, but will look at everything from the outside. Although the guy understood that he could handle it on his own, he was still a little nervous. Jean told San not to let him down, and he slowly began to walk away. But suddenly one of his charges blocked his path and asked where he was going. Then Kim came closer to him, and with one blow of his fist sent him several meters to the side. This guy flew several meters and then crashed into a concrete fence. Everyone who watched all this did not understand how this could even happen. One of them asked who this Kim even was, and how he managed to throw a heavy man so far with one blow. Kim didn't know what to answer to this, and in general it was clear from his face that he was nervous. Meanwhile, Zhang Su quietly said the word kill, and the subordinate understood what needed to be done. One of the most important subordinates asked what he meant, and after that the boss screamed. He said that his subordinates could hurt themselves, but Kim should die right now. Then all the subordinates jumped on the guy in one second that the Su instinctively senses strong opponents. He understood that a hyena is capable of killing a lion, but it can never defeat a dragon and will never be able to. And apparently, in front of him was a real dragon, who never blinked and eliminated almost all his subordinates. 
Jean said that it seemed like that was enough and asked Zhang Su if he was giving up. The last subordinate who was standing told his boss to run away, because he would detain the monster. But Kim, with great ease, was able to knock out this opponent with just one blow. After that, he began to approach the boss, and at the same time asked if all this was enough. Gina said that now they are the main thing here, and now Zhang Su has nothing left. The boss couldn't believe that this was actually happening, because it all looked like a dream. After all, he considered this school his own, and at the same time told Kim that he recognized that he had one. Meanwhile, he took out the brass knuckles from his pocket and put them on his hand, because he could not forgive those who encroached on his throne. Jean was very happy to hear that Su admitted defeat, and said that he could not believe that they were now kings. He turned to Kim and said that they were now in charge, and San congratulated him. He considered these two losers, because he knew that he was the only boss here, he was introduced with such difficulty and climbed here. He pointed his hand with the brass knuckles and promised himself that he would never give this place in this school to anyone. A moment later, he waved his hand and shouted that he was the boss of this school. At that moment, Kim San was not even looking in the direction of the enemy. But Jin was looking there, and tried at the last moment to warn his comrade. Zhang Su hit his opponent with brass knuckles right in the face with enormous force. He understood that after such a strong blow it would be difficult to even just breathe. But he noticed that Kim's body did not even move after he struck this blow. Moreover, boy, I said that these fools always do this, and Zhang Su is no exception. The boss did not understand how this was possible, because this blow was simply lightning fast. After that, Kim pushed the opponent's fist away with his hand, and did not squeeze his hand too much. Suddenly he felt some pain in his right hand. Quite quickly this pain became stronger and stronger until he felt his fingers break. Moreover, the brass knuckles he was holding in his hand were deformed and also brought pain. Jean couldn't understand how he could bend such steel with his bare hands. He himself thought that even though this was a famous bandit in front of him, in the end it only took one blow. But nevertheless I found the strength to start screaming. He raised his body a little and shouted something offensive very loudly towards Kim. But a moment later he was lying on the floor because Sen once again hit him with his hand. Gina said that this was just something, and once again told his friend that they were definitely in charge now. He also said that he couldn't believe that Sen really defeated them and now they control the entire school. The guy said that it was just wonderful, and it's good that everything worked out for them. That same day, but in the evening, the guy was already walking home completely by himself, and for a month he lit his way. It was at this moment that he remembered the moment of the battle that took place not so long ago. He remembered how he easily sent his opponent several meters away. And in general, during that battle, all the opponents seemed to him quite strong. But even despite this, he could deal with each of them with just one blow. And this gave him pleasure. It was really funny to him, because Zhang Su was considered a legendary leader and all he had to do was lightly hit him, causing him to fly a meter away and lose consciousness. The guy also realized that it looked like Jean was very happy, which means he wanted to become the leader for a very long time and very much. Genuine happiness on his face, and Kim even liked it a little. Being the leader of a school is generally a rather enviable position, and the guy was very proud of it. But there was also another thought that haunted him, all because he was constantly thinking about his strength. He still did not understand where it ends, and what his potential is. But still, Kim San decided that this was too minor a position for him. The next day the guy was already at home and relaxing in his rather cozy apartment. He lay on his bed and constantly thought about what he should do next. Is this really something Kim's son could only dream of? It was unpleasant to realize that becoming the boss of the school was his ceiling, because it was more like a quarrel in kindergarten. After all, he wanted to be the same in some way as the hero whom he met in the alley. When he went to school the next day, he realized that he was tired of everything. After all, he had been tormented by doubts for several days. After all, having such enormous power, he still had to go to school and think about how to justify himself to the teacher. Suddenly, on his way to school, he noticed a familiar face walking towards him. It was Jean, and a smile appeared on his face and said that if a guy is in such a hurry to go to school, then he is an exemplary student. He hugged his comrade and said that he was already starting to worry because he had not been here for so long. He also said that Zhang Su left the school, which means that it is now completely in their hands. He suggested dealing with some enemies at school since after Yung Su left, 
now no one cares about the rules. But Jean said that if he wanted it that way, then so be it, and at the same time, passers-by inadvertently touched him with their shoulders. This stranger immediately apologized, since Jean himself was not looking where he was going. The guy said that it was really painful and shouted to the stranger to stand where he was. Then this man turned around, and it became clear that his face looked quite serious. But when he turned around, he saw that in front of him was none other than young Jun. The stranger was very surprised that he knew him by name, but he also recognized the guy as Tae Jin. Jin immediately began to laugh quietly and said that he did not know that he would suddenly meet Young like that. Kim San didn't know who this person was, but he noticed that Jin spoke to him very respectfully. Kim Young asked Jin what he has been doing lately because he had not heard about him for a long time, but he could not answer anything. After this, Young advised him to be careful, because he could easily send Jean to the hospital without even thinking. When Jean was asked why he wasn't on his own, he replied that he was just hanging out with his friend. He looked at this guy for a while and didn't say anything. Kim San at that moment simply looked into his eyes and it was visually clear that he was scared. But after a short time, Yong turned around and said that it was time for him to go about his business. Kim San asked his friend why he was walking in line in front of this man. And Jean answered him that Kim San simply does not know him, because this man is also called the deadly bear. When Kim San asked what this even meant, that Jean was very surprised. He told him that this is a bear from the young team, and he is one of the hero team. This is a team of young teen heroes who are more focused on crimes committed by young people. Of course, they are not as strong as adult heroes. However, this is still a team of superhumans. Jean told his friend while he was thinking that he had a small question. The guy was wondering if Kim's son could somehow defeat the real hero. He himself was interested in how strong these heroes were, and whether he could defeat such a one with his own hands. Meanwhile, the action moved to the main headquarters of the Grigoreves, and the bear came to Respol. The bear was very surprised when he saw that there were several abrasions on Respol's body. Respol immediately said that he initially did not see the bear and asked why he came. Well then, Deadly Bear said that he came to see the blue cat. After he said this, Rispel immediately attacked the enemy, who turned out to be standing behind him. Blood Lynx was very angry due to the fact that he was obviously losing, but nevertheless he knew how to counterattack. Rispel was very surprised that his opponent was still conscious and was even trying to fight back. Moreover, the Lynx even managed to grab his opponent's hand in order to carry out the maneuver. After that, he made a fairly reliable grab and now the repole could not move at all. At that moment, Bloody Lynx told the deadly bear that the cat was in his office. Kim Young I decided that it was not worth staying here for a long time and went to that office, where I found the cat. She sat there and said that the school leaders were still the same, and nothing had changed in the gangs themselves. The bear said that since they are schoolchildren they all fight, but the cat asked him not to forget that he is also a schoolchild. At least during the conversation she learned from the bear that it turns out that the leader at the school had changed, because she still remembered that the leader was Jong Su. Clear to her, because he had a disgusting character, and the bear said that he was just being very cocky. Most of all, the blue cat was surprised that Tae Jin became the new head. The bear said that the situation turned out to be funny, that Jong Su recently displaced Ji Aite, and now he has been displaced. After that, he turned to the blue cat and said something and don't worry about these school children. After the girl rummaged around the computer a little, she told the bear that Jean was quite smart and ran the school well. He is a cunning one, because he will take away 501, and therefore no one reprimands him. She also said that in any case she thinks that this could cause them problems. At that second the bear got ready. He asked the blue cat what her plans were for the evening and suggested they talk over a glass of wine. Well, then the girl advised Kim Young to take care of herself, because this worries her most. The bear began to leave, but suddenly the girl told him to stop and listen. Young, he already thought that she had changed her mind, and turned his head in her direction. But the girl said that if Young speaks disrespectfully to her again, he will die very quickly. The bear said that he understood everything and began to walk away with even greater speed. Literally half an hour later, he was already in the gym, and told his friend about the conversation with the blue cat. The bear said that she almost killed him because he simply invited her to go to a restaurant. He felt very uncomfortable and he asked his friend to be a little more serious. That pumped up man apologized and asked if Young really liked the blue cat. Then the bear replied that she was very beautiful and sexy, 
and plus quite popular. His friend answered him that once he involuntarily hugged her during a meeting, the bears immediately became interested in what happened next. The man said that it was wonderful, and after that young asked if they started dating after that. Then the man smiled very broadly and asked if the bear could see the gold tooth that was inserted into him. He added that that day she knocked out his tooth and broke four ribs, and there were other situations when she almost killed him. Young said that if you look at this man's body, it will become obvious that the blue cat is quite strong. He replied that of course this is so, because she is the only one who has more strength than him. The man immediately turned to one of the girls who was standing nearby and said that if she drinks a carbonated drink, she will never get pumped up. Then Young asked the man if Hanel was stronger than him, but he replied that Hanel was more of a manager and not a fighter. But the bear also had one question that interested him greatly, who is stronger, the Hanel or the blue cat? The man replied that Hanel obviously wins here, because he is weaker than him, but by a little. It combines the features of an ideal hero such as strength, intelligence, courage and determination. After all, it was not for nothing that he received the title of the strongest hero on the planet, and is an example to follow. Then the man again shouted at the woman who was passing by and said that he had just seen a cigarette in her hands. After that, he stood up and came closer to her and said that with him she would not lose a single gram of muscle. Then he told the man that it turns out that the coolest and strongest is Hanel. Then the man thought about it and said that he has the title of the strongest hero, but in reality everything is not so simple. It was impossible to say for sure that he would 100% defeat anyone in a one-on-one -on -one duel because everyone has strengths. Young immediately asked his comrade what he meant when he said this. The man said that there was enough talk in vain, and reminded Young that he had not trained for a very long time. He pointed his hand at the barbell and said that Young is not an ordinary person, so he will perform deadlifts 10,000 times. After these exercises, the bear could not engage in his heroic activity for a week. Three months have passed since Kim's son became a superman, and his body also began to change. Firstly, he gained muscles, and the guy even thought about the fact that it might be worth going to this competition. But it seems that there are problems with controlling emotions, because as they say, the stronger you become, the more stupid you become. But the guy didn't believe it, he was always patient, and one day he heard on the news that the villains had disrupted the 17th Congress. This Congress was dedicated to the unification of the North and the South, and the villains belonged to the VN group. And in turn, the heroes from the group of defenders who were supposed to guard the events disappeared somewhere. The guy would like to visit the lair of the VN villains at least once, because it was interesting what they were doing there. He continued to collect money, and apparently because he constantly did this, it became easier and easier. The local hooligans already knew him, and only by his mask they understood that now it would not be easy for them. Therefore, as soon as they noticed him, they immediately began to run away, Kim San thought about the fact that it might be worth coming up with a villainous name for himself. He also didn't quite like school life, and he didn't really like doing business with Jean anymore. One day he came to school and Jean asked him to go have a drink after school, but San noticed someone behind him. There, one of the students beat some student, and after receiving many blows, he apologized. At that moment, the guy immediately remembered how the same people once beat him in an alley. The picture he saw in front of him made him horrified, and he decided to leave. He was very unpleasant to see this, and he didn't even want to explain anything to Jean. This made him proud, and he no longer wanted to stay there, and Jean was very nervous when he found out about it. He no longer considered himself a failure, and believed that he needed to move on to bigger things. But there was no balance or prudence in his decision, he just thought it was cool. He didn't try and didn't prepare in any way to become the greatest villain. And San paid for this rash decision very quickly, and regretted everything even faster. One day, when he was walking along a dark street, he saw a crowd of bandits running into an alley at high speed. He thought that everything was going quite well, and decided to check how much money they had. But then he saw something very interesting, which became both fascinating and frightening. A huge group ran into that alley, and it was clear that they were scared when they already ran there. Within a second, Kim San noticed that one of these bandits flew out in the opposite direction at great speed. But Kim hadn't even done anything yet, and the guy was trying to understand why he flew like that. He assumed that he had telekinesis, which he could not yet control. There was a girl standing in the alley who said that she had already warned, and if the bandits were still doing business, they would die. 
When the guy heard the girl's voice, he was even more surprised, because she could really deal with all of them. It was the leader of a group of young heroes, and she told the bandits that the club was closed today. One of the bandits asked the girl whom he called Clover why she was doing this to them. Well then she said that she was surprised that the bandit didn't understand, because yesterday's stabbing in the club was precisely because of them. She also added to her answer that the bandit is bad at pretending that he doesn't understand anything. At that moment, one of her enemies swung a wooden stick to hit her in the back. He struck with a huge swing, and felt that it suddenly became easier to move. When he looked at the stick that I should have had in his hand, he realized that it had broken on the back of the girl's head. Clover said that all bandits are almost the same, and fight in the same ways. She kicked her opponent right on the chin, causing him to fly several meters into a concrete wall. The last remaining bandit stood on his feet and shouted very loudly and angrily. Then the girl jumped approximately 5m and prepared to strike him as well. A moment later, all the opponents were lying on the floor and Clover said that she warned that armed attacks would not be tolerated. Kim himself didn't understand how this girl just flew up 5 meters and also broke a stick without doing anything. Was she really a hero? But Kim San was not yet sure of this formulation. Suddenly the girl felt someone's presence and decided to turn around to see who it was. Clover asked Kim San if he was also a member of this club, but the guy was too scared. The girl said that he didn't seem to look like him because he was wearing different clothes, and asked what he was doing here. Slowly retreating, Kim himself thought that this Clover was definitely a hero, and it was better to run away from here. He understood that he had never fought with heroes before. Therefore, he needed to run away. But he didn't know that the girl also had great speed, and she managed to overtake him quite easily. She said that she realized that this guy is a famous black mask who takes money from hooligans. The guy didn't understand how the girl knew all this about him, whether he still existed. The entire time he didn't say a word. After the clover said this, she immediately struck with her hand at the place where the guy was. And it was a real surprise for her that she missed, and Kim was able to dodge. Then she launched another kick, but the guy managed to dodge this blow as well. He landed on the ground and stood a short distance from the girl. Now they stood and simply looked at each other silently for several seconds. The guy understood that he really had a hero in front of him, because this girl was too fast. Clover, in turn, thought that this guy was not so easy since he was able to come back twice. He definitely saw her attacks, so the girl directly asked the guy if he was a superman. Fear appeared on Kim's son's face, but he still didn't say anything. The girl said that she kept wondering why the bully so often gets it, and then said that her name is Clover. She also added that she apologizes for attacking so harshly at the first meeting. And when the guy didn't answer anything, she asked if he was a hero. From the look it became clear that he was not a hero, but it was also difficult for civilians to call him a villain. Then she asked the guy if he had to choose, would he become a villain? Kim San again could not answer separately, but only made strange sounds. But when he gathered his strength, he said that he dreams of becoming the main villain of the planet. The girl was surprised that after so many minutes of silence the guy finally said such a tough thing. Then she said that now she understands that Kim San wants to be a villain. She took a fighting stance and said that since he had introduced himself, they should start playing their roles. Clear from her that she was ready to attack at any moment. Kim San understood this, but he was very scared and was not sure that he wanted to fight now. But this didn't really bother the clover, since she had already pushed off from the place where she was standing and moved towards the guy. A moment later, she was already a few centimeters away from Kim San's body. A hail of blows rained down on Kim San, because in fact the girl was quite fast. She constantly struck at her opponent, but the guy dodged quite quickly. At the same time, Kim did not understand why the girl attacked him for no reason. Is it really possible that since you are a hero, everything is already allowed to you? During the battle, he paid attention to the girl's gaze. He was focused, and it was obvious that she was trying to kill him, and so quickly. Only at this moment did the guy realize that he was now fighting, and he could well dodge. If you think about it, the girl did not move so fast, and she even seemed a little slow. He clearly saw her vulnerable spot, and thought that it was worth attacking now. Kim swung his fist and told himself that he only lives once and it's definitely worth a try. A second before the blow landed on the girl, she noticed that she would not have time to block this blow. Kim San hit the girl quite hard right in the side, but at the last moment she managed to block. 
but even despite this, she flew away from this blow ten meters from where she stood before. She flew into a concrete wall, and it was difficult for her to get up after that. Kim San really liked knowing that he hit it so easily, and that he managed to hurt the hero. Clover thought that she thought that her hand would fall off. She raised her arm and bent it at the elbow, thinking that she would have to use a different technique. At that same second, a red string began to emanate from the watch on her hand, it was the ancient magic of strings. Kim San got scared when he saw a red glowing string start to come out of this watch. Darkness said clover should only be used against notorious criminals and supervillains. Since Kim San was one of those, the girl asked not to judge her for this. The guy realized that now the battle would become much more difficult, and looked focused at his opponent. Clover used the string magic technique, and this red string flew towards the guy. Moreover, it also used the snake's embrace to immobilize its opponent. Kim San was frightened by all this, and also did not have time to react due to the speed of the string. He shouted out the word hurt, because when the string touched his body, that's exactly what he felt. The guy felt pain for the first time since he became a superman, and it scared him. Clover was scared by the fact that this string could even cut metal, but the guy was simply in pain. After that, she used Makara, and now the guy had no chance of not being immobilized. This string wrapped itself several times around the guy's hand, and thus became knotted. Clover realized that winning would not be so easy, but nevertheless it was worth trying. She decided that first it was worth tearing off the enemy's hand in order to disorient him. Kim San heard this quiet voice and was very scared because he didn't know whether his hand would remain with him. Then the girl pulled this string towards herself with all her strength, expecting that a hand would fly up to her. But instead, the guy still stood in place and didn't even move from it. Clover became very tense and scared when she realized this too. Even so, the hit was perfect, and it was not clear why Kim didn't even move. Kim thought that he was in a lot of pain and asked Clover why she did that. He was easily able to tear off part of this string, and now the girl could not pull on it. Her line could hold back even a dinosaur, but this guy tore it like a thread. A moment after she realized this, the girl realized that she began to move in the air. All because the guy pulled this very string, and now the girl was flying in his direction. He prepared to strike, and the clover noticed this quite early. Therefore, she used the snake scale technique to block this blow. But when she flew close enough and Kim San struck at her, the shield crumbled. Moreover, she began to fly to the side and a rather massive explosion occurred near her body. At this moment, Kim San looked at his head and was scared because of the wounds from the string. In fact, they were not particularly deep or serious, but nevertheless it angered him. He began to run towards the clover with his fists ready to throw a few more punches. The girl realized that this opponent was too tough for her and she should have run away as soon as she realized this. Tears appeared in her eyes and looking at Kim who was running in her direction, she thought that she was still far from reaching that level. At that moment, the guy did not understand what he was doing now, and realized that he did not control his body. Most of all, I couldn't understand why the hand moved on its own and had such great strength. A moment later, Kim San, against his will, hit the girl with his fist with all his might. Clover's lifeless body lay on the floor and did not move at all. The guy found himself in such a serious situation, and he realized that most likely it was because he was worried. For some time he looked at the body of this girl and could not believe that this really happened. Did he really kill the hero? After all, he didn't want to do this at all. Suddenly, screams began to be heard throughout the entire street, talking about some kind of explosion and about a hero. They quickly noticed that the clover was lying on the floor and not moving and decided that they needed to call the police. Then they noticed the guy and decided that it was he who killed the hero, meanwhile Kim San pushed off from the ground. Then he tried with all his might to fly up, and he succeeded quite successfully. He flew up a very long distance and had already disappeared from the visibility range of all the people who lived in that house. The girl's condition was, to put it mildly, not comforting, the main problem was that the broken ribs were affecting the lungs. Some heroes looked at her body through thick glass and did not understand how this could happen. How was Clover in such a state? Her skills could rival those of adult heroes. One of the heroes said that the silhouette of the attacker was visible on surveillance cameras from the scene, but unfortunately it was too dark. The blue cat said in a low voice the real name of the hero, Clover. Her name was Hina, and she looked really terrible, 
her whole body was covered with wounds. Suddenly, the deadly bear ran up to the other heroes, and it was clear that he was disappointed. He immediately ran to the glass to look at the condition of the clover. He asked all the other heroes what happened to Hei Na, and how it could even happen. The bear began to examine her body from head to toe in order to fully understand her condition. Putting his hand to the glass, he very loudly asked the heroes who dared to do this. The bear's friend told him not to worry because very experienced doctors were watching the girl. Then Young he said that they were supposed to be close, and the girl just said that they were calling him now. The bear picked up the phone, and the person who called him said that he had to notify everything directly. He said that any revenge is prohibited, despite the state of the clover, no one can act without permission. The bear said that he understood everything, and the man replied that in moments like this he should not lose his composure. Then Young looked at the girl's body again and said that it looks like Hanel is right. Then the blue cat told her not to worry, because she would sort it out completely while she was resting. Meanwhile, the action moved to Hanel's office where he was now reviewing important papers. Suddenly the phone rang and immediately went on speakerphone. The man who I called Hanel asked why he called him before. Then Hanel laughed and asked Respol where he was now, and he replied that he was in VN. He also added that the man slipped past all the traps, and Hanel answered him that he was most likely an unusual person. Look at the enemy's personal file. He asked if this task is too difficult. Rispel he replied that everything was under control because he had spent a lot of effort because of the traps he had set. He was already under surveillance, because hunting for this dog was even fun for the police. He also added that it took him two years to set all the traps and if he loses it now, he won't be able to catch it. Hanel replied that the action needed to be completed, and said that he was waiting for good news. Then he pressed the button on the phone to disconnect from this call. He did not know what to do in such a situation, because he was not entirely sure of the success of the operation. Meanwhile, in Texas, which is located in the United States of America, a very powerful explosion occurred near one of the bases. There was an A-rank villain named Mendes. After this explosion occurred, he raised his head and shouted the name Respol at the top of his lungs. The military personnel who were engaged in defense asked the commander how they could catch this villain. After all, they had run out of special shells. Explosion occurred, which this time affected all the military personnel who were near the commander. After the explosion, the villain moved to another group of military men. Then one of them gave the order to shoot at this villain right here and right now. But instead of taking the rain of bullets, the mestizo began to strike all the military with his blades. A lot of military personnel and a lot of equipment were involved to contain this villain. The general who led this operation asked her the hero was who was supposed to come and save them. At this moment, just a couple of the heroes were approaching closer and closer to the battlefield. One of them said that confrontation with adult atrocities cannot be compared with the activities of a teenage hero. He also told his partner that he would obviously become more popular after they dealt with the villain. It was a K2 combat instructor who was a hero, and his partner had just reached the rank of an adult hero. The instructor told his partner that this was a villain with rank A and they only had to hesitate and their heads would fly off their shoulders. The general said that he thanks the heroes for their help, and the instructor asked for forgiveness for being late. The general notified him that one armored division had been destroyed, and two regiments had already ceased to exist. Meanwhile, the instructor asked the general if he had caught the Respol Mentis in Korea, but he said that his cage was destroyed. Due to the fact that lightning hit it, it crumbled, and then the partner asked if it was really lightning. The general said that he really wanted to know about it, but this villain killed the driver. The heroes went towards the hero and the general told them that this enemy was very strong. Meanwhile, the mestizo easily dealt with all the soldiers who were near him. The instructor ordered the partner to get ready and act according to plan. In response, the partner told the instructor to take better care of himself, and suddenly a mentist noticed them. The partner used the purple sword to suddenly and with great force attack the enemy. The instructor, in turn, used a much more complex and even more deadly technique. It was jack o -lentry. He focused a large amount of energy into his fist to deliver a direct blow. Some attacked this villain at the same time, but the instructor was still a little closer to the enemy. A very large and bright explosion occurred at the place where the heroes fought with the villain. The general who watched this could not believe his eyes, it was terrifying and beautiful. But suddenly he saw in front of him a mentis who came very close to the general. At first, the military man saw the instructor's partner in front of him, 
but for some reason she did not move. Ranga villain he said that it was very funny if the general really thought that he could stop him with these heroes. Mentis held his partner's head in his hands and told the general that he would not be able to defeat him so easily. For some time the general was speechless and tried to ask the Mentis how he did it. He couldn't believe that this was actually happening and looked towards where the battle was taking place. There he saw that the instructor's body was pierced by several sharp objects, and his partner was beheaded. How strong must this villain be if he dealt with two heroes in a few seconds? The general looked at this guy with great horror, and did not understand how it would all end. There was real fear on his face and it seemed that the villain felt it well. The half-breed began to walk towards him, and at that moment the general realized that his life was doomed. When the villain came close enough, he only said the name of the Grigori organization. Meanwhile, for Kim San, everything seemed unreal, he really fought with the hero and even won. He really gained incredible strength, and after this fight it became very obvious. He thought it was very cool, because it felt much better than a fight with hooligans, everything was like a dream. The guy also felt a sense of catharsis, and it seemed like he didn't like it. Then quickly got dressed and decided that he needed to go collect some more money and he would think about different things while he earned money. He decided that he could go towards Honda, but very quickly abandoned this idea. All because he remembered that he wanted to go to another place, and even after he killed the hero, it was obvious that they were looking for him. Therefore, he decided that he would not go there, and he needed to figure out what to do instead. At first he decided that it might be better to rest today, but quickly discarded this idea. Then he thought that perhaps it was worth going to a place that he had been thinking about for a very long time. After all, there will be no heroes in that place, and there will certainly be no police who will cause problems. This time, Kim San did not go through the alleys as usual, but went to the area called Vien. Korea was united many years ago, but the joy of this news did not last long. The authorities of the North and South pursued their own interests and were constantly at odds. This created a huge gap between rich and poor, which led to huge social problems. And of course, this caused an explosion of discontent that citizens could no longer contain. Korea, which became infested with villains and criminals, became a major lawlessness that no one could control. The country that collapsed due to crimes was revived by knights of justice, heroes. However, the villains who enjoyed their freedom could not just leave it like that. The villains who could not withstand the competition and the attacks of the heroes headed to the mountainous area, poor and harsh. Due to too many villains, the country seemed to belong to this territory, and that is why it was called VN. Currently, this plateau is governed as a territory independent of the country that was fenced with a wall. Soldiers guarded the region around the clock. Kim San decided that he needed to go there, although he understood that this was not the best idea. After all, he would like to go to this place at least once, but when he acquired superpowers, there was no better time. He was right next to this huge wall, and only now he realized how majestic it was. Being below and looking at her, he could not even understand where her height ends. He looked around and saw an information sheet from the plateau itself. It was written on it that it was forbidden to pass, and in general the text looked quite harsh. The guy noticed that near the entrance there were several soldiers armed with military weapons. Going there at night like this would be too suspicious, so the guy wondered if there was a way to get through unnoticed. But after a few seconds he realized that he had just recently acquired such a method. He pushed off from the place where he had been standing all this time, because he realized that he could simply jump over this wall. When he was still in the air, he was surprised at how the VN looked from the inside. He landed and didn't think that this would happen and that he would be able to get through security so easily. Everything around looked very beautiful, in general it was nature that somehow beckoned the guy. In real life everything looked even cooler than in the pictures in the book. Nature looked just like the Amazon fox, and the guy thought that this place should be made a national park. The building here looked as if it was about to collapse, and Kim San did not understand how anyone could live here at all. But the most unusual thing was completely different, and it was both unusual and scary. All because the local people here looked completely different from the neighborhood hooligans. They were more serious, and obviously much stronger than the usual back alley hooligans. The people looked very scary, their faces were like villains from comic books, and Kim thought that he would not collect money here. The guy walked a few more meters and couldn't understand whether the village was either a forest or a city. Meanwhile, a man was running away from something very quickly and was scared. The guy was simultaneously thinking that it was very dangerous here, 
but so far everything looked pretty normal. Respol also seemed to be running after this man, and overall he looked focused. Kim San thought that there was some kind of special atmosphere here, and the views in general were very pleasant. Respol increased his speed in order to finally reach the one for whom he had been running all the time. The guy decided to turn around and return home before it was too late. But suddenly someone flew right past this guy at great speed. Kim himself realized that it looked like it was a man, and realized that he needed to help him. This man crashed straight into a concrete wall and was breathing very hard. He held his heart in his hand, and it was clear that he had just taken part in some kind of fight. Kim himself ran up to him and asked what had just happened. With a trembling throat, he asked the man if he was okay. He didn't answer anything, and Kim San noticed that he was seriously injured, and it looked like he needed help. But the man didn't answer anything even after that, and then the guy decided that everything was fine with him and he should leave. Quietly, he said that it was interesting that he had met such a nice young man. Meanwhile, Rispel came closer to the guy and said that he was a very slippery guy. At that very second, Kim himself realized that he had already seen this man somewhere. Then Rispel underscore underscore he said that he didn't think that his opponent would be able to get here. Gasping for breath, he told this man, whose name was Person, that it was all over. At that very second, Kim San remembered where he could see this such a familiar face. Meanwhile, the action moved to a restaurant located in Seoul. OG Ite worked there, and the boss was just leaving and said that the new employee would definitely not have enough energy. The man noticed that another great day had come, and said that when he returned from school everything became a little better. He rather wanted to finish everything here and go home, and maybe buy some beer on the way. But suddenly someone came into the restaurant, and the man was happy to serve the new guest. Well, when he looked at the clock, he said that it had already closed, and he would clean up and go home. Well, when he realized who was in front of him, he was very surprised, because he definitely did not expect such a guest. It was Jiang Su, his face looked rather angry and he told Ji Ai Te that they had not seen each other for a long time. The man moved around the kitchen and worked very hard to make good noodles. Clear from his face that he was tuning in with all his might, and was also trying to save a little time. After that, he transferred these noodles to a plate and placed them in front of Jiang Su's nose. He said that this is a masterpiece from Oji, Te on which a lot of effort was spent, and called it noodles for real men. He also added that even though he is now an assistant chef, very soon he will become the best chef. Meanwhile, Jiang Su began to eat these noodles, and the man immediately asked if it tasted good to him. Oji Te said that for him this should be part of being his first client. But suddenly the Su hit the table with his palm, and the man didn't know how to react to it. But he got a little angry when Su said that the noodles were completely tasteless and smelled of something strange. After some time, they moved outside and asked how his old friend's work was going. He replied that every day is like the apocalypse, and Zhang Su noted that he seems to like the job of a cook. The man said that cook is too strong a word, and also added that when he got out of the school corridors, the world seemed not so small to him. Yung Su asked O Ji Te if he hated him because he kicked him out of school like a coward. Well then the man said that if you think a little longer, you can understand that all this time Zhang Su was actually right. Zhang Su was very surprised when he heard this from O Ji Te. The man said that when he called him a hooligan, he thought differently, but in the end everything turned out that way. Then Zhang Su said that he always knew that he was right, and about Ji Te added that boasting is very unbecoming to him. Suddenly Jiang Su turned around and said that he would go because he had business to do, but the second man did not understand where he was in a hurry. Jones also apologized for his words and wished his old friend to become the greatest chef in the world. Oji Ite was embarrassed when he heard this, and quietly, Jiang Su suggested that he have a drink together one day. He replied that if there is time, because in the coming days he will definitely not be there. All because he must kill the monster so that everyone else can live. Meanwhile, the scene near the VN wall looked quite strange. Rispel told his opponent that he really deserves praise for being able to get here. But despite his efforts, he will still end, and he will not leave here alive. At that second, the guy remembered that in front of him was a reptile, and they had already met in that alley. For a second, the guy remembered his humiliating past, and his body refused to move. Rispel he said that a little more and the person would really be over. He suggested that he give up, but suddenly he got distracted. He turned his head to the side and saw a child there and told him to run away from here because it's dangerous here. 
Kim San at that moment was offended by a Respol due to the fact that he didn't even seem to remember it after that incident. Respol asked the boy if he had seen him before in Seoul, since this mask seemed familiar to him. In a trembling voice, the guy said that he, too, is evil. The letters not being connected into words were a pitiful sight. He himself remembered what it was like before becoming a superman and it was unpleasant for him. Perispolia suddenly turned around and said that they would talk later, but for now it was better for him to leave. A little louder, the guy shouted that he was not a child, and he shouldn't be treated that way. I still said that he couldn't hear and once again asked the guy to leave. Suddenly, a small but very sharp knife flew straight towards the Republic. At the very last moment, he noticed that some object was flying in his direction and drew attention to it. Having caught this knife, he said that it looks like the person has absolutely nothing left since he throws garbage. The half-dead man said that Respol needs to finally kill him. The hero said that he was going to do it anyway, and Kim San still tried to say something to him behind his back. He said that the hero should not ignore him, because he is also a villain and not a child. This time the hero did not even decide to turn towards his interlocutor, but only said that he understood everything and ordered him to hide behind him. Physical strength and pride were not proportional to each other. Even a weak person can have enormous self-esteem. Despite the good intentions of the respol, Sun's ego was greatly hurt. At that moment, a voice inside Kim awakened, telling him that trash is a title that suits such a coward. The guy said that even his inner voice shouldn't call him a coward. But the voice asked Kim why he was standing then, because he had to pull out this arrogant hand. The hero said that it is unlikely that Kim wants to play the victim who is constantly saved by the heroes. The guy said that of course he doesn't want this, because he is a real villain. But despite all the anger, Kim himself still hesitated and did not know what exactly to do. The voice called him a pathetic bastard, a coward, trash who would run away with his tail between his legs. He said that he was scared, he was very afraid, and he was just trash who wasted incredible power on nothing. The guy tried to shut up the voice, but it still called him a weakling. Kim San tried to make this voice shut up, but then the voice said that he would have to do everything himself. He told the guy that he would now show him what real strength is and how it manifests itself. In the meantime, he ordered the kid to stand behind him, after which he would take him home. He also said that he was sure that this person would not attack him, but just in case. Suddenly, the heroes felt some sudden movement behind them, but since they were distracted, they did not react. All because Akim Sank hit this hero right in the center of his body with enormous force. Splashes of blood scattered in all directions, and Respol I realized that it was starting to get dark in his eyes and he was gradually losing his mind. The guy managed to pierce the body of this hero literally right through, leaving a huge hole there. Person who was watching all this already thought that they were seeing real hallucinations in front of them. The guy had absolutely no control over his body at these moments, and even the pupils of his eyes disappeared. After he dealt this blow, he immediately began to run away to the side at high speed. And this was the point, because the field turned around in order to understand who was behind. But at the place where the guy stood there was only a small explosion, and Kim himself was not visible. Now Respol had a mortal wound, and blamed himself for being very distracted by the person. He also didn't like the fact that he couldn't even react after being pierced through. Very fast Respol I realized that it was a superman, and began to peer into the fog after the explosion. Suddenly everyone noticed a stone that was visible among all this fog. On this stone was the paw of some large and black animal. By that time, person already thought that he had died, and in fact, this is what his hell looks like. They both saw through the fog the purple eye of this animal, which glowed brightly. At that moment, the blue cat felt something strange, and it became visible from the outside. Therefore, one of the heroes asked her if something had happened, because she began to look in some direction. The cat immediately asked the other heroes if they had heard something, but they replied that they did not understand what she was talking about. The girl replied that she was simply sure that she had heard something, at the same time one of the heroes asked her why she did not take off her mask. The blue cat was distracted from the sounds, took a sip of coffee and told the hero to shut up if he doesn't have extra teeth. The man was very offended by this, but nevertheless he did not answer anything offensive in response. But nevertheless, the blue cat paid attention to what she felt and thought about it constantly. Meanwhile, Hanel was at home and said that he understood everything, including the position of darkness. After all, heroes are for heroes, 
but if darkness kills all criminals as it is now, then the police will have no work left. He spoke through wireless headphones, and notified the person he was talking to that he would talk to darkness. Hanel has now spoken to the mayor and said that he will take care of everything and the mayor can go to bed. But suddenly the hero felt someone's presence, and because of this he immediately turned around. It was like some kind of sound that came from a long distance away from him. He immediately ran out of his room and ran up the stairs to get to the roof. Very quickly he opened the door, and after some time he was already on the roof. Here he simply stopped and looked forward for a while. He did not understand what it was and why this sound appeared in the first place. Meanwhile, Chang Su was moving around some area due to the fact that he was looking for his target. He really didn't like realizing that he couldn't find him for a very long time. Over time, he decided that perhaps this bastard was just mocking him. But suddenly, while he was running, he noticed the birds flying in the sky. At first he thought that this was exactly his goal, but it turned out that it was just a small flock of birds. But suddenly there were too many of these birds, and this forced Chang Su to stop. He didn't understand why so many birds were alarmed in the middle of the night, or whether a fire had started somewhere. Respol, meanwhile, was trying to understand what had just happened and what needed to be done. Person, who still could not find the strength to get up, was even more shocked. They saw the body of that same guy in front of them, but most of all he looked like a demonic entity. His entire body was completely black, and only his purple eyes glowed brightly. Respol I thought it was a monster, but I couldn't believe it. After all, how is this possible, was this child really a monster? Or is it obsession? Person also assumed that this was a monster and could not understand where he came from here and why. He had a monster aura around him, and overall he looked very sinister. As soon as the two men discussed what was in front of him, this entity began to move towards the hero. The demon approached as close as possible to the hero's body, and obviously wanted to attack him. He swung his hand and tried to kill him with just one blow, but he dodged at the last moment. Respol I realized that now is the time for me to stand and think about everything. As soon as he dodged this attack, he immediately tried to make a counterattack by hitting him with his fist. But the monster did not even dodge this, and proudly accepted this blow. The hero understood that there was no point in stopping there, and decided to carry out a combined attack. He struck his opponent's body dozens of times with his hands and feet. But it seems that this did not bring any result, since the monster, despite all this damage, was able to swing. At that moment I realized that I needed to run away from this place as quickly as possible. The monster pushed its hand straight along the ground and it immediately threw the body away. He felt simply terrible, and what was even worse was that he realized that he would feel this way for a long time. When he looked back, he saw that after this monster's blow, a huge crack appeared in the ground. The hero realized that he could not resist such an opponent and decided to use the blow of justice. And in the area around his hand, an unknown blue aura began to appear, which over time turned into several balls. Immediately sent a small group of balls straight at his opponent. Despite the fact that these balls were quite small in size, they concentrated a large amount of energy. Well, when they reached their goal, Kim didn't even notice. Instead, immediately after surviving this attack, he decided to carry out his own. He began to run as fast as he could in order to strike with his own hands. His hands were modified and very sharp. When he got close enough, he tried to strike the hero. The hero was able to retreat only a few meters, and at the same time he thought that the monster didn't even wince, although the hero touched him. An iron spirit appeared right a few centimeters from the heroes in front, in a full defense stage. But the monster only needed one second to destroy this defense. Now the enemy was as close as possible to the hero, and Respol considered that this was the end. The enemy got close enough to strike with its claws directly on the hero's shoulder. He looked at him as a victim, and expected what kind of reaction the police would have. The hero now did not have his right hand, and this caused him great pain. With his other hand, he grabbed the stone that he had previously dragged here. He then threw the stone directly at his enemy, hoping to gain some time. The stone flew straight at the monster, and this created a huge avalanche of dust and various small stones. The heroes were now left alone, and tried to remove the pain in their shoulder with the help of superpowers. It was already quite difficult to breathe and he understood that he had an injury incompatible with life. Heavy bleeding meant that there was no turning back. But besides this, there was also a strong enemy in front of him. Despite the fact that at first he did not see this monster in the dust, 
he understood that it was obviously still alive. This Kim San was a real monster, someone who simply cannot be defeated in any way. The hero began to laugh and say that perhaps this place would become his grave. This monster is dangerous, and the hero has never seen or heard of such power before. He also understood that it was necessary to convey information to the others in at least some way so that they could complete the job. After all, if no one knows about such enemies, then they will all die in one day. He looked into the eyes of the one who would most likely kill him, and thought about how to protect his friends. But suddenly the guy pushed off from the place where he was standing and slowly began to move towards the goal. Rezpol at this time asked who this monster was and why he was attacking him. The hero did not think that his life was over here, and he only blamed himself for this, because this was too lonely a death. Placing his hand on the superhero sign on his chest, he left the last gift to the monster. He used the Kisusin technique, and at that very moment a stone of incredible size appeared behind him. But it seems that the monster was not particularly impressed by this, since it still moved towards the enemy. The heroes strained themselves as hard as possible in order to direct this boulder directly at the enemy. But the monster still did not react in any way, but only approached more and more rapidly. It became more and more difficult for the heroes to move this stone, and he decided to use one of the tactics. This technique was called Mangensok, and as soon as he used it, a huge boulder immediately flew into monster. This guy was immediately crushed by a huge number of stones and he could not move for some time. He was just lying on the floor under a pile of stones, and showed no signs of life. But just a second after he lay on the floor, his hand began to move, the hero could not believe that he was able to get up even after the blow. But at the same time, he understood that this was just the beginning, and he still had a small chance. Rezpol lifted an even larger group of stones, and it hung over the guy's head. This time the heroes used the Manet technique, and now the stones accelerated before they touched the enemy's body. The more techniques the hero used, the more painful it became for him as he could not stun the pain. This time all the stones crashed onto the body of the monster, which turned out to be made of something very strong. After all this, Kim was even able to remain standing and didn't even fall to the floor. All the stones simply smashed against his body and disintegrated into many fragments, falling to the floor. Rispel did not understand how the guy survived it, and what his strength limit was. A smile appeared on the monster's face, and the heroes realized that he definitely wouldn't be able to win. But he had to at least try, and he shouted the word flash, and the huge boulder flew again. It picked up more and more speed, as it was launched from the territory that was located a kilometer away. Despite the fact that the stone was moving very quickly, the monster still managed to react. He struck with his sharp claws directly at this stone, and it crumbled into pieces. Rispel had no options left other than just dying trying. The hero had absolutely no strength for anything, he could barely stand on his feet. But suddenly he remembered that the lynx was probably already coming here, and if he fought this monster, he would die. And this means that we need to make sure that he does not come here, and the hero releases a clot of luminous mother into the sky. Rezpol did everything he could, and having gathered his strength, he stood up straight and waited for the monster to come closer to him. Not loudly, he said that perhaps he should have run at a trot after all. There was a smile on his face, and it was at that moment that the monster struck with all his strength his claws along the hero's body. A moment after that, his body began to fall to the floor until it ended up on the cold ground. Kim Sana stood near the body, and a very wide smile was visible on the monster's face. Person who was watching all this was still looking towards the monster. He couldn't believe that Rispel was dead, and he couldn't believe at all what was happening here. The monster turned towards this guy, and suddenly the black aura around him slowly began to disappear. This surprised person very much, and he began to watch this with even greater interest. A few seconds later, in the place of this monster one could already see a boy in a mask. The guy very quickly turned back into the image of Kim San, and asked person why he was still here. After that, he seemed to lose consciousness, and his body also fell to the floor. Now the dead hero was lying on the floor along with the living villain, who had passed out for some reason. Person did not understand what kind of fairy tale this was, and for some time he could not even move from shock. The bloody lynx ran faster and faster, and suddenly it felt something foreign. While he was running, he noticed this glow, and because of this he slowed down. When he raised his head, he saw this same glow in the sky, and realized that this was a hero's signal. 
The lynx decided that in this way he wanted to show that he had caught the person, which means he followed the right trail. The man also thought that this seemed to be in the opposite direction to the tracks, and it was not clear why his name was being called. Since he tried hard, the lynx decided to buy something for his friend, for example, a new guitar since the guitar res pole is already outdated. The next day, all the news said that on the 7th, a res pole was killed on the territory of VN. A funeral took place, at which the priest said that the res pole had left them to join God. His courage and sacrifice will not be forgotten, and his friends, like everyone else, will always remember him. They will live to keep memories of him in their hearts, and believe that Rispel has found peace in heaven. Everyone who was here now could not believe that the heroes really died. The others said that he is now in a better place, because the human world looks simply terrible. Gregory's members looked at their friend's grave and were half angry, and the other half wanted to cry. Suddenly, Hanel hit a tree that grew nearby with his hand with quite impressive force. He said that Rispel simply could not die, because he is practically the most powerful of all the heroes. The blue cat at that moment said that the Republic had done a good job, which means she can now rest. She apologized for not being there, she didn't even know that her friend was in such danger. Bending down, she asked the hero to give it to her, and promised that she would find the killer and he would pay. Suddenly, Princess Ryashin, who was an elderly grandmother, also appeared at the funeral. Next to her was a hero, the leader of the Warang group named Ban, and the princess herself was one of the three heroes of the War of the North, nicknamed Heavenly Fireworks. Ban said that he simply could not believe that this happened, and asked Gregory how Respol could have died. Hanel thanked Ban for coming and told Princess Ryashin that he was very ashamed. But my grandmother said that this is fate, and there is no point in blaming anyone. She also looked towards the lynx and said that most likely the Repal himself would not blame anyone. She also notified Hanel that she needed to keep an eye on the lynx, because he is now having the hardest time of all. Hanel she said that this is so, because the lynx and the res pole have been best friends since childhood. The grandmother said that she was unlikely to be able to help with anything, and Hanelsk said that her presence alone gives strength. After that, he began to approach the lynx who was standing at the tombstone of his best friend. He put his hand on his shoulder and said that it was time for them to leave. Well then the lynx said that it all happened solely because of him. The blue cat asked what he was talking about and why he thought it was his fault. He replied that it was all because of him because he missed the person, and Respol ran after him. Another heroine said that according to this logic, then all of them are to blame, so it doesn't work that way. But the lynx clenched his fist very tightly and said that he would never forgive this. Hanel I saw that bloody lynx was very angry at this moment and it was better not to touch him. He said that the murderer of Respol will definitely be found, and that day he will not leave him. Lynx looked towards all his friends and said that he would definitely eliminate the killer. The world was shocked by the news of the death of Respol, all the heroes of the world were furious, and there was nothing to say about the Grigori. Even those villains who constantly participated in battles were afraid of the wrath of the Grigori and tried to justify themselves with the help of an alibi. Meanwhile, one of the members of Gregory moved to the VN in order to understand what happened. He walked quite a long way to find the place where the battle took place. And here, between the trees there were noticeable traces of blood, and he realized that this place was right here. The he put his hand to a crack in the ground and realized that from these signs of struggle it was clear that there had been a massacre here. He walked along some more cracks, and was able to figure out a very important place without error. Darkness was able to determine without error where the resurgent died. Looking around, he very quickly realized that the battle here was quite fierce. A variety of facts around that proved this. All this for him was only proof that the battle was fierce, and two individuals took part in it. Respol and Lynx pursued the person, and during the search they decided to split up. Walking along one of the paths, he realized that the Respol was chasing the person right here. Person was exhausted, but still continued to run away at low speed. Then he continued to chase him, and chased him for quite a long time and distance. And here, near the wall, he came to a dead end and didn't know where to run. Of Respol and Lynx, so it is not surprising that Respol had zero chances of losing. It was necessary to understand who or what influenced the fact that he lost this battle and died. And when Darkness looked around, he realized something similar that could be the reason for this. These were human footprints, which were completely separate from the group of footprints that he found at the beginning. This meant that there was also a third person here, and perhaps he was both aware that Respol had died. 
these were not the steps of a person who was studying hand-to-hand -hand combat. It seemed that Respol was not afraid of this individual, apparently they knew each other, or Respol was not afraid of him, but the darkness was also confused by one fact. Judging by the blood stains, Rispel was hit hard in this very place, which means this stranger dealt a very strong first strike. The hero was defending himself and perhaps in the position in which darkness was now standing. And in fact, the reptile was standing like that at that moment. Respol at that moment was already mortally wounded, and the enemy was most likely still alive. Then darkness drew attention to the stones that were scattered near the battle site and decided to conduct a scan. This is definitely the same creature, but for some reason darkness it turned out that perhaps this was not a person. He took out a special device to check the radioactive background in this place. And after a few seconds the device showed that the radioactive background is quite high here right now. And this could only mean one thing, that this person was a monster, and also with a rather incredible aura. Attack, defense of Rispel, but the enemy was strong and the tired and wounded Rispel could not even touch the enemy. He used all the skills that I had in my arsenal to defend myself. It was a blow of justice. It was also noticeable that he used the iron spirit to defend himself, but it was unlikely to work. What's most interesting is that he even used Kasusan. The blows of justice from Rispel and Hanel are practically the same in strength. Akisosin is not inferior in power to a nuclear missile, which means that the hero did not fight by surprise. After the last blow, the Respol fell, and so did his opponent. It looks like he was carried away by the person. Perhaps it was an ally of person, but most likely not, since he cannot have allies. Judging by the fact that the reptile did not attack first, the opponent was not a monster from the very beginning. So many questions and so few answers. On the chest of the Rispel emblem was a message that the Respol wanted to convey to the Grigori before his death. It said something about dark hair in a black mask, a man under twenty years old, and something else. There was also this word that could not be understood, and everyone was immersed in deep thought. No one, including Hanel, understood what he wanted to say by this, and what it all meant. Darkness came into the room and said that the word transformation was written there. Everyone in the room was surprised that darkness had come to them. The blue cat asked the guest where he had been all this time, and whether he even knew about the situation that had developed. He said that he stopped by VN on the way here, and learned a lot while he was there. All the heroes that were in the room were surprised once again, because they did not expect darkness to be there. One of the heroines asked what he found out there, because knowing darkness, he was probably able to notice something there. He answered everyone that he had built a rather interesting picture in his head. Bloody Lynx suddenly became very angry, and slammed his hand onto the table with all his might. He really didn't like the fact that Darkness called the situation that had developed interesting. He said that the Res Poly died, and because of this this situation cannot be called interesting at all. I asked the Lynx what happened to him and why he was acting so strange. At that moment, Bloody Lynx stood up from his seat and was about to start running towards Darkness. But suddenly someone stopped him and asked him to calm down, because darkness always behaves quite calmly. He replied that there was no need to stop the trot, because in such a situation it would have turned out to be a very funny situation. Hanel suggested that darkness should also shut up, because it was obvious that the situation looked quite tense. Darkness asked him if he crossed the line, because Hanel very rarely gets angry with anyone. He asked the lynx for forgiveness and said that he did not mean anything bad, but only meant that the circumstances of the battle looked interesting. Then he replied that Darkness should lay out everything that turned out to be found out, and then immediately disappeared. Darkness he said that he came to help, but in the end he was doused with verbal slop. Then he took something out of his pocket, and a second later he put the flash drive on the table. He added that all the information was here, and that he needed to leave before the lynx pounced on him again. When he had already opened the door, he was suddenly stopped by a hanel. He invited Darkness to become an official member of the team, due to the fact that the entire team needed his help. Then he asked if it was possible to do this, because the dirty pigs from the management would be against it. Just in time, someone called Hanel, and when he looked at his phone he was disappointed. He turned on the speakerphone and asked the deputy what happened and how he could help. The deputy said hello and said that he had heard about the Republic and was very sorry, it was the first time he had called after the incident. He said that he was very sorry and that he was very busy so he didn't call earlier. Then he said that he was calling because the elections were coming soon, 
and Hanel had probably already heard about it. The deputy added that it is a pity for the Republic, but the leadership does not want the matter to take a serious turn. And this means that the matter needs to be hushed up, because this is politics, since there is a possibility that the deputy will not be elected in the elections. Hanel she said that this was enough, and now he will speak. The hero told the deputy that he was his acquaintance and that Respol had died, and he was a real brother to the entire group. He asked how he could even talk about elections, much less propose to hush up this matter. Hanel he said that they are now in no condition to forgive anyone, so this time they will sort it out in their own way. He hung up on the call and darkness said that Hanner today is more like his old version of himself. After this, the Hanel raised his eyes and looked straight at darkness, asking if he would be a member of the team. At first, Darkness looked at everyone who was in the room to see their reaction. Overall it was quite varied, but overall everyone just looked into his eyes with interest. The man said that he agreed and said that it was a good idea to work together. Hannah thanked his friend and said that they should all work very hard to find this bastard. The next day, Darkness came to the place where Respol was buried. He had never come here before, and for some time he stood silently in front of his tombstone. He thought about a variety of things and of course tried to remember the universal moments with the deceased. The gravestone looked rather modest, and there were several fresh flowers lying next to it. Darkness also brought his own flower, which looked the same as those that were already lying here. He put it right next to the tombstone and began to walk away from the cemetery. A lot of time has passed since that day, and although Kim San doesn't remember it, everyone around said that he killed Respol. Due to the fact that Kim's life had changed so much, he decided to leave school, despite his good grades. The teacher signed all the necessary papers, and the guy thanked him for everything. Even if the school was useless and didn't really mean anything, the guy still felt sorry to leave there. Now it's really all over, Kim San thought about what he forgot to do. Suddenly he heard a very familiar girl's voice, which seemed to be trying to find him. It was Ji Yoon and it looks like she ran for a very long time to catch up with the guy. She told him that she already knew everything, and that I was very happy that the guy was leaving. The girl said that if Kim himself decided to leave school, then she would do the same. The guy was speechless for a while, and then asked why she suddenly decided so. The girl said it was a joke. There was an awkward pause after this joke, and Kim said that it looked like it was time for the girl to go to class. Then Ji asked if the guy knew that she was an outsider, and if it weren't for Kim, she would never have had fun. The guy laughed and said that the girl is actually very popular and often communicates with others. But Ji Eun told him that she was always alone and it seemed to her that having fun with classmates was childish. She looked at the floor for a short time, and then raised her eyes and said that besides all this, she was also from the shelter. Ji didn't know how old she was, because her adoptive parents only indicated her approximate age in the papers. She didn't really want to go to school, because it was very boring and not at all interesting. Especially bad when the teacher said that homework needed to be done in groups. She didn't like this most of all, it only made it more obvious that she didn't fit into society. It was also difficult for the others to have such a gloomy classmate in the class, and in the end it turned out that she did not want to communicate with them. But in fact, she was a little lonely and not entirely comfortable either in company or alone. But one day everything changed when she heard two guys talking behind her back. It was Kim San, and he was explaining to his friend that it was worth inviting this girl to join their team. A few seconds later, the guy already approached her and said that he had a small proposal for Ji. Then Kim San asked her if she had a team, and added that if Ta didn't decide, she could join them. The girl didn't understand why he approached her specifically, because before that no one had invited her to join their team. At that moment, the girl wanted to be on a team with him, and there was concern in his words, so she thought that they could become friends. Kim San said that he didn't even know this, and moreover, he didn't remember how he invited her to the group. But in fact, he started liking Ji Yoon somewhere in the middle of the semester, suddenly the girl said thank you to the guy. She really wanted to thank the guy, because thanks to him, her school life was quite fun for a while. After that, she approached the entrance to the school territory, advised him to be careful, and wished him not to get sick. But suddenly Kim San stopped her and said in a shaking voice that he had another proposal. He asked if he could write to her, because it was obvious that they would see each other again someday. The girl said that she would wait for a message from Kim, but then the guy realized that he couldn't write to her for her own sake. 
He realized this right at the moment when he watched the girl enter the school grounds. How did this happen? Why, due to his strength and circumstances, cannot he achieve what he wanted? June wrote to him, and without him his gang ended up back in the hospital due to the fact that they were beaten by high school students. But now everything was different, a person sat in front of the guy and told him that they had already gone too far. The cadet advised the guy to pull himself together, and for some reason called him Hyungnam. He said that Kim had already killed Rispel, and he could count his kind in the whole world on one hand. And this means that now guys will be looking not only for heroes but also for villains who want to make a name for themselves. The guy's voice began to tremble, and he wanted to object, but suddenly person interrupted him. But this man only said that he was listening carefully to what Kim's son would say now. The guy asked if the person would speak to him in a formal manner, but he replied that this is the only way to address the young. Suddenly someone else came into their room and called this guy boss. He told him that all the side dishes were gone and he really wanted an egg roll. Person turned to this guy and told him to watch his language in the presence of the Hyanam. This guy's name was Gamogen, and he still asked the boss to buy food. Person didn't like the way Gamogen communicated with the boss at all. But suddenly Kim said that he would buy something to eat, and Gamogen said that this boss is really the best. A person entered the room again, this time it was a girl who was unhappy that someone drank her coffee. She blamed it on Gamogen, and said that she had already told him to stay away from coffee. The guy addressed her by the name Shirtri, and said that it was very unbecoming for her when she was rude to someone. A person took two cups of coffee and brought them to Kim San, while the girl dealt with the Gamogen. Speaking of what is happening now, this happened a few days after the murder of the Respol. When the guy woke up, he couldn't understand why he passed out after that fight. Suddenly he heard a voice calling out to him as Hyung Nim and asking if he had woken up. At first the guy asked where he was now, and thought that this voice was just a hallucination. Person appeared in front of Kim San and said that he had been waiting for a long time for the moment when Hyung Nim would wake up. Kim said that it looks like he confused him with someone, because he doesn't even know him. Then person bowed and said that since the guy is thank you for life, from now on he will call him Hyanam. At the same time, he bowed, which seriously surprised Kim San. Then the guy asked if he had really seen him before, and very quickly realized that it was he who was then in VN. Person introduced himself and said that he was very grateful that Kim's son saved him. He said that he grew up in VN and lived alone, here everyone lives by the laws of the jungle and he also lived by them. But Kim himself saved his life, and then for the first time he received such care and help from anyone. Since the guy thank you life, it was now in the hands of person. So the guy decided to live with person, and soon their company was replenished. It was Gamogen, who was a mercenary whom person hired to guard. Then person he said that he may be crazy, but he's a specialist in his field and he's definitely good at it. This man was quite feminine, and said that he was very interested in who person had been telling him about all this time. He also said that Kim's son is very much his type and he likes people like that. The guy was a little embarrassed and greeted his new acquaintance, and said that he was glad to meet you. For some time, Gamogen was simply silent and looked at the guy with a smile. But then the smile on his face disappeared and he began to look more confused, Gamogen asked why he was just happy. He was silent for a while, and a small drop of tears flowed down his snow-white face. Only then did Kim realize that Gamogen was a very popular villain, and thanks to this he joined him. One day, while in this building, Kim San asked the person if he needed any help, and he replied that he should rest. Then the guy wanted to answer something to this, but suddenly there was a knock on the door. He immediately asked the person if he was expecting any guests, and he replied that no one knew about this place. He ordered Hyungnam to leave, a Gamogen by that time he was already standing with a large knife near the door. Person carefully opened the exit doors, and really wanted to find out who was standing there. He stuck his head into the resulting hole, and realized that there was not a very strong enemy standing there. It was some guy with glasses, and behind his back was a huge backpack with camping supplies. At that moment, everyone had already looked out to see who had come to them. First he asked to introduce himself, and then asked Kim if he knew who he was. Of course, the guy didn't know who this guest was, but suddenly this man said that his name was Dr. Shirtri. Then he shouted, said that she had heard about Mr. Sun, and asked to join their group. Person was very surprised when he heard this, as were everyone else who stood near him. But nevertheless, this guest was allowed inside in order to have a conversation with him. He also said that his name is Dr. Shirtri, 
and he witnessed the battle between Mr. San and Respol. After that, he quietly watched the master himself, and watched the powerful strength and modest character of the guy. Then the guest said that Kim was exactly who he was looking for, and he decided that he needed to do what he had planned. Shutrai shouted again and said that he would conquer this world and give his master rank. The guy was both scared and confused because the Shutrai sometimes spoke so loudly. Person immediately said that he felt that someone was watching them all the way, and asked whether the person who deprived the Shutrai was the person. But instead, Shutrai told San that he had extraordinary intelligence, and because of this, the state and heroes oppressed him all the time. But when he saw how Mr. Sun defeated the Republic, he saw new hope. At that moment, the Gamogen asked what kind of oppression there could be in their time. He said that they could, because he argued that rather with Grigori, my strongest country in the world. He also proposed to covertly cover the entire Earth with 30 nuclear bombs, and then neutralize the world with the help of Grigori. But he was ignored, and Kim suggested that this was probably due to the fact that Shur 3 was too young. Shutrai started screaming again and said that this world has long been rotten, and asked if he would accept him into his team. Gamogen burst into the conversation and said that they don't like being bored. Then the Shittera looked at him and told him not to get involved in the conversation when he was talking to the gentleman. At this moment, the Gamogen got angry and told the boss that he needed to cut off his tongue, sew up his mouth, and hang the guest from a tree, leaving him to be eaten by insects. Shutrai said that he is not against such treatment of his body. This alarmed Kim very much, because it was not clear from the guy that he had any suicidal tendencies. The stranger said that anyway, if Kim refuses him, he will have no hope left, and he would rather just die. Gumi Guinness said that no one is stopping him, and Shutrai would be better off dead. Person he said that Game Jin is right, because this Shirtari is dangerous simply because he knows this place. Then he said that he would solve all this on the street and began to get up from the floor, so Kim stopped him. He said that the Shutrai could stay here for now, and also ordered the person that he should not be killed. The stranger immediately thanked his new master and said that he would be devoted to him for the rest of his life. Then he thought about it and said that since there are four of them, this is already not bad. After all, then it is necessary to distribute Mr. Sun's legion as follows. Gamogen told person that four people are not a legion, but rather a small detachment. Should try he said that the composition is as follows, Mr. Person will be a bodyguard. Gamogen will be the main fighter who will be responsible for all the important battles. And of course the Shutrai will be the commander-in-chief, and the one who will manage everything. Gamogen told him that it seems he underestimates them, because the commander-in-chief must be someone else. Then he replied that he graduated from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology at age 7 and had 58 doctorates. Gamogen immediately said that it looked like a real villain was in front of them, and Person said that it was the first time he had seen such pure evil. Then in Shutrai he said that all that was left was to come up with a name for this legion, and he already had several plans. He said that it would be best to call their new team Seprin. At first, everyone didn't really like it, because they didn't understand what it even meant. Then Shutrai said that it means people who will change the world, and he asked Sun if he liked it. Person and Gamogen did not understand why the name was needed, but for some reason Kim was delighted. After that, they set up a house in Vn and began to live together. Shutrai he said that he would live longer together where the heroes would not find him. He was very angry when the Gamogen was lying around and did nothing, such as washing. Also, the newcomer often asked if they wanted the gentleman to do everything himself. The guy said that he would still go, and then Shutrai notified him that she wanted to talk about something. They sat down on the floor and the newcomer said that many enemies were targeting the guy and wanted to kill him. She also said that if you look from the outside, it looks like San is a little ignorant, the guy, of course, agreed. After that, Shutrai put the book on the floor and said that first, he wants to talk about heroes who pose a danger. Firstly, the Grigori, this was the strongest team of heroes in the world, which was located in Korea. There is also the Guardians, the largest team of heroes in the world. What was in America, 60% of all heroes were from there. Knights of the Temple, this is the strongest team from Israel after the Grigori. But their leader will die of illness any day now. Ultra Nippon, this is a team from Japan that was not the strongest, but they are close to Grigori geographically. Also, this organization did not really like their team, because person killed their leader, named Nobunaga Hanzo. 
Also Shirtrai she said that the guy needs to know which of the Grigori he needs to be very wary of. Since Rezpol is dead, the Grigori is left with five main members and one secret one. Their entire team could be divided into magic specialists, combat specialists, and one weapon specialist. The leader of this whole gang was Hanel, who is quite popular and a hero of incredible strength in his own right. In second place was the Russian Blue Cat. No one in the world can compare with her in physical strength. The Red Lynx has problems controlling anger, and is generally a master of surveillance. Master Jean was a retired officer, and the strongest in the world before the Russian Blue Cat appeared. Darkness is weaker than everyone else, but he is incredibly smart and makes his own weapons. And also very militant. And the last of them is Esther. She was originally from the Knights of the Temple and owns twelve summoning techniques. They are all about the level of Rispel, and now it became clear to Kim what danger he was in. The guy said that now he understands everything, and realizes that he needs to be as careful as possible. Should try she said that now the Lynx is the most dangerous, because he was the best friend of the Republic, and most likely went crazy. The guy said that he would remember all this, and it was time for him to go, but Shirtrai stopped him. Kim Sam asked what else he wanted to tell him about the hero team. Someone notified him that, as he said, the first and second numbers in the Grigori are a Hanel and a Russian blue cat. Well, don't forget about one of the heroes who stands out from the rest. Shirtrai moved one of the photos and said that this is darkness. If the guy suddenly meets him one on one, then Kim should try to avoid such a battle. Kim asked why this was so, because he is the weakest and his fighting abilities are weak. Shirtrai he said that he is incredibly smart and you definitely need to stay away from him, because in all his battles victory was his. If he suddenly meets him one on one, then you need to run away as quickly as possible. The guy focused his gaze on the photo of darkness, and compared to everyone else, he looked really gloomy and scary. From the next day, Kim Sang already began training, and the newly arrived Shirtrai said that this would be the main one. He asked if the gentleman had really managed to jump to the stratosphere, but after that it was no longer possible. Shirtrai thought about it, because since he had already succeeded once and then didn't, then the essence is a psychological problem. Perhaps it was out of fear because Kim didn't know what to do if he got hurt after this. Shirtrai asked the gentleman if he had enough strength? Since it's obvious that the guy doesn't know the basics. Therefore, Shirtari prepared a small training session in order to diagnose and understand what the guy does not understand. In this training, you will need to avoid getting hit by the ball with your eyes closed, focusing on the sound. Person warned Kim in advance and said that he would now throw the sword. Kim San told him to throw faster because he was ready to turn out. At that same second, the person threw his ball, and it flew straight at his face at high speed. The guy took the sword to his head several times, and it seemed that he had already visited many different places on Kim's body. He very often flew into the back of the head, but also even more often flew into the cheeks. These blows were very unpleasant, but of course they did not cause any harm to the guy. Shirtrai he said that it looked like this was Kim's first training session, and that he didn't think that he wouldn't dodge a single sword. Then person he said that he needed to try again, but suddenly Gamogen joined the training. He said that the boss cannot be damaged even with a sword, let alone swords, person asked what he was offering. He said that if you make him nervous, he won't be able to concentrate. Therefore, you need to use knives, because this will greatly increase the level of concentration and then Kim will act with all her might. Person agreed with this idea, but Kim Sun himself did not agree with this. He said that the guy cannot be pierced with a knife, which means that it is absolutely safe for Kim. Well then Gamogen he said that they don't know 100% how bulletproof the boss's body is. After all, it's possible that if a knife gets into the eye or something like that, the knife will go right through. Kim again shouted to these two whether they were crazy if they were proposing such madness. But the mercenary told the boss to get ready, because you need to dodge properly and take care of your eyes. A second later the guy's eyes were already blindfolded, and at that moment Kim decided that the game Jin was joking and would not throw the knives. But the mercenary said that he was starting, the guy at that moment was only thinking that the knives, in theory, should not harm him. Shirtrai ordered the Gamogen to stop this, because it is actually very dangerous for everyone who is here. But it seems that the mercenary was not going to stop, and had already swung his hand to throw the knife. At the very last moment, the guy took off the bandage and, moving to the side, said that this was too much. At that very moment, 
the knife flew literally 15 centimeters from the guy's head, and many cracks appeared in the concrete wall. Person he said that after all, Kim managed to dodge, and Gamogen confirmed this. After this, the mercenary suggested throwing the knife again, the sure try, to put it mildly, was against this idea. Usually the house was quiet, but now there was noise every day. And despite all the disadvantages, Kim Sen felt like he finally had a family, and it was a pleasant feeling. Meanwhile, Hanel was in his office, just working. After all, being a hero also means that sometimes you need to work with documents in order to keep records. Someone came into the room, and this guest immediately asked the Hanel why he called him. He was interested in what happened, since Bloody Lynx wanted to leave quickly. He also said that if Hanel lectured again, he would leave, but he just laughed and asked to sit down. He also added that they had not seen each other for a long time, and offered the Lynx tea or coffee. In response, the Bloody Lynx remained silent, and very loudly let the air out of his lungs. After that, he turned around and asked the Hanel if he really had nothing to say, because if so, then he was leaving. Then Hanel told him to stop immediately and stayed here to talk. Six months since Respol died and they never found a single clue. Lynx asked what this affects, because if six months have passed, then he should give up. Then Hanel he said that they already have things to do, and we must not forget about the responsibility that is entrusted to him as a member of Grigori. Grigori several times under his breath, and this did not inspire him. Opening the door, he said that he was leaving the Grigori, and told Hanel that he should continue to help the world while he searches for the killer. He wished his comrade good luck, but suddenly the Hanel said something after him. The lynx felt that his comrade had also let the air out of his lungs, and it looked like he was getting ready to do something. Suddenly this man said the name of the bloody lynx, his name was Tesu. When bloody lynx turned around, he saw a Hanel approaching him to strike with his fist. And he did it quite successfully, and Tesu missed this blow. After this, Hanel delivered another kick with his foot directly to the opponent's body. But despite all this, Bloody Lynx was still able to stand on his feet and realized that he needed to counterattack. But Hanel was quite successful in blocking his left jab, and now he was immobilized. They stood in this position for several seconds, as the Lynx did not know how to move. Hanel again took the initiative and struck the inside of his opponent's elbow with his hand. After this, the body of the Tesu flew at a fairly impressive speed into a closet that stood nearby. Moving closer to fellow Hanel I asked how the famous Red Lynx could end up like this. After all, before, he would have easily dodged such an attack, and Hanel asked him when was the last time he ate from Apollo. He also reminded the Lynx that his rival is the murderer Rispel, and if he goes looking for him now it will look like suicide. Lynx said that he could handle it himself, and also advised Hanel not to get involved in these matters. Then he told him that Zhang Min Yi was a friend to him, it is obvious that Tesu could not help him himself. He asked him not as a colleague, but as a friend, to help him, after all, they are all heroes and want the same thing. Tesu fell silent for a while and began to rise from the floor. He stood up completely, and at that moment the Hanel was very happy. He said that he knew that the Lynx still decided on the right decision. But instead, Tesu suddenly struck with his fist directly at the Hanel's nose. Link said that he was surprised that Hanel couldn't even dodge this, and asked if he even existed. After that, Bloody Rice said that he was leaving, and now Hanel is definitely not his colleague. But suddenly stopping at the door, he said that his colleague was somehow not serious. He said he would think of it as a request from his friend. Hanel she said that he understood the Bloody Links well, and shook him good luck. Esther meanwhile said that she had urgent news because the big boss, the hero from Inchon, had been defeated. The suspect's name was Molek, who was a newcomer. And it seems now the Grigori must intervene. Meanwhile, Person and his boss were walking down the street and he told him that today he would need his signature dish. And today Kim will find out what real soybean paste soup with tofu tastes like. Then San said that Gamogen does not like soybean paste soup, and he will be very offended and will throw knives. Person replied that he doesn't care what he doesn't like there, because the most important thing is that the boss likes everything. But suddenly this guy felt someone's presence nearby, and this alerted him. Mossman appeared on the horizon, and he said that he had not seen Person for a long time. It was a rank A villain. Person replied that they really hadn't seen each other for a long time, and he was surprised that he was still alive. Mossman, in turn, said that he was surprised that Person began to serve someone after all. 
Then he asked, Is it really the same dear Hyungnam, this is the child who was walking next to him. He said that seeing this with his own eyes was clearly not a bad thing, and laughingly added that he couldn't believe it. Person he said that it looked like Mossman had gone deaf, as it was obvious that he had previously heard who was in front of him. He also added that if he said even one such word, he would tear out his throat and throw him to feed the dogs. But the Mossman asked his given friend not to worry, because he was simply so surprised that he could not resist making a joke. Then he bowed and asked Kim for forgiveness for his rudeness, and he replied that there was nothing wrong with it. He thought that such a deadly warrior was behaving quite strangely, and he was not like those who hang around in Vienne. But it was at this moment that person he said that it was time for him to leave, as they were going to prepare dinner. Mossman notified him that he was just going to the boss, and person told him that this was a pretty serious decision for someone like him. He was very surprised to hear this, because he thought that person was aware of the latest news. After all, person assumed that Mossman was going to Madman in order to serve him. But it turned out that Madman was dead. Person asked how this could even happen if Madman is one of the strongest villains. Then he said that he had projected Molek died by his hand, and after that Mossman became his subordinate. Then this villain said that Mr. Molek wants to unite all the villains and he will very soon contact Person. He also advised his longtime friend to take his proposal seriously. At that moment, Person said to tell his boss not to bother his Hyanima, and went around the tenth road. Unless, of course, he wants him to explain everything to him in a bad way. Mossman began to leave and said that this was quite in the spirit of person, and added that perhaps next time they would meet as enemies. Then he said goodbye to Kim and, pushing off from the ground, quickly disappeared beyond the horizon. As soon as he disappeared, the guy immediately asked his friend who this madman was. He answered him that he was a very strong villain, and now he is dead. And this stubborn Mossman became someone's servant. Person immediately suggested to his boss that he go back, since it was already quite late to prepare dinner. When they approached the house, they were already met by others who said that there was news. Gamogen said that the guy received a love letter, and added that it seems that Kim San is quite popular. He was interrupted by Shirtri who said that a letter had arrived from a certain Molek, but the contents were saturated with arrogance. Kim San said that it looks like this letter is from the one the Mossman they met on the road was talking about. Person took this letter and read it, this happened quite quickly since the letter was short. It was written there that Molek unites all the villains and will kill all those who do not bend the knee. Person squeezed the letter in his hand and asked who he was to tell Kim Sun. Well, then the guy said that it might be worth going, the shift which said that the Molek was scary. Then person he said that he would go and kill this Molek, but the Shirtri stopped him. And Gamogen, in turn, said that the guy needs to go kill everyone there. For Kim San, this was a very strange feeling, he had felt it quite rarely before. He received an invitation from a famous villain, and it was obvious that it was an open threat. He was also involved in the villain's casual conversation about whether he should live or die. This only happened to the guy when he read manga. A strange feeling of pride crept into him that he had become somehow important. Has Kim Sun really become one of them? Meanwhile, in the VN near the entrance to Fortress G, the following actions took place. Mossman brought one villain inside and told his boss that it was Shax and he was a rank A villain. He also explained that it was he who killed the hero Apollo, and he would obviously be useful to them on the team. This Shax looked like a pretty ordinary villain, but he had quite a few exploits under his belt. Molek was at the end of a dark cave, and was all wrapped in a dark cloak. No one knew what rank this villain was, but he looked as terrifying as possible. Molek did not react in any way to the words of his subordinate, much less to the words of Shax. Then Mossman said that Mr. Molek is usually taciturn, but he should not worry. Shax he said that he didn't care, because it was unlikely that they would ever see each other in the future. This greatly alarmed the Mossman subordinate, since he did not understand what he meant when he said this. At that same second, Shax pushed away from the place where he was standing and said that he would finish him off now. Mossman immediately began shouting in his back that this should not be done. But Shax only said that he was just a damn upstart who didn't dare consider himself superior to the rest. Instead of somehow dodging or developing an attack, the Molek only raised his hand. Some dark energy immediately began to appear around this hand, which quickly covered it completely. The attacker was seriously scared when he saw all this, but nevertheless decided to continue his attack. Suddenly, 
Huge snakes flew out from this hand, this was the underwater snake technique. The very last moment of his life, Shaq saw in front of him two snakes that were simply incredible in size. One of them almost completely swallowed the enemy, and it seemed that he didn't even notice. Mossman watched all this and could not believe his eyes that Molek killed the Shaqs in the blink of an eye. This was a completely different level, it seems Mr. Molek was on a completely different level, unlike other villains. Meanwhile, Hanel was walking down the corridor and talking on the phone, asking if everyone was gathered in the conference room. He said that he was already approaching and would enter the hall in a few minutes. But when he saw those who were in front of him, he immediately apologized to Esther and said that he would call back. Before him was a hero from the Guardian team named Catdog, heroes from the Guardian team named Wolfman and Lionheart. Wolfman immediately asked Hanel where he was in such a hurry, and why such a rush. But Thoth immediately asked him if they knew about the Molek, and notified that Dark had obtained some information about it. Cat Dog said that they had just gathered to catch him, and Hanel, in turn, was surprised by this information. Lionheart said that they do not know where he is, and notified the hero that Big Boss died yesterday in the hospital. And because of this, the observer made a fuss and said that it was urgent to catch him since K2 died. Hanel said that reconnaissance in VN is very dangerous. Therefore, it would be better to wait and get information from Grigori. But all these heroes were confident, and some of them even said that his bride was waiting for him, and his wedding was next month. Haino laughed and said that it would be better if they contact Gregory if they discover anything. Meanwhile, Darkness was already telling the entire Grigori team that the real name of the Molek is Bull Myung. He was last seen in Inchon, and now he is in Vien, and it is noteworthy that he quickly unites the villains around him. Jean asked why other villains just come to him at the first call. Well, Darken he said that it seems that enough of them have already gathered, and apparently he is intimidating them with his power. Then Esther also added that several quite strong villains had already joined him, and it was interesting how strong he himself was. Dark he said that this was the strangest thing, because before that he had not shown himself in any way. But such a strong villain leaves little trace. Bloody Link said that there was no point in chatting in vain now, and asked Dark where this bastard was now. He answered him that it had been established that he was now in Vienne, and specifically in Fortress G. The blue cat asked the Hanel what they would do, and if he had any plan. This hero was silent for some time, and the Bloody Lynx decided to speak instead. He said that he would go there himself and tear his head off, but Darkness told him that it was impossible to understand what danger awaited him there. Hanel interrupted the Bloody Lynx and said that he, too, thinks that we need to go and tear off his head. Jean asked who should go then, because they haven't decided yet. Hanel he said that everyone would go, because this building requires the skills of absolutely all the heroes. Moreover, he added that this must be done right now in order to take the enemy by surprise. Meanwhile, a guy named Kim San sat and watched the moon. At that moment he was thinking about everything, and suddenly he heard someone approaching him. It was Persong who asked his Hyungnim if he was sleeping, who told him that he couldn't sleep a little, and that's why he usually looks at the moon at such moments. Now they sat here together, and Person I realized that I need to tell Hyungnim all the plans. He asked Kim if he wanted to go to Fortress G. He said that in fact he wants a little, apparently he is curious and this is the first time this has happened to him. Person said that then maybe they should go there together, telling me to no one. Kim asked if he was serious and began bombarding his friend with questions about how safe it was. But he told him not to worry, because he had never seen anyone stronger than Kim himself. And Person himself is not weak. The guy said that then you definitely need to look there, after all, they won't join, but will only look. Person I asked when it was best to go, he said that it was best now so that the sure try would not find out anything about it. Meanwhile, Hanel asked his entire team if they were ready to take on a rather difficult battle. They all gathered and got ready. The whole team was ready for what would now be one of the most difficult battles of their lives. It seems that the Grigori are not the only ones who are going to visit Molek at this time. After a fairly short time, the entire Gregory group was involved in the operation, but not everyone was physically here. Hanel she said that Esther and Dark were weak in battle, so they remained at headquarters. At this moment, the Bloody Lynx quietly said that weaklings should always stay at home, but then he remembered that Esther is not weak. He turned to the Hanel to ask if they could kill the villains this time. He answered that this was unacceptable, as their main goal was the arrest of the Molek. 
They split up, and Hainel gave the command for everyone to enter the territory to carry out the operation. The blue cat spoke into her microphone and asked everyone else if they saw someone here. Said through his microphone that this rally point looked more like some kind of ghost castle. Hanel he said that there are a lot of jammers in VN, so the connection is bad and you need to be very alert. Meanwhile, Master Jean approached one of the walls and concluded that the fortress was simply falling apart, but it had been patched up quite well. While near this wall, he suddenly felt someone's presence, and realized that this enemy was quite strong. In front of him stood a bald man in a red shirt, who was greeted by Master Jean of the Grigori. He told him that he did not expect to see the mad scientist Dr. Barry here. The genie said that he was a fool for also deciding to join the Molech, and he replied that there were only a couple of Moleks like him on the whole planet. Therefore, he will be able to get even more experimental subjects for his purposes if an alliance joins him. Meanwhile, Master Jean prepared for battle and said that today his experiment would come to an end. Suddenly the thug noticed that his enemies had some kind of weapon in their hands, which looked quite impressive. Dr. Barry said that the Man of Steel was unlikely to be able to withstand his anti-superhuman weapons. Master Jean couldn't figure out whether it was a machine gun or some kind of machine gun. But after a few seconds I realized that it was a minigun. The doctor said that they would check this now, because he had finally completed his main development. It was a two-handed minigun rifle of his own making, each of which fired 60 bullets per second. Master Jean was impressed by these characteristics, but also realized that his strength was great. Dr. Barry looked straight into the eyes of his opponent and already seemed to know the outcome of the battle. He shouted that now they would see how die-hard Master Jean is. After that, he began to shoot from these two miniguns at his enemy, but most of the bullets did not hit the target. At this time, the bloody fox walked deeper and deeper into the cave, and realized that the building was large. If he had come alone, he would have had to wander around here all day and look for where the main entrance was. After walking a few more tens of meters, he discovered a door near the wall of the cave. Coming closer to it, he opened it, but still remained careful when opening these doors. Behind that door there were several villains at once, and the crowd was quite large. Lynx did not see them as individuals, but only realized that there were dozens of strong villains in front of him. One of them said that they did not even expect that a bloody Lynx would come to them. The bloody Lynx asked who Molek was and if he was here now. The villains replied that the Grigori now did not even consider them to be villains, and added that the Molek was not here. Lynx realized that there are too many enemies here and they are all strong, it will not be easy to fight them at the same time. Therefore, our best solution would be to avoid a collision and come up with an escape route. Then one of the villains suddenly struck the Lynx on the body, but he managed to block it. It was the same villain who asked the bloody Lynx where he was retreating, because the entrance here was free and the exit was only for the dead. The bloody lynx didn't like how things were built in this cave, and the villain also said that the lynx had probably already looked at a coffin for himself. After all, he will die here like a dog, like Rispel. After the villain said this, bloody lynx became very tense, he tried to suppress the anger that enveloped him. The villains asked the lynx if they were friends with Respol, and said that when he died they could say hello to him. At that moment, the bloody lynx began to walk much faster towards the exit, and the villains asked where he was going. They also added that the further he runs, the longer they will torture him before dying. But when the bloody lynx came close to these doors, he hit the rock with his fist with all his might. The villains initially could not understand why he did this at all, because this was his only salvation. Pieces of the rocks blocked this door, and now there was no escape from here. At that moment, bloody lynx turned to Hanel, who told him that fighting was already going on somewhere. Link said that everything is clean here, and he still hasn't met anyone. Hanel told him to do something important just in case, but the Lynx immediately said that the connection was very bad. The villain started laughing and asking why this bastard said that he didn't find anyone here. Bloody Link said that he didn't see anyone here, and that's the real truth. After all, now these villains will never get dressed from here, and this dark and damp cave will become their grave for centuries. Meanwhile, the blue cat was running through the cave, as she understood that she needed to move mobile. Suddenly she heard something in her earpiece, and at the same time she saw someone ahead. She immediately stopped and realized that she needed to contact the rest of the team. The girl told Hanel that she seemed to have found a very important villain, but there was no answer. She said that she did not expect that the Hanel and the bloody Lynx had already found opponents. After that, 
she turned to a man who was sitting on a rock a short distance from her. It was a mentis, and it seemed that the blue cat recognized him personally. She asked if he instigated that mess in Texas, and she also wondered what he had forgotten here. After all, she was still interested in how a villain of rank was able to kill K2's grandfather. Even though he was already a flabby old man, and even though the newcomer interfered with him, he still died at his hands. Looking into the eyes of the mentis blue cat, it is an assumption that the villain has already left rank A. For a while he was silent and simply absorbed the information, looking into the girl's eyes. Then he spoke, saying that the girl had just arrived, and was already chatting and showing off in vain. After that, he got up from the cliff and asked who she was, and the girl naturally became offended. Stretching her fists, she said that it was very rude, and it's strange that Mentis doesn't know the Russian blue from Grigori. Out of all this set of words, the mestizo knew only the word Grigori, and he realized that the goal had finally come to him. He shouted ordering the girl to bring Respol here without delay. Mentis he said that such a hero could not die, and he believes that the Grigori hit him. The girl said that Mentis is a real idiot, because even Respol was able to catch him, and now he wants to fight with the blue cat. Then Mentis replied that when he fought with Respol he was rank A, but that was a very long time ago. Taking out several sharp tentacles from his back, he asked the Russian blue cat what rank he was now. The girl threw off her cloak and said that they should fight, because she still wanted to find him. Mentis looked at her silently for a while, and then asked why the girl was trying to seduce him. Didn't like this very much and she asked the enemy if he had gone crazy for an hour. But then a gambling smile appeared on her face and she said that everything was fine with her body, and she was actually quite popular. With the theme, her thin feminine arms turned into a more inflated version, and she said that now she would show him real seduction. Then her back expanded, and her entire body was covered with incredible strength muscles. After she stopped transforming, she asked the mentis if she looked sexy now. He replied that it was really better than it was, and prepared for the fact that now the blue cat would attack. The girl began to run towards him while simultaneously shouting about whether the mentis would accept an invitation to a date from such a beauty. Métis also began his movement and said that he did not dare refuse. Meanwhile, the doctor had already opened fire with his miniguns, and for several minutes covered his opponent with a rain of bullets. But very soon and quite suddenly the cartridges ran out, and the minigun stopped spinning up. Dr. Barry was very scared when this happened, because what he saw in front of him did not calm him down. His opponent stood in front of him, and it looked like there was not a scratch on his body. Master Gina asked the doctor if he was finished with his tricks, because he was already tired. He asked how this was even possible, since several thousand bullets had just had to make a sieve out of it. He asked if he was a fool, it was obvious that a superhero of such strength could not be penetrated by ordinary cartridges. The doctor realized that there was a damn monster in front of him, and began to think about ways of retreat. Jean began to approach him and said that the games were over, and ordered him to run out of the way. But suddenly another character appeared in this part of the cave, who was dressed in a yellow robe. He said that he expected this from Dr. Barry, because such a technique would only work on people. It was a villain who was a former hero and member of the Sensrim named Chen Hong. He told Master Jean that they had not seen each other for a very long time, and also asked how he was doing. Jean said that Chen disappeared after leaving Sensrim, and it seems that he has now decided to become a vile villain. He replied that he did not expect it to turn out this way, but now he earns much more and he is much more relaxed here. Master Jean asked how someone who was once a hero could talk like that. And then, in turn, said that when he was a hero, he was not allowed to harm or kill civilians, and because of the prohibitions, he left. And this was precisely the reason, because he devoted his whole life to studying the art of death. After all, there are a lot of heroes like Master Jean who have a lot of muscles. But they have no brains, and people like him cannot even dream of the art of death, according to Chen. Master Jean said that it looked like Chen had really gone crazy, and at the same time his muscles became even bigger. He added that Chen was never a real hero if he created art to kill people. As Chen launched his attack, he said that the purpose of martial arts is to kill, and that is his only goal. Jean added to his remark that heroes do not kill their enemies, they do other things. Heroes must protect people, and this is their only and greatest goal. He tried to deliver a strong blow directly to Chen's body, but he was able to dodge and duck. Chen began to deliver several weak blows at once to the enemy's pressure points. When Master Jean tried to counterattack, 
his opponent would be able to dodge it too. After that, he jumped up and kicked Master Jean right on the chin. He then struck several more times with his knee, but still no blood came from the opponent's body. It seems that Jean was angry with how this fight was going on, but Chen, on the contrary, liked everything. The villain said that, as one should have guessed, brute strength without brains gives nothing in battle. After all, real and true art depends on technique, at the same time Chen used the bloody death technique. He began to observe how his opponent would now behave, and to put it mildly, he was shocked. After he carried out this deadly technique after which Jean should have died, he stood indestructible. Moreover, he began his movement towards Chen, who at that second was confused due to fear. Master Jean began to deliver his blows to the body of his opponent, and he tried to escape. And he did it quite well until Master Jean decided to take it with his own hand. She was so big that she easily grabbed her opponent's head and held it tightly. Then I realized that such a force would simply break him, and he needed to somehow get out of the grip. But he felt that his head could not even move, and he gradually began to lose consciousness. The villain also looked at his opponent's hand and realized that it had become even wider. Within a second, the master of jeans hit the villain's head with all his might on the stone floor. He wanted to say something about art, and at the same time he raised his hand up. Master Jean at first he didn't understand why he was doing this, so he simply swung his fist to finish him off. After that, he hit the villain straight in the face with all his might. Splashes of blood scattered in all directions, and Jean realized that it was pointless to hit him a second time. Look at the lifeless body of her former comrade. He said that now he looks like a pathetic bastard. After all, in combat you also need a basis, such as pure strength, in order for the technique to work. You can't rely on technique while training physical strength, so his art was more like role-playing. Chen's body no longer moved, and he began to move a few meters away from him. And while he was leaving, he said that he wanted to say something quite frankly. In fact, Chen did not leave the sensor him, he was fired due to the fact that he did not match them in strength. He was about to leave, but suddenly remembered that he had forgotten something. Dr. Barry was still standing in that cave, and the thug said that he did not expect that he would not think of running away. Master Gina told him not to worry, because he would get it in the face once and could be free. Then the doctor said that if he quietly and peacefully followed him, then perhaps we could do without it. Master Jin's face was mad, and he said that this would not work. Meanwhile, near another of the entrances to Fortress G, some action was taking place. A couple of two people approached this entrance, and a male voice said that it looks like this is the entrance to the fortress. Kim San asked if anyone lived here, and person replied that he only knew that it was possible to hide here during hostilities. The entrance to the cave was very close, and Kim San seemed very impressed with how everything looked here. When he walked inside, he immediately began to look around and try to understand what kind of place this was. He told person that it was the first time he had seen such a huge fortress. But despite this, it did not look very impressive. Person he said that it was just a junkyard, but it looks like the other villains repaired it well. Kim San asked why he was called, but all the other villains were not. Suddenly person tensed. There were signs of battle everywhere on the walls, which meant that someone had recently fought here. But he thought that this was in the order of things, since most likely a lot of villains had gathered here. But suddenly, he just heard the smell of blood, and then this theory immediately evaporated. The smell of blood was strong, so clearly this was not just a skirmish. It feels like this happened just recently. He just told his Hyungnam that there are signs of battle here and the smell of blood, so he needs to retreat a little. Then Kim said that perhaps he should return, and person asked why he wanted to see the fortress. Then the guy said that it was dangerous here, and he didn't want person to get hurt because of him. Quietly thought that Hyungnam was very kind. The guy asked his friend if he thought that Shirtry and Gamogen had already woken up, because if they found out, they would be angry. At that time, a group of several individuals who were in the VN said that this house looked quite suspicious. These were the same heroes whom Henel had met in the corridor not so long ago. In front of them they saw an abandoned house, which, among other things, was located in such a wilderness. Lionheart said that such houses are commonplace, and it doesn't look like something suspicious. But Catdog he said that this is a lair of villains, and maybe someone is hiding here from them. Wolfman said that he hopes that this is so, but so far he does not believe it. This house smelled just like dark, which means that there was clearly something interesting inside. Is this really a dark laboratory? 
But when Lionheart said this, everyone else didn't believe him. Then Nagamajin approached them from behind and asked if Molek was in Fortress G. And the cat dog answered him that he needed to call a reconnaissance group. But suddenly they all simultaneously realized that this question had been asked by some incomprehensible voice. Dame Jin behind them, but they still didn't understand who he was. They immediately became more wary and asked who he was. Very soon they realized that it was Gamajin, who is also known by the nickname Mad Dog. All the heroes asked him what he forgot here, and he replied that the heroes themselves came to someone else's house. Wolfman I realized that this was his house, but for some reason this smell pointed to something else. Gamajin he said that if they don't need anything, then let them leave, because he still needs to find a person. Ket Dog said that if they find the person, they can easily find the one who killed the Respole. Then Gamajin said that he didn't even want to hear what the hero just said with his filthy mouth. Did they really come here for the boss? When the mercenary realized this, a smile appeared on his face. He looked at all the uninvited guests and said that now he realized that they were all heroes. Then Game Jin added that they are very similar to the hero because they do not leave when asked. After that, he suggested that they attack the boss when his contract ends. But the heroes said that they still need to arrest him, and added that turning over your boss is very low. Cat Dog he said that everything worked out very well, and they would catch Gamogen as bait and lure out person. The mercenary began to laugh and say that they wouldn't succeed. After that, he turned around and began to walk away in the opposite direction, further and further. He also said that he could kill them all without even using his hands, so they shouldn't even mention that he would be caught. Wolfman I really liked this character because he looked down on all of them. The mercenary said that he would kill all three heroes without even using his own hands. Then the cat dog prepared himself, and sharp claws came from the tips of his fingers. He focused his vision on the enemy and decided to analyze what the mercenary was thinking about now. Gamogen will not use his hands. Which means you can attack a defenseless head. But most likely this mercenary thought so, and therefore it is necessary to do exactly the opposite. Cat dog I decided that I needed to attack the bottom, and pushed off from the place where I was standing in order to carry out the attack. His speed was quite high, and his sharp claws usually struck fear into all enemies. But suddenly Gamogen hit this opponent with his hand, and hit him quite hard. Wolfman and Lionheart watched their comrade get punched in the face, and they didn't like it. It looked like the cat dog had completely lost his balance and couldn't even stand. Taking advantage of this, the mercenary hit him in the back of the head with his elbow, and he was unable to dodge. Now the mercenary's opponent was on his knees, and could barely keep his balance so as not to fall. But just like that, for a few seconds he fell dead on the floor, and Gummy Jin said that he had already killed one of their friends. The hero immediately called him a coward, but he objected and asked why they thought so. Lionheart said that the villain promised that he would not use his hands, and this is very mean. He replied that he did so, because all his blows were elbows. He then said that if the heroes wanted him to not use his hands at all, then he would do so. Lionheart said that Cat Dog fell with one blow, it's not for nothing that this is a C-rank villain. Then he said that he would go first, because without hands he would lose the ability to defend himself from above. Gamogen, meanwhile, told them to stop stalling for time and start attacking him. Lionheart went deeper into the analysis because he realized that the upper part of the body must be attacked. Pushing off from the place where he stood, he prepared to attack and constantly repeated in his head that he needed to attack from above. At this moment, the wolfman was also waiting for the moment to launch an attack, so that the mercenary would not have time to repel the two of them. But suddenly the Gamogen struck his hand directly in the face of the first enemy, and he became disoriented. Wolfen also lost his mind, as he did not expect that this attack would not be successful. Suddenly, the mercenary took out his sharp knife and swung it right over the body of the lion's heart. He plunged his blade straight into his body, and he instantly died right there. Gamogen said that now two heroes are already dead, and the wolfman asked what he was actually doing. The mercenary asked what he meant, after all, they were just fighting. Then the hero said that he was a sick bastard, because he said that he would not use his hands. He released all the air that was in his lungs and said the following in a quiet voice. He reproached the hero for being a fool and seriously believed in his words, forgetting that he was a villain. Wolfman was simply furious, he asked what the mercenary meant. He answered him that he should not have such an expression on his face, because it is obvious that the mercenary is not joking. 
Then he added that the hero had just seen two others die, and now it became clear what the difference was between them. But the wolfman was too angry and ordered the mercenary to shut up and prepare to die. He began to use one of the most powerful techniques he had ever seen in his life. Wolfman turned into a real huge wolf, and it was a transformation into hunger mode. He immediately savagely attacked the mercenary, who had stood and watched all this time. The hero struck with both of his paws at once in the hope that in this way he would tear apart the body of the Gamogen. A smile appeared on his face, but very quickly he realized that this attack would most likely be his last. Lowering his head a little down, he saw that there was a very sharp knife there. The mercenary said that he did not expect the wolves to be so slow, and asked if the hero had really reincarnated. The wolf did not understand when it all happened, because for him this attack lasted less than one second. But the mercenary said that this work is not suitable for the hero, since he does not notice too much, and deserves death. He ran his knife straight across his opponent's throat, and he died instantly. Gamogen immediately began to look for Shirtri, since she did not understand how and where to look for person. Meanwhile, the real massacre took place in the cave, and specifically in that part of it where the bloody lynx was located. He stood opposite one of the villains who was already exhausted and had no strength. S told the hero that they both needed to calm down and talk everything over, and copious splashes of blood scattered along the walls of the dark cave. One of the villains was very badly beaten and leaned against the wall, calling the bloody lynx a bastard. He asked him how he could do such a thing, and how he even knew how to call himself a hero. After all, the bloody lynx killed all the villains who were in this cave. This villain said that this is not just madness, this is mass murder and this should not be allowed. He asked if the lynx thought that he would just leave it like that, as soon as he went to prison, all the journalists would know everything. But when the bloody lynx approached him, he immediately grabbed him by the neck with his bare hands. The villain asked what he was doing and asked him to think for at least a second. The lynx squeezed his hand even harder, and with the last of his strength the villain asked if the lynx thought that he could get away with everything. He wanted to say something else, but he saw that the bloody lynx seemed to be going to do what he planned. A moment later, this villain's neck was twisted due to the fact that the lynx squeezed it with all his strength. Then the bloody lynx asked the already dead villain what kind of nonsense he was talking about now. Then he told the corpse that for someone who had not seen anyone, he lied too much. Lynx left his body near a pile of other dead villains, and began to approach the exit of the cave. With one blow of his fist, he was able to unlock the entrance, which was blocked by a huge pile of stones. After that, he calmly walked out, and suddenly saw someone in front of him. It was Master Jean, and he said that this fortress is simply huge. He was thinking about what he needed to understand where he was, when he suddenly noticed a bloody lynx. That hero immediately didn't know what to say, and his voice trembled, and asked what Master Jean was even doing here. He replied that this question should rather be asked to the lynx, because it was unclear why he could not be reached by phone. After all this, Jean also noticed that there was blood on the lynx's face, and he answered him that he was scratched while running. Didn't like this at all and he asked why he was so nervous and what happened. The lynx could not answer anything intelligible, so Master Jean decided to go into the cave where the lynx had just been. But suddenly his friend took his hand, and thus did not allow him to go inside. He also said that there was no one there and they should just leave here now. Jean began to suspect something, but then realized that most likely he was just imagining things as always. He began to leave, and the two of them walked along the length of the cave in order to find a way out. Suddenly they heard a cry for help, and quickly realized that it was coming from the wall that was on the right. Approaching this wall closely, they listened to see if someone was there. And when they listened, literally five seconds later they heard someone start asking for help again. Master Jean couldn't believe it and said that it seemed like that was what he was thinking about. The hero immediately hit this wall with his hand, and it immediately broke. Small pieces scattered towards me in all directions, and the heroes who saw who was inside were very surprised. Master Jean said that it looks like they need to reconsider their goal this time. In front of them was a whole room that could accommodate dozens of hostages. Meanwhile, the blue cat fought with the mentis, and she did it quite successfully. The villain didn't understand how she could deliver such strong blows so easily. But the girl was not going to stop, and constantly continued her attack. Sometimes the mestizo managed to retreat, and this time he also increased the distance by 5m. He then decided to use his razor-sharp tentacles and they immediately headed towards the girl. But she was able to grab them, 
despite the fact that they were already a few centimeters away from her eyes. Due to the fact that she managed to grab onto them quite firmly, she immediately threw the enemy away, into a nearby rock at great speed. At that second, the villain already realized that he was losing this battle, and lost all his strength to counterattack. Now the girl also approached him and again took hold of these sharp tentacles. With a slight effort, she tore off one of them, and a river of blood immediately began to flow from the mentis wound. The girl asked her fallen opponent how he found such an interesting date. She asked what was wrong with his face and said that they were disappointed that there wouldn't be a similar marriage proposal. The half-breed gathered his strength and said that he would kill and gut the blue cat. Standing up to his full height, he struck with his fist, but the girl was able to dodge him without any problems. Thus, she moved behind her opponent and delivered an elbow strike directly to the back of his head. Despite the fact that he was rather weak, the mestizo was still disoriented. And when he turned around, the girl was again at his back and grabbed him. At the same time, Blue Cat told the villain that she also loved him very much. She strangled her opponent for quite a long time, and still could not understand when he would turn off. The girl constantly repeated that it was better for him to give up, because his hands would not reach the blade. Then the mestizo thought and looked at his hand, on which there was just such a blade. He broke the blade off his hand and didn't even feel any pain. In order to break it, you didn't have to make any extra efforts. The girl immediately noticed how the mentis broke off a piece of the blade from his hand, and tensed. The enemy immediately launched a horizontal strike, but the blue cat was able to dodge it. The girl could not understand how he did this, because this knife is not just a weapon, but a part of his body. However, she managed to grab her opponent's hand and throw him to the ground. By making such a grab, she caused incredible pain to her enemy, and still continued to force him to surrender. She said that now the mestizo may not even try to hold out for at least 10 seconds. Mentis began to feel incredible pain, and screamed very loudly from this. After some time, the blue cat felt that the opponent's strength was becoming less and less. When she noticed that he was not moving, she let him go and said that she had never seen a nastier opponent. Then the enemy became even nastier, and suddenly jumped up trying to strike with his fist. Despite the fact that he missed the first blow, with the second he managed to hit the girl's face. The blue cat could not have expected that he would hit with a weak hand. He still looked quite confident and prepared to make the final attack. When he jumped to catch the blue cat, she, on the contrary, jumped up to the ceiling. Thus, she found herself above the head of her enemy, and landing on the bottom, she grabbed him by the back of the head. Taking it in this way, she immobilized the enemy, and began to hold his left hand in hers. The half-breed constantly swore and said that the blue cat was a real scum. The heroine said that for the villain, now is the best time to give up. But suddenly, with the last of his strength, the mentis took out something that had been in his pocket all this time. The girl very quickly realized that this was Dark's hydrogen mini-bomb, which she had often seen before. Métis said that at this moment the path of the blue cat came to an end. The bomb fell to the floor and immediately began to glow bright red, preparing to explode. The blue cat very quickly realized that if this bomb exploded, the fortress would immediately collapse. So she grabbed this bomb in her hands and prepared to explode. She tried to keep her palms closed as much as physically possible. Also seemed to her that this object was getting very hot, and it looked like it would explode very soon. Literally two seconds later there was an explosion of incredible proportions, it is difficult to understand what would have happened if she had not blocked it. The half-breed was alive, and stood at a short distance from his opponent. Meanwhile, the girl was trying to gather her strength, and did not understand what the enemy was thinking when he threw it. She asked the mentis why he did this, doesn't he have friends or bosses to work for? But the villain did not answer anything intelligibly, he only said that the blue cat must die right now. She answered him that this already looks like a stalkerster, and she will definitely write a statement to the police. And at the same time I was thinking, where did this bomb come from? Obviously Dark wouldn't give it to the enemy. But Dark doesn't make mistakes, does he? But now it was necessary to deal with another problem, and it looks like the girl decided to end this mentis. Blue energy began to appear around her fist and became brighter. A smile also appeared on the heroine's face, and she said that since the battle dragged on, she was using a powerful fist. She also told her opponent that there would definitely not be a second date, because that was enough for her. Meanwhile, the mestizo pushed off and ran at full speed towards his opponent.
The girl also moved very quickly and was preparing to eliminate the enemy with one blow. At the very last moment, the mestizo used his ability, and several blades immediately appeared from his back. The blue cat was confused when she saw this in front of her, but she understood that she needed to continue to fight. Meanwhile, the girl was finally able to contact the rest of the team via radio. She was glad to hear Master Jin's voice, and said that she was glad that the connection had been established. Jean asked her how things were going there and if she was injured after the battle. She answered him that she was almost done with the enemy, and that she didn't like that they weren't allowed to kill villains. Meanwhile, the half-breed was still trying with all his might to cause some harm to the girl, but he was unable to do so. He repeated the word I will kill dozens of times, but each time they became quieter and quieter. The girl said that everything was definitely over now, and also asked Jean what the situation was like there. The goon told her that they had found 50 prisoners, and now their goal had changed. Link started organizing the evacuation, and Master Jeans told his friend that Hanel might need help now. The bloody Links heard the conversation and told the hero that Hanel never needed anyone's help. Mossman meanwhile it was very difficult to stand on his feet, and his eyes were truly frightened. Once again in his life he could not believe what he was seeing with his own eyes. In front of him was Hanel, who had just eliminated a lot of opponents, and Mossman I realized that this was a real monster. Hanel ignored all his words up to this point, and asked the Mossman whether he was working for the Molech. This was a surprise to him, since this villain did not really like to grovel before someone. At the same time Mossman he realized that Hanel had interrupted so many people without even choking, which means he is very strong. He jumped up and tried to throw a rather obvious punch, but it cost him all his strength. When he had not even reached the Hanel's body, he lunged and struck him with his fist. Mossman fell to the floor and Hanel she said that there was no need to waste his time, and again asked where his boss was. He told him that Hanel should go to hell, since he would never tell him where the boss is. The hero told him that if he didn't tell him, he would still search the entire fortress to find him later. Suddenly, a voice sounded in the cave and asked the Mosman in front of him if the Hanel was from the Grigori. A second later, this voice ordered the Mosman to lead him to the Molech. The voice said that he already wanted to see Hanel, and now is the best moment for this. Mosman wanted to somehow object, but Molech he said that everything is in order, and Hanel can be taken to him. Then the boss's subordinate said that he agreed, and now he would take the Hanel to the Molech. The hero said that this was the right decision, and ordered him to show the way right now. He also told him not to be rude, as this would only complicate everything. Mossman he said that this hero needs to think about whether he is ready for the meeting, because the disgusting expression on Hanel's face will disappear quite quickly. The hero listened to all these words and thought about who this Molech really is. They, together with the villain, began to walk along different corridors, and after five minutes it seemed they arrived. Meanwhile, the Molech was spinning a glass of wine in his hand. The guests came closer and closer to him, who did not even speak to each other. He drank some more wine and really enjoyed it. When the heroes and the villain approached the end of the corridor, the Mossman said that they had arrived. The doors opened and Hanel saw in front of him a small throne on which someone was sitting. Molech she said that this is his first meeting with Hanel, and he is happy about it. Hanel he said that Molech just needs to follow the hero, and then he will save his life. Molech replied that Hanel was a rather interesting guy, and invited him to drink some wine. Hanel did not react to this in any way, but only continued to look the enemy straight in the eyes. Then the villain replied that Roman Ticanti is a pretty good wine, which has a pleasant aroma and deep taste. And what's more, it gets better with every sip, and it's very difficult to refuse the next sip. Then Molech he said that he was even surprised that people could come up with such a thing. Mossman and the hero were very surprised when they heard this, the subordinate was especially surprised. Mossman told his master that Molech was making very funny jokes today. Then the villain said that he was sorry that he had not introduced himself yet, and now he needed to fix it. When his subordinates saw whom he had been serving all this time, he experienced the most incredible shock of his life. Molek said that he came here to fix all the villains and heroes for himself. The subordinate saw the boss's pointed ears, his smooth skin and eyes in front of him, but he did not want to believe in his theory. Hanel said, he said that in front of him was a high-level humanoid monster. Molek he said that Mossman will still be useful, and in the future it will definitely come in handy. Rising from the throne, he said that he would leave his subordinate alive and he would be next to him as long as he was useful. Hanel said that it seemed that Mossman did not know this, 
and he replied that he would not have obeyed orders if he had known about it earlier. Molech he said that you shouldn't be surprised, because he is a superior race that is superior to people. He also said that the world is built in such a way that the weak must obey the strong. And people explain this in their religions. Hanel wanted to answer him something, but suddenly he heard someone talking to him through the earpiece. Hanel immediately realized that this was Jean, and said that he had found the Molech, and was now standing right in front of him. At that moment Jean said that there were hostages in the cave, about fifty of them. The hero did not like this situation at all, and already at that second he began to think through a plan ahead. The monster said that he was glad that his collection was found, and asked not to judge him for his hobby. Hanel she said that the plan was changing, and notified everyone that Molech was a real monster. He also notified that he would not try to take him alive, but would deal with him right here and now. When Molech heard this, he was very happy, and a smile appeared on his face. Jean said that he would come to the rescue as it would be a tough fight. But instead of accepting this help, Hanel said that the prisoners must first be taken out, and he can handle it himself. Molech prepared to attack and said that Hanel had taken good measures, and it became clear why he was praised. Moreover, the monster said that he was intrigued, and right now he wanted to test the hero's skills. He used the snake technique, and said that he didn't want the hero to die too quickly. When the snake reached its target, an incredible explosion occurred at that place. And Molech said that it seemed that this attack was too strong for weak people. But suddenly, through the smoke from the explosion, he saw a Hanel, and he was still confidently standing on his feet. The hero grabbed the mouth of this snake with his strong hands and did not allow it to bite him. After this, Hanel, with a slight movement of his hands, was able to tear apart this huge snake, turning it into a pool of blood. After that, he simply stood up straight and looked at Molech, as if demonstrating his strength. The villain said that this was quite commendable, and said that the hero seemed to have passed the test. But then energy began to appear around his hand again, and he asked the hero if he was ready for the next attack. At that same second, a death ray began to be emitted from his hands, which reached the target at great speed. After the rays reached the hero, a very powerful and strong explosion occurred. Molek thought that it seemed that now he had overdone it, but still the main thing is that the hero's body remains intact. When the fog from the explosion cleared, Molek saw that there was a wooden monster in it, into which that beam flew. Because of him, the hero suddenly flew up, and Molek I realized that this guy is not so simple. While in the air, Hanel used blue blood and sent several streams of blue hostile energy towards the target. After this, a rather powerful explosion occurred around the body of the Molek, and he tried to move away. He received little damage, despite the fact that the attack was not very strong and he was able to escape from the main fire. The directed blue blood was still flying towards him as not all of the attack had been carried out. He managed to dodge almost all the projectiles, but he never managed to return from the last one. It hit the moth directly, and it immediately began to feel incredible pain. Even though he felt pain, his body could easily survive such an attack. Molek began to cough, and suddenly Hanel said that it seemed that the Molek had not passed. Then the villain turned his head to look into the eyes of the hero after all this. Hanel said that the villain failed the test, and said that perhaps he should have tried harder. Molek said that he thought that the hero would be much weaker, but this still does not affect anything. After that, with one movement of his hand, he tore the cloak that was on his shoulders. Molek showed his true nature and said that now he will not consider the Hanel a person. From now on, he will fight him on the same level, and will fight with all his might. He looked straight into Hanel's eyes and said that now everything will be much more interesting. The hero looked into his eyes, and it was clear that he was not thinking about anything except how to end this battle in his favor. Molek prepared to attack the Hanel, and had already begun to move towards him. They grappled in close combat, and because of this, a rather powerful explosion occurred and some of the stones on the ceiling fell down. Person, who was standing with Kim in the cave at that time, felt some kind of shock. He told Hyungnam to stay behind him, as it looked like a powerful battle had started somewhere. Suddenly, some kind of grenade flew towards Kim, and while in flight it made a terrible sound. He just noticed this grenade, and in a second he realized that it was a bomb against superhuman people. Don't think for a second. He covered Kim's son's body with his body, and then an explosion occurred. The guy was very scared and worried about the condition of the person after this explosion. It looked like the villain was in a lot of pain and couldn't move, so he told them to hide. 
Kim was very unpleasant to realize that this happened again because of him, and he began to think that they had come here in vain. At this moment, San considered himself worthless, because Person was his new family, and now he suffered greatly because of him. When the guy raised his head, he saw a crowd of people in front of him who were saying that after such a hit they had a chance to move forward. Kim very quickly realized that he had to save his friend's life and protect his family. After all, this was the first family Kim had, and which he valued very much. Therefore, something needs to be done to protect all members of this family. He constantly turned over in his head the idea that he finally had a family and he was letting her down like that. Kim vowed that he would do whatever it took to protect everyone. Those people in the crowd said that it looked like they had just done a lot of damage with a grenade on person. They also said something about the Grigori, and at that moment Kim and the person were not very happy. Then these people said that all this did not matter, because now you just need to kill these two. Despite the fact that it was even difficult for person to move, he still told those villains what they imagined. But when he blinked, he saw that someone flew into the crowd at great speed and killed someone. Person was very surprised, because blood splashes scattered several meters from the body. In front of him stood Kim, who had just destroyed a strong enemy in less than a second. One of the villains couldn't believe that this guy had just killed Jess with one blow. Among them all, Jess was one of the strongest, which was the reason why he stood in front. Everyone witnessed how this teenager flew up to a low altitude and said that he had to protect. Some of them realized that most likely they were doomed, and nothing would save them. An instant, and Kim landed on the ground, bringing many victims in a sea of blood. He began to jump from side to side at the speed of sound and inflict multiple blows on his opponents. The roofs of the body are in all directions, and the frightened person I was just watching this mess. The guy constantly repeated that he must protect everyone at any cost. After he dealt with everyone, he headed towards the person and delivered one of the blows to it. Then the villain began to shout for Hyung, Nam to calm down, because it was him, person. At that moment the guy came to his senses and realized that he had just tried to strike a friend. Person did not understand what kind of power it was, and if he had given it a little more, he would have lost his arm. Then the guy looked around and saw a lot of corpses, after which he asked the person why he killed everyone. The villain immediately apologized, and at the same time realized that Kim didn't remember anything, and it was the same last time. He realized that the guy did not control himself, and moreover, did not control his very dangerous power. Well, then he realized that this power is not Hyungnam himself, so he just has to protect him because it could kill him. Then he took a mask out of his pocket and handed it to the guy and said that now he needs to wear it all the time. The guy didn't understand why they were doing all this, and they had just illuminated his face. Well person he said that now he needs to wear it all the time, since it's better for Hyung Nim not to show his face. He then said that he is Kim's protector, if his life is in danger then it is a shame for him. The guy said that he understood everything, and added that from now on he would obey all his commands. Person he said that it was time to leave, because something very strange was happening in this cave. Suddenly, a bloody lynx ran out from around the corner along with Master Jean, and Person realized that the Grigori was here. Several hostages, along with the Grigori, stopped and silently looked at the person for several seconds. Just a few seconds ago, a group of bloody lynx and Master Jean hostages ran through the cave to escape. While moving, Jean realized that most likely there was a serious battle going on somewhere, because the entire fortress was simply shaking. He told his friend the bloody lynx that he needed to hurry up, because the fortress would soon collapse. As soon as he finished speaking, a piece of a huge boulder fell from the ceiling and flew towards the hostages. At the same second, the bloody lynx pushed off from the place where he was standing and jumped onto the adjacent wall. Having pushed off from this wall, he was able to destroy this boulder with just one blow of his fist. After that, he landed, and despite the applause of the hostages, he said that he needed to run away from here faster. The group continued to move, and Lynx said that Hyungnim was doing the wrong thing. But while moving, the bloody Lynx suddenly noticed someone, and because of this he fell silent. Master Jean realized where he was looking, and turned his head and saw two people around whom lay corpses. Kim and Person did not expect such a meeting, and for some time they tried to figure out what to do. The two groups simply looked at each other and did not understand what should happen next. Master Jean at that moment thought that the person was greatly annoying him, but it was not clear what the schoolboy was doing here. Person really liked that they met the Grigori, after all, they had to escape before they arrived. Kim, meanwhile, 
simply looked around in confusion and tried to figure out where and best to escape. At that very second, the blood links came to a realization, and because of this, he was immobilized for several seconds. And in front of him was a man with khaki hair, a black mask, and who was a teenager. A person near him, which means that he took it away after the battle. And this means only one thing, in front of him is a real killer respol. As soon as Bloody Lynx realized this, he immediately began to run towards the two. He jumped on the schoolboy and said that he would now tear him into small pieces. Meanwhile, Master Jean shouted after him about what he was doing. The hands of the Bloody Lynx were already a few centimeters away from the guy who stood lost in place. A person jumped straight onto the Bloody Lynx. He pinned his opponent to the wall and was able to hold him like that for quite a long time. The bloody lynx was immobilized and began screaming for the person to let him go immediately. But person only turned his head towards the guy and ordered him to run away from here quickly. Kim was confused, and the first time he didn't even hear what person wanted from him. Bloody lynx, meanwhile, gave the order to Master Jean to catch this schoolboy. When he asked why to do this, Bloody Rice told him that this was the one who killed the Republic. When did person tell his friend to run away from here as quickly as possible? When the guy finally understood what needed to be done, he began to run away, but Jean stood in his way. He said that they needed to talk a little, but at the same time he did not believe that in front of him was actually the killer respol. The guy tried to move him and ordered Jean to move away. But then Master Jeans grabbed him with his pumped up hands, and Kim began to feel the pressure. Jean asked what these weak hands were, and also asked the guy if he had ever fought. He began to put more and more pressure on Kim, constantly asking if he wanted to fight with Jean. San realized that the enemy had incredible strength, and he had a feeling that his arms were about to break. Person shouted to his Hyungnam to run away, and Bloody Flight said that he was not finished with Person yet. Jean said that a couple more seconds of such a confrontation and the guy's hands would crack. But suddenly Kim became very tense, and it became visually clear that his strength had increased. With his thin hands, he could slightly move Jean away from him, who did not have enough strength to restrain him. Meanwhile, the guy pressed harder and harder, and the hero had to retreat. Jean didn't understand why he was inferior in strength, and from the outside it looked very scary. Even the bloody lynx who watched all this said that it could not be that the genie was retreating in power. Person, who had already seen the guy fight more than once, was also very surprised. And Kim's son was only focused on the task and made every effort to solve it. Meanwhile, someone else ran closer to the heroes and villains. A girl came in, and when she became visible, everyone immediately turned their attention to the new guest. It was a blue cat, and she was, to put it mildly, surprised to see such a picture before her eyes. She immediately asked the heroes what was going on here. The bloody lynx immediately answered her, saying that this guy was the killer of the respol. When the girl realized this, she simply couldn't believe it, and at the same time she was glad that they had finally found him. She looked at the guy Jean was fighting with and prepared to run there. The guy looked in her direction with his eyes, and at that moment everything changed very much. The blue cat stopped and stopped moving towards Kim San. Suddenly, she felt a very strange feeling, and completely stopped midway. The bloody lynx began to ask him why it suddenly stopped, and ordered to attack immediately. But the girl just stood there and looked at the teenager who was fighting with the djinn with a wicked face. Bloody Rice began to scream louder and louder at her, and finally loosened his grip. He just felt it, and instantly pushed away from the bloody lynx and jumped onto another enemy. Now he grabbed Master Jean with his own hands and threw him to the floor. The big guy was lying on the floor, and everyone else didn't even have time to understand what had just happened. Person he said that Hyungnam promised him to run away, and told Kim that now is the best moment for this. Then the guy turned around and said that he understood the problem, and Kim began to run further and further. The bloody lynx realized that this was his last chance, and pushed off from the spot and began to run after the guy as fast as he could. The blue cat still stood in place, and it seemed that even just standing was very difficult for her. Jean began shouting after the lynx that he should stay, since all the hostages were now in danger. Meanwhile, the battle between the Henel and the Molek was still going on, and the Molek showed itself to be a very strong opponent. His blows were incredibly strong that even stones were scattered in all directions. But despite all this, he was very slow, and therefore he never managed to hit the enemy. After each blow, he looked around, and it always ended the same. Honel was behind him or above his head, preparing to deliver the decisive blow. 
and while in this position, he told his opponent that it was time to finish. He delivered a lightning strike that pierced the enemy's body in several places at once. There was a very bright flash, and the body of the moth fell firmly to the floor and almost stopped moving. The villain tried to say something, but began to choke on his own blood. A smile appeared on his face and he told Henel that he was indeed a very strong person. Then the hero answered him that Molech's heart was torn, and no matter who he was, he would still die after a while. Molech said that he did not have any last words, but instead he had a small question. He asked the hero if he was really the strongest of people, and asked him to answer honestly. Hanel said that this is an exaggeration, but he is clearly one of the top three heroes. Then Molech he said that this was accurate, and said that he was surprised that there was someone else of similar strength to Honel. Molech he said that for the hero's honest answer, he could give him very interesting advice. He told the hero that if he is truly one of the strongest, then all of humanity will soon come to an end. The hero did not understand what the villain wanted to tell him with these words, and was very surprised when he heard this. He answered him that soon neither the hero nor the people would be able to stop them, if Honel really is one of the strongest. Molek wanted to take this place before they arrived, but now he is dying at the hands of a man. He said that this was not the death he wanted, but now there was nothing he could do. Now the heroes stood over the corpse, and did not particularly think about the dying words of the enemy. He did not contact Jean, but he told him that he was disappointed that Honel had not responded all this time. The hero explained himself by saying that he got involved in a fight as a result of which Molek was destroyed, but Jean interrupted him. He told him that the murderer of Rispel showed up and the bloody lynx ran after him alone. The lynx ran very fast, and the guy could barely break away from him at least sometimes. But nevertheless, the overall speed of the bloody lynx was greater, and accordingly the guy had less chances. Kem realized that now he couldn't get away because the enemy was too fast, he had to do something to get away. Looking back, he saw a bloody lynx, who at that moment thought that the guy was quite fast, but also understood that he was not inferior to anyone in speed. And this only proved that his theory that Kim is the killer of the Republic is true. But he did not try to give up, but only ran faster and faster in order to catch Kim. San understood that the enemy would soon catch up with him, and began to think through different ways to retreat. Suddenly he noticed that the path was ending, and it would be more difficult to run further. If you jump from there, then there is a forest in which the bloody lynx will definitely be able to catch up with him. The guy accepted that most likely he would die, but suddenly he heard a familiar voice. He slowed down a little in order to understand who was making this sound. The sound of his friend sounded, who came to save the guy from death. It was Gamogen, who was hanging on a ladder that was tied to the flying machine. He started shouting to the guy that they came here to save Kim San. The guy understood that he was saved, and realizing this made him feel better. Bloody Lynx noticed that for some reason the guy stopped right next to the exit and raised his hands. Shutri, meanwhile, was at the controls of the aircraft and told them to quickly rise. Gamogen turned to the guy and said that he needed to jump in order to reach the end of the stairs. The boy quickly realized what needed to be done and crouched down in order to push off harder. The Bloody Lynx quickly realized what was about to happen and shouted something after the guy. An object appeared in the sky, which moved very quickly and which made a strange sound. It was Kim who jumped back very hard in order to reach the stairs. The bloody lynx jumped after him and tried to grab the boy's leg with his hand. He pulled with his hand further and further and almost grabbed him by the leg. But he did not have enough jump distance to do this, and he began to turn around. Bloody lynx failed to grab Kim San, and he began to fall down. In turn, the Gamogen quite successfully caught the guy and held him tightly in his hand. Gomeljan he said that the guy was quite naughty and asked what he forgot in this cave. Shutri said that it was time to fly away, and when the guy said that he still needed to pick up the person, he replied that he was helping to escape. The bloody lynx, meanwhile, was lying on the floor, and was incredibly furious. All due to the fact that even having such a great chance, he still could not take advantage of it and capture the killer Respol. He just shouted something at the guy's back and lay on the ground cursing his luck. Quite a long time passed and some chaos was happening in the Grigori office. The bloody lynx grabbed the blue cat and, calling her an idiot, asked what she had done. She replied that it was just her mistake, but the lynx was very angry and said that it was only because of her that they did not catch the murderer. He said that he needed answers to what was in the blue cat's head at that moment. She grabbed bloody lynx's hands, 
as she no longer liked the way it looked. She told him to let her go, and that was the only way they would talk, because at that moment it was just a mistake. Jean asked them all to stop, and Esther also supported him. The blue cat and the bloody lynx were very angry with each other and were ready to tear everyone apart. Suddenly, the blue cat felt some pain, after all, the bloody lynx had hit her. Jean immediately told him to stop immediately if he didn't want to fight with everyone. The blue cat said that this blow would do absolutely nothing to her. Her head hurt, and it was difficult to connect words into sentences. Bloody Lynx suddenly said that it doesn't matter anymore, because now he has made a decision. The blue cat is now not his friend or comrade, and from now on he will not catch the killer on his own. After that, he turned around and began to come closer and closer to the doors. He left the office and slammed the doors very loudly. Jean said that he was not surprised that this happened, because it was a matter of time. Suddenly Dark said that in any case, there is great logic in the words of the Red Lynx. Even if the strength of the opponent was not known, if the Blue Cat had helped Master Jin in the fight, the outcome would have been different. It seems in this case they all need an explanation from the Russian Blue Cat about what happened then. Jean said that there is no need to take the side of the Red Lynx, and he replied that he was simply telling the truth. The Blue Cat got very angry when she heard this, because she thought that only the Bloody Lynx was against her. Hitting the wall with her hand, she said that she just had a headache and because of this she could not attack. Then she also left the office and began to quickly run down the corridor. Jean tried to stop her, but he failed. The situation was catastrophically bad. Hanel, who was in this office, simply remained silent, because he raised how this dialogue would take place. Meanwhile, the girl ran out into the street and began to move, jumping from one wall to another. At the same time, she thought that this simply couldn't be, because she couldn't help but notice it for so long. She pushed off from one of the roofs and slowed down to get through the window. And the girl quite successfully managed to jump into one of the windows and open it. She climbed through the window and tried to understand how he became a superman overnight. Then the blue cat concluded that she was simply mistaken, and in fact everything is not so. She opened the closet, took out her uniform, and realized that she was late since it was already getting light. She needed to investigate today, because something could definitely come of it. Mon called Ji Eun and called her to the kitchen to eat breakfast, the girl said that she would come now. Darkness was in his office and worked hard, since there was no time for rest. Suddenly, one of the sensors that was located after the door lit up, which meant that someone had arrived. Seconds later, the doors opened, and Dark already realized who was about to come in here. He immediately asked the guest, whom he had not yet seen, how he knew about the location of the secret base. He also found out the password. Then he got up from the table and asked if he should let this uninvited guest live. Hanel entered the base and silently walked to the middle of the room. He was simply silent, and after that he said that he thought that Dark would like such a joke. But he answered him that it seems that Hanel has absolutely no sense of humor. The hero sat down at one of the chairs that stood closest to the entrance, and thought a little. Dark turned his head towards him, as he realized that he most likely wanted to talk about something. Hanel told him that he no longer had any strength, because because of his image, he couldn't even say anything publicly. His head was constantly in turmoil, and only in this secret base could he rest. Darkness stood up from the table again and said that Hanel is an elite hero, but behaves like a teenager. Hanel threw a small piece of paper at Darkness and said that he was dumping all the hard work on him, while he was chilling in the base. Then Darka laughed and said that it seemed that this place suited the hero much more than him. Hanel asked after this phrase why Dark behaved this way with the blue cat, because he essentially forced her to run away. He told him that Hanel would not have been able to voice it, so Dark decided to take everything into his own hands. While pouring wine, he also added that the leader of the group should have been Jean, not Hanel. After all, being both a leader and an ace is a very difficult job, he also looked at a blue cat for the role of leader, but she was too young. The blue cat is clearly no more than 23 years old, and is about 10 years apart from the rest of the team. The leader must be experienced and generous, like Jean, the blue cat must become the captain of the attack, an ace. Hanel said that he himself also understands this, but also realizes that Jean will never agree to this. Dark he said that he apparently blames himself for mistakes in the army, and most likely this influences his uncertainty. Moreover, he also added that if the blue cat were three to four years older, it could be considered a leader. 
Hainel said that he wanted a beer, and asked if he had some on this base. He knocked the glass lightly on the table, and significant cracks immediately began to spread across it. Dark asked if the hero even knew how much such a glass cost, and he replied that he had already been in such a state. After that, Darkness took a beer from the refrigerator and asked if Hanel wanted to indulge in nostalgia. He answered him that he missed those times, because those were good times and he lived without caring about anything. But now everything is completely different, and everything is much harder and more complicated. Hanel said that they should go to the Han River like in the good old days and have a drink there. But Dark he said he couldn't drink. Meanwhile, the action moved to the house where Kim Sun's group was now located. A person came into the house, and everyone who was inside was very happy to hear this. Kim said that he was very glad that person was alive, and Gamajin was surprised that he did not die. Person he said that he was glad that they were worried, and then asked Wu Hyungnim if he was injured. He tried to talk to Kim, but was suddenly interrupted by the Shutrai, whose voice was very angry. Person immediately asked him what happened, and for some reason his voice began to tremble. He told them both to follow him because he wanted to tell them something. Shutrai immediately began asking both of them and mainly the persons what he was thinking when he agreed. He was very unhappy with what happened and said that person should have stopped Kim when he suggested going into the cave. But then Kim San apologized to the Shutrai and said that they would not do this again. Person asked if he could go, since he had some wounds after the battle. But instead of letting both go, the Shutrai told both of them to sit down, since he had not finished yet. After this, the Shittera calmed down a little and said that he had very important news. He notified everyone else that they needed to get ready, since they were leaving and this was not discussed. He also added that the reason for this was that it seemed that their house was spotted by heroes. Meanwhile, the staff of the Guardians of the American Team of Heroes was talking about the fact that the Grigori had broken into Vienne. The head of the Guardians said that they had already lost many heroes lately. And he asked everyone else how the best team of heroes in the world could get to this point. All the heroes who were at the same table did not know what to answer to this and they were a little ashamed. After this, the head of the organization said that something could be attributed to bad luck, but in general they simply do not know who they are fighting. One of the heroes said that if this all happened in Vienne, then it was probably the Highlander's fault. The head of the organization tried to remember who Highlander was, and remembered that he had the nickname Executioner. He then added that in any case, he could not watch the Guardian Hero organization stagnate. Therefore, he ordered to contact the Grigori and call the Hainal here. The largest and most impressive team of villains, they are more numerous than the Guardians and they control the VN. The team is the center of the balance of power in which none of the heroes can interfere. One day while working, someone approached Blake, and he immediately recognized a familiar female voice. It was the Highlander's secretary named Ellie, and she brought materials about the battle with Respol. Blake was very exhausted, and said that he was glad that the documents had finally arrived. These men were visited by the head of the Highlanders, an SS-ranked villain nicknamed the Executioner, and named Daniel Blake. After looking at the documents, he said that apparently person was involved in these matters. The secretary said that most likely they would change the location because of what Gamogen had done. But if you use force it will be much easier. After all, why strain, guided only by ordinary efforts? Looking at the sculpture that was in the room, Blake said that he could try for his sake. It was a stone sculpture of some deity who was sitting on a throne. The secretary said that this was a useless idea because it wouldn't help anything in the afterlife. Blake, in turn, said that she was very cruel, and asked who their guest was today. She said that this was the same outstanding newcomer to the Habib Combat Training School named Krutz. Blake looked at him, and then the Krut greeted the executioner, and he said not to call him that. The secretary also said that his skills allow him to immediately become the leader of the squad team, and then Blake asked what powers he had. Cruz said that if it is possible to kill someone, then he will be able to demonstrate it perfectly. The secretary turned to the workers and told them to be careful with the monument they were moving. Blake shouted to one of the workers not to use the rope, because it might cause scratches. Krutzai realized that this was his chance to demonstrate his strength. He began to come closer and closer to the monument and ordered its workers to move a little. Blake told the newcomer that this monument was quite heavy, and advised the Krutz not to do this so as not to overstrain himself. But when Krutz put his hands on the monument, everyone seemed to understand what he was going to do. After that, he felt this monument a little, and realized that he could easily move it. A moment later, 
he took the stand with his powerful legs and began to move this monument forward. Blake, who was watching all this, was a little surprised, and even more angry. After the villain moved the monument, he decided to turn to the boss to ask how he liked it. He said that the monument is indeed heavy, but only for ordinary people, which it is not. He also said that besides strength, he used something else, but he was not destined to finish it. After all, a knife flew into his head, which Blake, who was standing nearby, threw at him with all his might. He said that from the very beginning he asked not to touch this monument because scratches appeared on it. The secretary contacted the cleaning service using her microphone and said that the body needed to be removed. Blake went up to the corpse and took out his knife from there, asking if they would finally see the new guest. The cleaning service was already there and wiping away the blood stains that remained on the wooden floor. Then the secretary said that it looked like Game Jin and Person were living with that guy, and Blake asked what was wrong. After all, he said that you can just kill them, and then take the main thing for yourself. His look became more angry and he said that now is the time to meet the kids. They had to get ready, because a very interesting meeting awaited them soon. Now the story featured the leader of the Guardians, Blake, and of course the leader Grigori Hainel. But how will they interact? Meanwhile, the leader of the group said that they needed to split up and go in search of a place to move. Shutri added that he will distribute homemade walkie-talkies to everyone and if nothing interferes, they will be able to hear each other at a distance of 30 kilometers. Kim said that he really likes this technology, and Gamigan added that he is too lazy to move. After this, the order was given to divide into groups, and the leader said that he and the Gamogen would go north and east. San and Person had to search the southern and western parts, the Gamogen began to shout that he would not go with the Shutri freak. The leader said that you need to find an inconspicuous place, the deeper into the forest the better, Gamogen wished good luck to the boss. Shutri saddled his partner and began to ride on his back. Kim said to Person that perhaps they shouldn't have been sent together. Then he said that it looked like it was time for them, and San said that they needed to move out as quickly as possible in order to get everything done. They simultaneously heard Gamogen shouting at his partner, and they became even more scared. Meanwhile, Kim and Person went deeper into the forest, and the guy said that no one would find them here. Person he said that this place is not bad, after all, they won't be able to bump into anyone here. Then Kim added that he needed to call the Shirtri so that he could tell if this place was suitable for moving. But suddenly Person noticed something and told his Hyunin to move back a little. The guy was not at all surprised that someone could live in this terrible house, but Person added that refugees usually live here. Having looked a little closer, the group saw a person who turned out to be a girl in a hat who looked young. Kim said that she did not look dangerous, and Person also added that he did not see any traps, and did not think that the girl had power. Meanwhile, the girl plunged her axe into the stump and exhaled with relief. She called her grandfather and said that she had already completed all the work, despite the fact that he did not believe in her. She turned her head to look at her grandfather, but suddenly stopped saying anything. After all, there were two people standing in front of her who were simply silently watching her. Kim San greeted her, and after that, for a few more seconds, everyone was just silent. Then the girl screamed, and she was terrified, and screamed louder and louder trying to get her grandfather's attention. Suddenly, grandfather opened the doors with all his might and asked the boy what happened. He immediately told the little girl not to worry, because now everything would be decided. Then the girl said that the villains had come, and this time there were two of them. The grandfather told these villains that he would now give them money. Person at that moment recognized who was in front of him, and, to put it mildly, was very surprised. Was it really John Homer, and in turn the grandfather found out that there was a person in front of him. They all moved inside the house to talk about what interests them. The grandfather apologized for meeting them like that, because villains often walk through these districts, and he thought that they were being attacked. Kim said that it was their fault that they showed up so suddenly. Person asked why Kim is so cowardly today. Suddenly a girl came into the room and offered the guests tea, at that moment Kim asked her if it was dangerous to live here together. John told him that they have their own reasons, because this place is so deep in the forest that few people come here, so everything is in order. Person O asked if John was hiding here because he was planning something, and it was not rudeness since in front of them was that same stone Buddha. The phrase Stone Buddha was already more familiar to Kim, and he said that this was the same famous exemplary grandfather. That this is the Buddha of their time, 
the second Jesus who sacrificed all his means to help people. Then person turned to the guy and said that before this this grandfather was a notorious villain, but he said that it seems he has reformed. Instead of explaining something, let him just say the number 6317. He notified the guy that this grandfather killed 6,317 people only according to official data. Stone Buddha John Homer was a devil who can kill even a child for money, whose worst villain was even recognized by the butcher. Person said that he didn't deserve redemption after killing so many people, John said that he was very unscrupulous. He asked the guests for forgiveness, but Kim did not look at him because he heard some movement from behind. It was some girl who came in, and she no longer looked the same as the one who came before. She asked if they would eat and if she needed to chop some more wood. Person was more surprised than everyone else, got up dressed and began to approach the belka. Coming closer, he said that he had eaten and she had just chopped the wood herself. Kim didn't understand how at that age a child could have Alzheimer. Then person he said that this is not the problem, the problem lies in the face of this child. She had reptilian eyes and pointed ears, which only meant that she was a hybrid. These were dangerous creatures that no one would accept from danger. Person I decided that I needed to kill her right now, so as not to endanger anyone present. But Kim stopped him and asked him to calm down, because he was just a child. Person asked his grandfather why he took in a hybrid, and one with Alzheimer's too, who answered that she is not his own, but Belka is just like a real granddaughter for him. Person said that it looks like John is completely crazy if he calls this creature his granddaughter. Grandfather said that he is really trash and that he is better off dead, but he continues to live in order to protect Belka. Even in those days when he was called a demon and a murderer, he never considered himself a human. He was a maniac who was obsessed with blood and didn't care about anything. And while he was living his worthless, meaningless life, one beautiful day he met her. Many will say that this seems like the beginning of a stupid love story, but for him it was a wonderful gift. He really tried to start living correctly and show himself from the best side before God so that they would not suffer for his sins. He didn't deserve such happiness. She was the meaning of his life. What he was born for. But as expected, God was cruel to him for everything he had done in his life before that. When the child was stillborn, the woman was on her deathbed. And John realized how powerless he was. Even though he was very strong, there was no way he could correct the situation here. It was the woman who paid for his sins. The man prayed very much and asked God to save her and said that he would do anything, asked to take him instead of her. But God did not hear him, and the girl soon died. She left her loving husband, and then John's soul died with her. He wandered aimlessly and decided to die, because the strength to live left him where he first met her and he decided to end his life the same way. But at that moment everything changed, it seemed to him that the universe was trying to give him a hint. Among the ruins, he found an abandoned child who was crying loudly and with no one around. It was a hybrid child, her fate was obvious, she would die if someone found her, or she would die at night from the cold. And even though it seemed like nonsense to him then, at that second he heard her voice. My wife told me not to follow her. And she said to live, and said that this child was her gift to him. Listening to this, Kim began to play with Belka, a person told her that she was not so small. The guy found her very cute, and at one point he wanted to anoint her cheeks. Despite the fact that person tried to warn him, there was some kind of directed outburst of energy. It didn't last very long and stopped pretty quickly. When person and Kim turned around, they saw that an impressively sized hole had appeared in the wall. The grandfather said that in this state it should not be touched by anyone except the grandfather, otherwise it shoots out energy. Person I realized that this beam was at the S rank level, since the power of the energy penetrated not only the wall but also the mountain that was nearby. She didn't even prepare, and she didn't have a cooldown. Person I realized that the girl was dangerous and was no longer human. At that moment, through the means of communication, Person suddenly heard the voice of their friends asking if they had found a place. Person replied that they had found a place, but for some reason Shirtri said that if they did not find anything, then let them go towards the center. Then Person told the guy that their friends had found a new place and it was time for them to leave. Kim told John that it was time for them to go, and advised him to take care of himself, asking if it was okay to come sometimes. He answered him that he was only glad, because for the first time in all the time they met good people here. The guy leaned over to the girl and told her to be careful, and said that he would come again. The girl asked not to leave. 
She tried to speak, but all she could do was keep repeating the word hard. Kim, with a smile on his face, answered his partner that he was getting ready now and could leave. When they left the house, the girls still asked them not to leave, but Kim San just waved at them. The girls said that if Kim San is having a hard time, she will help. She will kill. Paulson and the guy moved to other members of the squad, and Sure Try was already in place she said that there is no GPS reception here and it's difficult to come here by accident. Gamajin told the boss that he was the one who found this place, and Kim San said that he knew that he could be relied on. Sure Try gave the order to build a house, something like a hut, and Bloody Link said that he would go to find some wood. When they told him that there was already plenty of wood here, he replied that a simple tree would not be enough. Hyung Nam will live in this house, so everything needs to be done at the highest level. We need a goddess. Pushing off from the place where person was standing, he flew into the air and said that he promised Kim the best mansion. Game Jin said that this tree was difficult to find, and Sure Try asked if he even knew where he went. But then Gamajin added that there is a whole forest of Agathis, but he doesn't remember where it is. After flying and running for some time, person stopped in the middle of a small forest. When he landed, he realized that he had not been here for a very long time, and had forgotten a lot. Everything around was painted in some kind of pink color, due to the fact that in general this was the color of the Agathis forest. It was quite dense, and a huge number of trees grew at a short distance from each other. This is the rarest tree in the world, moreover, it is stronger than any metal, and because of this it is very loved. Hyungnam will probably be delighted that he will now bring this material for construction. Suddenly person felt something, and very quickly realized that there was a rather large group of individuals near him. When he turned his head he said that he didn't even know that this was their territory. In front of him were the Highlanders, and they looked like people in black cloaks and iron masks. This was an elite squad, so person asked for forgiveness for invading their lands. He just needed wood and he said that he didn't want to fight and if this was their territory then he would leave. Then the Highlanders they said that Blake was looking for him, so he would go with them. Person asked if he had anything to do with him, because he had not seen this old man for a very long time. But instead of answering, the Highlanders threw back their cloaks as one and prepared to take up arms. One of them told him not to be stubborn and to follow them. And if he listens, he won't get hurt, and Blake will just talk to him. Person asked what would happen if he refused this, since he had plans for today. Highlander they said that in such a situation they would drag the lifeless body to their leader. At that moment, they all began their attack, and swung their swords towards the person. Everything here was neon pink, due to the nature of the leaves of this forest. Person was covered in some kind of mud, dust and dried blood. He said that apparently Highlander had underestimated him. Does he really seem so weak from the outside? As soon as he said this, he looked around at the mountain of corpses around him. He asked the bodies why they had brought it to this, because they could have just let him go. He looked to the side and saw an old acquaintance, asking what kind of day it was that he was meeting old acquaintances. It was Ellie who said that today was an important day for Polson. Ellie was a former hero who belonged to the Ultras of Japan. She also said that depending on the appearance of the person, it will be known whether he will live or die. They had not seen each other for a long time, and Ellie added that perhaps the last time they saw each other was after the death of Nagbunaga. Person he said that he was offended that his pride was being hurt, and asked why he had to die. The girl did not respond to this, but seemed to only be preparing for her attack. She seemed to grab the sword, but the sword itself was not visible, therefore Person said that it seemed she forgot it with the heroes. A second later, the girl used the wind sword, a sword that appeared out of thin air whenever the owner wanted it. Person was very surprised when he saw him, and he did not have time to dodge. The girl managed to strike his shoulder and a deep wound immediately appeared. Person was in pain, and the girl said that she had just tried to cut off his hand, and he dodged like a ghost. But she also added that it was stupid that person did not expect an invisible sword. The wind sword was faster than the speed of light. It was also invisible and moved the fastest. Opponent again if he would follow her, because it's obvious who has the advantage in battle. Person he said that it seemed like she had already forgotten who he was, and it was impossible for him to be the only one beaten. The girl said that this was what she expected, and at the same time summoned another phantom sword. The wind sword appeared in her hand and she looked at her opponent more focused. With the two swords in her hands, she could already use the whirlwind dance technique, 
which was as fast as it was deadly. This attack was very fast, and even for persons it was quite difficult to dodge it. He also noticed that the girl moves very quickly, and uses the maximum amount of energy at this moment. She quickly realized that this was indeed a person, the one who was able to evade the stormy dance of the wind spirit for the first time. The guy very quickly realized that running away was my option, despite the fact that he was good at it. Having moved a short distance, he began to approach, because it was necessary to find an opportune moment. Making his way through the girl's techniques, he realized that he was getting closer and closer and the attack was becoming more obvious. But suddenly he saw that Ellie had changed her technique and would now use something else. It was still a wind sword, but it was a new moon technique that was impossible to evade. Person I saw that she was moving towards him when she was already a couple of centimeters away from his face. An instant, and a splash of blood occurred and splattered the area of the ground near the villain. He fell a little to the ground and bent his knee, because it was quite difficult to stand. He looked forward at his opponent, but he still had enough strength. Person was thinking about what to do next, and very quickly noticed that despite the fact that he missed the blow, the girl did not have the strength. She is breathing very heavily and sweat is flowing all over her body. As person thought, she was already falling off her feet, the great wind technique cannot be allowed indefinitely. Therefore, it was necessary to try to destroy it with one blow. They looked at each other, and despite the fact that the girl had little strength, she was still very smart. Then person gathered all his strength to wait for the moment and use all his power in a second. This required very strong concentration, which the guy tried to pull off. When he opened his eyes, he saw that the girl had swung her sword and was preparing to strike. But at that moment it was open, and person jumped on it, realizing that it had been caught. And it seems that Ellie herself also realized this, confusion can be seen on her face. For a moment it seemed to her that the body had stopped, and she was immobilized, and did not see the enemy in front of her. But within a second I felt a very strong blow from the person, which was moving faster than light. This was not the only blow, as he grabbed the girl and began to strike more with his fists. He grabbed her by the neck and said that as he said, this is the end. Also added that with such masters as her, it will be easier for the lungs to cope. The girl tried to use the technique with her hand, but then person said that it was unnecessary. And at the same time, he squeezed her neck even harder, after which the energy from the technique began to disappear. Suddenly person I heard someone from the side say that he had passed. The guy was very surprised, because he thought that after the Highlander and the Founder's personal assistant, no one would come here. It was Blake and he said that person needs to stop there because if he kills Ellie then he will have to kill him. Person asked what was really going on, since even the Founder of Highlander came here. It was the Butcher, so that he would calm down a little and go with him to the Highlander. Ellie said that she could still fight, but Blake replied that this time Ellie lost, and even laughed quietly. He jumped off the small rock on which he had been sitting all this time and began to come closer to person. He also added that this was the first time they had met in person, and added that his name was Blake. Person said he knew him as a butcher. Then Blake interrupted him and said that calling him a butcher was forbidden because he hated that word. Then person once again asked why the Highlander leader was looking for him, and again called him a butcher. The man looked at his opponent with contempt, because he had just violated what he asked. He laughed and said that he liked this youthful insolence. Person said that it was enough to just talk, and asked Blake to answer his question, then the head asked him where the boy was. Person asked which boy he was talking about now, despite the fact that he already understood. Blake took out two swords and said that that man came to this earth in the body of God and personally punished the people. He wanted to get this world, so Blake asks where it is because he must meet it in person. Person at that moment realized how powerful Kim's son possibly was. Meanwhile, President John, who returned to Korea this morning, was moving on to a very important meeting. It was guarded by heroes from the Grigori, and a very large number of heroes were involved. Near him was a blue cat, and the strongest hero from the organization, named Hanel. The genie who was on the roof said that he was already tired of accompanying this nobleman. Then Esther told him that nothing could be done, the investments from President John amounted to 90% of the total capital of the Grigori. Then Master Jean replied that, nevertheless, he did not like the rumors about him, because he was known for his bad character. After that, he asked the page if Bloody Lynx had contacted her. But she replied that he never got in touch, and Jean didn't like it very much. The Bloody Lynx was now in the bar, 
drinking whiskey and looking at something that was in his hand. It was part of a res pole suit, the weight was in grams and the elasticity was such that it could be pulled over an elephant. Dark said that there were several special additional features in this suit, such as fire resistance and water resistance. He told all interested heroes to contact him, and he would create costumes for them that were very similar in functionality. Link said that it looks like Darkness is crazy if he really thinks that one of the heroes will wear this. Then Rispel he said that he really wanted to try this costume, and asked Dark to make it, and to make Hanel in blue. Hanel took his suit and said that it is better to die of shame than to lose your life without wearing this suit. That day, Jean said that his body is more reliable than these suits, and he has a set of uniforms from their school. One of the heroes asked for a black suit, and then Dark said that Respol would receive a suit in green. When Respol put it on, the Lynx immediately began to laugh and say that if he sees this in battle, he will die of horror. He told his friend that he would definitely not regret it when he was killed because he did not wear it. And the bloody Lynx said that most likely the Respol would die first, and even said that he was ready to bet 200,001. They agreed to the bet and Rispel said that the Lynx will lose and die much earlier than the Resurgent. And now Bloody Lynx sat at the bar and looked at his friend's logo. He said that he knew that he would die first, and said that now Respol should give him the winnings. Suddenly, villains entered the bar, and one of them said that he had heard rumors that the Grigori had left. And the second immediately added that Bloody Lynx looks more like a villain from the outside. Instead of answering anything, the Bloody Lynx just took a sip from the glass. Then the villain continued, saying that the reality is that the heroes are just crazy. The second one added that such heroes as Dakniz are damn bastards, because they killed many more people than the villains. Someone put his hand on the bloody lynx's shoulder and said that he was simply a lousy hero with his approach to enemies. After he finished this, the hero hit the villain's face on the bar counter. The second villain was very scared when he saw that he managed to neutralize the villain with one blow. Then the bloody lynx turned to him and said that they could only talk about heroes behind their backs. He looked straight into the villain's eyes and said that they were so weak that they could only discuss the others. After that, he ordered him to get lost, because if he appears in this bar again, he will kill him. After that, the bloody lynx returned to the place where he had been drinking and took a few more sips of whiskey. But suddenly, while he was chanting this drink, he realized something. And the awareness of this did not give him peace, Lynx realized that that guy was there then. And if it was definitely him, then this leads him to very unsettling thoughts. The anxiety that the hero felt was difficult to describe in words. Person stood in front of his opponent, and realized that this time he could not escape the battle. Blake told him that he would finally be able to test how Person behaves in battle and what skills he has. Before Person there was the only SS-class villain in the world, the Butcher. But he has nothing outstanding compared to his fame. He was not strong or fast. He didn't even have magical powers. He was simply strong, truly a god of battle. A man who reached the top only thanks to his overwhelming talent in combat. This is a fight opponent that cannot guarantee victory in perfect condition. And this disoriented person. Blake said that he was already tired of waiting for the enemy to attack, and therefore he would start first. Person I realized that it was best to end the battle immediately with the strongest technique he owned. He immediately focused and hypersonic pulses began to spread beneath his feet. They became more and more abundant, and the blue energy of the table also radiated from them. Porcian created his own territory, an established space, around himself. And he could capture this space with unprecedented light. It just so happened to Ellie that she, too, was associated with the gloomy brilliance. There is a difference in the strength of coercion depending on the ability of the enemy, but if you find yourself in the twilight, it is unlikely that you will be able to free yourself. Suddenly Blake felt the presence of this energy and began to look around. A real butcher, he managed to notice the invisible shadow shine by touch. Very quickly he felt that he was being shackled, and he said that he already saw the weak point of this energy. A second later he said that he saw him, and at that moment the person was very scared. All because the butcher was able to destroy all this aura with just one movement, and it was destroyed. The first time he managed to identify the twilight shine and destroy it. Blake for the first time saw the movement of the most complex gloomy brilliance and immediately dispelled it. Moreover, the enemy had already approached the person, and asked what had just surprised him. He immediately struck with his butcher's cleaver, but person was able to dodge this blow. The cutting blows continued further, 
but the person dodged more quickly than any warrior. After some time, he began to miss blows, and could not understand why he could not dodge. He couldn't dodge all the blows because he couldn't read his opponent's attacks. Blake came even closer to him and said that person had made a very big mistake. When he fought with Ellie, he had to come to kill, and if he decided to spare the enemy, he exposed himself to this fate. Then person understood everything and turned his head towards where the girl he had just defeated was located. And when he looked there, he noticed that Ellie had disappeared from that place and was no longer sitting there. Blake took advantage of this opportunity and slashed his sword directly at the person's body. The villain immediately felt incredible pain, and blood began to flow like a river from his mouth. He went down on one knee again, since standing on two legs was already quite difficult. Blake he said that now it's clear that person is exhausted, because he has the strength of a child. But still person was able to find the strength to get up. Even though this stance was rather uncertain, he still stood and looked into the face of danger. It was hard to breathe, and every breath he took was as if blood had entered the trachea. Blake laughed, because he understood that eliminating such a weakened enemy would not be difficult. He said that he was surprised that person was able to get up after such wounds, and invited him to join the Highlander. Blake added that they would immediately take him there to the post of corps commander, and perhaps promote him to successor. But the exhausted person he said that he was grateful for this opportunity, but he was already a member of the Sephron team. Blake had never heard anything like this before, so he decided to ask what he meant. He heard someone from the bush shout Sephron, and at the same time some movement began. He turned his head to see who was there, and saw him in front of him. It was Kim San, who was preparing to strike directly at the Highlander chief. Blake saw this too late and did not have time to dodge the attack. There was a blow from which Blake could only defend himself by putting his weapon forward. But it didn't really help, so when did it send him flying a short distance anyway? Kim immediately asked the person how his condition was, but he had not yet answered anything. Sure try he said that he was angry with him for going behind the trees, and then began to treat the severe bleeding with hemostasis. Blake he said that this was just some kind of team of rats and not a serious organization. Kim began to tell him that he was not a serious opponent at all, and could not understand how to address him as you or you. Then Gamogen said that you need to address the enemy directly in order to scare him, and Kim added that there are four of them, and Blake is only one. But Gomeljan he said that this is not so, because it is obvious that there are many Highlanders in the forest. Therefore, it is more likely four versus two hundred. They were silent for a while as Kim thought about a more intimidating way to tell Blake that he was finished. He turned to the Gamogen, who at that moment was very excited that their boss was a real charmer. Blake told Gamogen that they had not seen each other for a long time, and also asked how he was generally doing. He also asked why he didn't greet his father. And Gamogen answered him that it looks like it's time for Blake to retire. Kim was surprised that Gamogen was Blake's son. And the Highlander founder also added that he raised it. Gamogen corrected him and said that he was not a son, but a mercenary whom he did not raise but created weapons for murder. Then Blake raised his hand and said that it looked like a little more people would have to be used against this Sephirim. As soon as he did this, it immediately became clear to everyone that they were far from alone here. Highlanders in these forests, and even Kim himself said that there were a lot of opponents. Blake sat down on a stone and said that person should be left alive and everyone else should be killed on the spot. Highlander began their attack, and it was clear that they were attacking in waves. Gamogen told his boss to get ready, but it seems that Kim Sang did not fully understand him. Gamogen grabbed his hand, and at the same time said that Kim's hand was very hard. After that, he threw the guy straight into the big Highlander group. The warriors with swords who tried to attack did not expect such a turn of events. Suddenly, the guy's body flew right into them, but the damage they received was much more impressive. Kim looked towards his friend and looked accusingly into his eyes. And Gamogen, in turn, shouted to the Highlanders to get a taste of the boss's body, which is the best weapon. Highlander could not understand what kind of hard body this boy had and why it was so strong. Someone even tried to hit him with a sword, but it did not bring any result. He only broke his sword on his head, and not a scratch appeared on the guy's body. He grabbed his head and said that actually it was quite painful. After that, with just one blow, he sent this Highlander several hundred meters away. Highlander we realize that the enemy is not simple and this guy is a fighter with high combat skills. A Gamogen came to him, as he wanted to help his boss. Now he stood in a circle around the opponents, 
and Kim began to notice that the Highlanders were standing somehow incorrectly. Turns out Gamogen managed to strike all of them while moving inside the circle. Kim didn't even have time to understand anything, a Gamogen has already said that the boss fights great and we need to continue in the same spirit. Meanwhile, Shutrai said that there is no need to rejoice, after all, this is only the beginning of a fierce battle. Blake again gave command to his troops, and said that he was very surprised by this unknown guy. At that same second, the Highlanders began their movement, and it looked like they were lining up in some kind of vehicle. It was a shadow line technique, and all of these fighters were professionally trained to use it. Gamogen realizing what was happening, he asked the boss to leave, but Kim San said that he would also fight. Blake considered the opponents to be puppies, and said that now they will see what they are capable of. Suddenly the founder of Highlander I heard a voice ask him to light a cigarette. It was John Homer, who stood on a tree branch and told Blake that they had not seen each other for a long time. When Kim saw him he was very surprised, but moreover, even Gamogen found out what kind of grandfather he was. He looked at him and said the word idol. After all, this was another nickname that that grandfather lived for his life. In the Shitra he was scared, because he did not understand how he ended up here and on whose side he wanted to fight. The Highlanders who saw him were also afraid that he might turn against them. John turned to Blake and said that he owed this boy and asked if he could just leave. But he replied that you couldn't suddenly show up after a few decades and ask for something like that. He also said that this request sounded like a threat, and asked his grandfather if this was true or if he was too sensitive. John said that he was ready to threaten if necessary, because his authority in just one time made him straighten up. Because now Blake stood at his full height and looked at his old acquaintance John Homer, who was still standing on the tree branch. Suddenly, Ellie, who couldn't even imagine that he would appear here, got into the dialogue. But at present the army was overwhelming, but it was not clear how to deal with the idol. Suddenly Blake gave the order to withdraw the troops and return to base. Ellie couldn't understand it, but the commander said that today we just need to retreat, and he also ordered Ellie to do the same. He said that the Highlander troops needed to be recalled, and Ellie told him that the order would be carried out. The team couldn't believe that they were actually leaving, and Kim said that they had one. John said that he was grateful and would not forget this debt to Blake. But he, in turn, answered him that the fee for one request was very high. And he also added that if they meet by chance, then everything will be completely different. On that day he will kill him, and said that this is not a warning and should never be forgotten. Grandfather laughed and said that he understood and would keep this in mind for the rest of his life. When Highlander and the others left, Kim San immediately ran up to John. He began to thank him and say that he was incredibly cool since everyone listened seriously and left. Person said that he owed this old man, because he had just saved their lives. He said that if you compare this with what Kim did for the Biola, then his help is simply nothing. Then Kim said that perhaps they should live together, but he replied that he had a responsibility to take care of the Belka. Ellie, who was following her commander, did not know how to choose the right moment to ask a question. But still she asked why they decided to retreat, even if it was the request of the stone idol. After all, the Highlanders had already taken control of everything around them and this was enough for their defeat. Then Blake raised his sword and said that Ellie was mistaken if she thought that they retreated because of John. Then Ellie asked what was the main reason, because she was incredibly interested. At that moment, the commander gave a small click to his sword, and from it it cracked in half. Ellie couldn't believe what happened to Ella, because this weapon was made of matto. It was like a fairy tale, Witcher is the strongest material for weapons that cannot be destroyed. Then the girl suggested that at the moment when the guy struck, and Blake blocked it, he hit the sword. After all, such a blow cannot break the spell of an ordinary person, and even a hero. Suddenly Blake began to realize that he was accompanied by a person, this was a baby he had seen for the first time. And moreover, it was such a strange power. And then the commander realized that the one he was looking for was that child. Ellie still didn't realize anything and wanted to ask her commander how this could happen. The commander told her that in fact everything is much simpler than she thinks. The bloody lynx, meanwhile, was still in that bar, and it looked like he was waiting for someone. He didn't talk to anyone, but just sat at the counter and sipped whiskey from time to time. Suddenly someone came into the room, and this person really attracted the attention of everyone else who was here. They didn't understand why he even came here if he understood how popular he was. They could understand for us how such a person as Darkness, whom everyone considered to be a poor psychopath, got here. 
There were even suggestions that perhaps he came to kill everyone and find out information about someone. When dark when he sat down next to the bloody lynx, he told him that the audience welcomed him very much. Darkness answered him that he was glad that he had lived so long, that he had lived to see the moment when the red lynx himself wanted to see him. Lynx answered him that when he sees dark, he thinks that he really lived a good life, and offered him a drink. He answered him that he doesn't drink, despite the fact that the lynx said that he could easily go outside without a mask. After all, no one knows him. Then he asked him to tell him his real name, Hanel, because such a vile stalker as he could not help but know it. Dark ordered him to stop joking and get to the heart of the matter, to why he came here. Bloody Link said that he was very uninteresting and took another sip from his glass. With just one smooth stroke he emptied it completely and got to the point. Bloody Lynx turned his head and told Darkness that he needed help from him. He replied that this was quite unexpected, because usually requests are made to the Bloody Lynx. Lynx could not help but find any clues, he would have done anything to get on the tail of the killer Respoel, but even in VN he could not find him. He also added that any information, even the slightest clue, would be useful. Bloody Lynx asked him to find out about this everywhere, he believes that Darkness can accomplish this. Then the Targ asked the hero if he knew why he did not help him with his search. All because it is dangerous. After all, the closer he gets to the enemy alone, the more danger Bars is in. The Bloody Link said that he doesn't care about all the dangers, so he just needs help with the search. Darkness was silent for some time, and then said that in exchange for this, the Lynx must fulfill two conditions. The hero immediately said that he would unconditionally agree to any conditions in order to find the killer. The first condition was that in case of unforeseen circumstances, they would share all their affairs with the Grigori. Dark, of course, made another request, but the Bloody Lynx did not give this request any importance. He took advantage of the darkness information and began to move around VN in search of a target. Before this, Dark explained to him all the information he had, on the day when three guards were killed, a small plane flew into Fortress G on the mountain. This model is not from an exhibition, but a prefabricated aircraft, and Dark managed to find out who bought spare parts for it. The result of the surveillance showed that the buyers were the Shutri terrorist, and when Dark followed him, he realized that they were living in an abandoned house. Perhaps they live there until this day, but there is still another variation. Darkness he said that there was a fuzzy man following them, and they probably changed their place. But Bloody Lynx had tracking skills and that could help. This was enough for such a powerful hero to find and identify all enemies. Going inside, he saw clear signs of human presence and the fact that someone lived here. Four toothbrushes were found in the bathroom, and this matched the number of individuals that lived here. Darkness's information was insignificant, and the movement of the persons was close to ideal. And yet the remaining traces were irrevocably erased by time. And the traces left there are at such a level that even Dark gave up. However, there is a fact that Dark would not even think about. Well, what Bloody Lynx thought about. The Bloody Lynx was ready to lay down his life just to eliminate the one who killed the Respole. And when he used all his knowledge, he climbed the rock and discovered some kind of trailer. This trailer did not fit the surroundings at all and looked quite foreign. The Bloody Lynx immediately jumped off this cliff and wanted to get closer to this incomprehensible structure. The trailer was too big for a regular container, it became obvious that someone was living there. It was impossible to enter there right away, because perhaps there are some kind of security systems there. Moreover, if the entire group is now inside, then you first need to observe. Suddenly, the bloody lynx heard that someone was walking through the forest and was getting closer. He turned to that area and began to watch in order to understand who it was coming. Suddenly he saw a man in a mask, and instantly realized who he was. But in order to understand how this could happen, you need to move back some time. Then he himself approached the Shirtri and asked her everyone had gone. And he answered him that he was glad that he had already gotten up. He notified him that Person and Kamajan had gone to finish the last battle. Where they want to remove all traces. Kim said that he realized that everyone was busy, so he wanted to take a little walk. I asked if he wanted to go with him, but he replied that he would just walk around the area himself. He walked through the forest and realized that he was alone in which he had lived for a long time. And now this loneliness does not haunt him and San walked in a good mood through the forest. He experienced a prolonged event and it made him intoxicated with calm, and for a moment he even felt like he was in ordinary life. It was a nice sunny day, 
and it had a positive effect on the guy's mood. San, I am enjoying a good and relaxed mood. I walked further and further through the forest. But suddenly, the two unexpectedly collided, and almost instantly recognized each other. Kim was very scared when he saw in front of him someone who was chasing him as if this was his goal in life. And Bloody Lynx, in turn, looked at Kim San and did not know what to do. He put his finger to his ear and told Gregory to come to him. The guy watched this and realized that most likely the hero was bluffing. The Bloody Lynx's gestures seemed ostentatious, and the guy understood that he wanted to intimidate him. Naturally, there were no Bloody Lynx's colleagues everywhere, and even he didn't expect her to collide so quickly. But the hero was a veteran who went through thick and thin and was ready for different situations. After the last time he escaped and lost his mind, he decided for himself that he would not repeat the same mistake again. Dark's information in his past experience, then San is completely new. And the bloody lynx remembers this for a moment and therefore bluffs. And this bluff was the first step, which showed that the battle would soon begin. Suddenly, instead of looking at the enemy and expecting an attack, the bloody lynx looked towards the trailer. He realized that Person and Kamadan were most likely inside and if they joined, he would have no chance of victory. Therefore, first of all, you need to separate them. Bloody Lynx asked does the guy remember it? Then Kim began to retreat, and the hero said that if he runs away, first of all he will catch the rest of the group. At the words of the Bloody Lynx, Kim trembled, because he did not want to hurt his soul even more. He had very little experience. Lynx understood that Kim values his friends and now he must manipulate this. That's why the Lynx said that he had a special offer. He asked if the guy understands that his colleagues are eager to catch the whole group. However, now he only wants to deal with Kim. Kim made a choice between calmly following the bloody lynx, or starting a dog fight with his friends. After all, even if he lets Kim go, he will definitely catch two of the team. He gave the guy one minute to decide, but it looked like he was ready to answer much faster. Kim himself said that he would go after the bloody lynx, and without even considering other options. Lynx was pleased that everything turned out that way. After a short time, they moved to another location, which Kim San knew nothing about. There was bloody Lynx in front of him, and he just looked at the guy like he was a victim. The guy asked if it was necessary to go so far, and then asked where he was. Bloody Lynx answered him that at this place he first visited VN together with Respol. And so he asks the guy directly, he was interested in why he killed Respol. The guy said in a trembling voice that the Lynx had misunderstood, because he actually couldn't do anything like that and didn't remember at all. With one movement, the lynx destroyed the stone that was in his hand and asked if the guy wanted to say that Respol was nothing. He replied that he really doesn't remember anything, and doesn't understand how he was able to defeat the hero that day. Bloody Lynx said that further conversation is absolutely pointless and we need to move on to action. Even if the guy doesn't resist, the Bloody Lynx will still kill him. The guy started screaming that it really couldn't have been him, and that day he doesn't remember killing anyone. Bloody Lynx didn't like the way the guy talked about it at all, as if he wasn't on the killing team. Person, according to official figures, killed 62 people, and was a wanted S-class villain. Gamogen officially killed 374 people, and the same was wanted as an S-class villain. Shutri organized seven terrorist attacks on the government and was the target of special attention. In this world, people were wanted for murder, even for the murder of one person. Bloody Rice didn't understand why the guy was acting like a child. Kim said that this couldn't be Neva, because the guys couldn't do something like that, something must have happened. Lynx then said that Kim San himself killed two people, and asked why he decided to become a villain in the first place. At that moment the guy realized how stupid the reason was in the first place. After all, he tried to ignore reality and acted like a real stupid child. Kim's son only wanted to become a villain because he wanted to be cool. When Bloody Lynx heard this, he didn't understand anything at first. But after a couple of seconds he became furious at what he heard. Did Kim really want to become a villain without even thinking about it, and killed Repol because of it? Kim realized that he wouldn't be able to talk to this guy because Fury had completely covered him. At that same second, Bloody Lynx used the Five Spirits technique, which was also called Death God Descent. When this spirit appeared, Kim could barely stand on his feet. This was a unity technique and Blood Lynx absorbed the energy from these five spirits. He felt pain when this happened, but at the same time he gained incredible strength. 
Kim watched all this and understood how difficult the enemy was in battle. He looked at his body and realized that this guy was definitely very serious. Bloody Lynx summoned five spirits at once and was easily able to absorb them. The hero said that the guy really thought that he would be careless after he killed his best friend. The guy asked him to stop, because he didn't want to kill Respol that day. But the Lynx no longer wanted to listen to him, and simply asked the guy what he was thinking when he did this. Here I am with such great power, he used it without thinking, and now he will understand what consequences this leads to. The guy saw a very angry and strong opponent in front of him, and constantly asked him to calm down. But suddenly he disappeared somewhere, and it happened so quickly that the guy didn't notice. He began to feel some kind of energy near his face on the left side. When Kim San turned his head, he saw the enemy's fist rushing towards his face. Will the guy be able to survive such an attack? When Kim San took this blow, that is, he experienced a shock that he felt for the first time in his life. The blow was so strong that the flow of energy instantly began to spread around, creating a shock wave and scattering stones. The guy's body began to fly away, but it seemed that the bloody lynx was not ready to let go of his opponent, and again pushed away from the place where he stood. The guy tried to get to his feet, and he succeeded quite successfully. After which he began to look at his enemy. He had never felt such blows before, and it was very unsettling to realize that this had happened now. Before he even had time to blink, the bloody lynx had already moved closer to his body, and seemed to be preparing to strike with a strong blow. Another moment, and the hero's fist again struck the guy's face, and again the flow of energy began to spread. The guy fell to the ground, and his body flew into it with such force that it created noticeable cracks. Kim San very quickly realized that this was dangerous, and receiving a couple more such blows was too risky for his childish body. Therefore, it was necessary to fight back, despite the fact that now the guy was slightly scared, since he was meeting such a hero for the first time. He even managed to land one blow, after which the bloody lynx lost his vigilance for several seconds. Kim San noticed that when his opponent was in the air, he definitely received a lot of damage after this blow. Therefore, he began to think about what to do next, because he needed to take advantage of this situation and carry out a powerful counterattack. But it seems that he was not destined to do this, because the bloody lynx only had one second to come to his senses. He dealt another blow to Kim, after which his body flew several tens of meters away from the battle site. At lightning speed, he flew into a rock that was nearby, and an ordinary person would definitely die after such a blow. But Kim Sang was not an ordinary person, and even after such a blow, he was still able to stand on his feet and breathe. But nevertheless, San, who had never even really fought during his school years, had never felt this, let alone martial arts. He had never received blows of this kind, and now, despite the fact that he did not feel pain, he understood that the damage to his body had been quite significant. These were life-threatening injuries, and the guy was definitely not ready to die right now. He got down on all fours, and couldn't understand why Bloody Lynx was okay, since he'd just hit him pretty hard. The guy began to remember all the moments when he struck much weaker blows on other opponents. I realized that when he hit all of them, they flew very far away and received quite significant damage. And now he hit even harder than before, and the enemy seemed to have lost his mind for just a second. While he was thinking about this, the bloody lynx said that Kim's strength and endurance were definitely amazing, and then asked why he didn't attack. Without waiting for an answer, he asked another question, because he was interested in the fact that Kim was also very fast. After all, last time it seemed to him that he and the bloody lynx were approximately on the same level. He wondered if Kim San still had the same strength, but at that moment it was even difficult for the guy to look at his enemy. He just stood with the last of his strength and looked at him, thinking about how to proceed. But instead of waiting, the blood lynx used crimson wind, and it was an incredibly powerful technique. The guy fell to the floor and did not show any signs of life, because his body had suffered significant damage. Bloody Lynx could not understand what kind of strong body this guy had, after all, few people managed to survive the blow of the crimson wind. When the Bloody Lynx came closer to the guy's body, he began to feel some kind of energy coming from Kim's hands. He couldn't understand what it was, because it was energy that, within a few seconds, forced him to move a short distance away. Having moved literally a meter around his body, some kind of blue energy began to circulate, and this bought Kim time to rise. The guy decided to use this chance in a rather unique way, 
and stutteringly tried to convey his thought to the enemy. He started shouting that he had already said that he didn't remember anything and that perhaps what he was accused of was not done by him. But instead of understanding the guy, Bloody Link said that Kim San would soon die and would consider telling this story to Respol. Then the guy realized that it looked like he wouldn't be able to reach the enemy, and he needed to move on to action. He carried the blow with his fist straight to the Bloody Link's face, and he was unable to block it. At this time, at the Darkness secret base, all monitors were glowing red due to an alarm. He quickly ran to the computer in order to understand what happened and why the alarm level turned on. Darkness tried for a very long time to understand what happened, and when he realized it, it plunged him into horror. The bloody links appeared in procession, and now the computer was giving an error called the unification of the descent. When the hero realized this, for some unknown reason he immediately began to leave the base, all because he realized something. He moved quite quickly, since the descent means that the entire attack power increases exponentially. This can only mean that there is a death god of the highest level of skill. Moreover, such a huge amount of force use speaks volumes about this. However, this was not even possession, but real unity. The bloody lynx's aura can be depleted, causing it to die. Literally half a minute later, Darkness was already sitting in his plane, which he used only in the most extreme situations in order to quickly move. He could operate such means quite well, as he had a lot of time to learn. The engines turned on, and the plane was ready to start moving and reach a very high speed quite quickly. Darkness left the hangar and rushed towards his friend in order to save his life. The plane was flying so fast that literally after a few seconds it was no longer visible from the hangar. It was a true stealth jet, and in the hands of a man like Darkness, it was quite a powerful weapon. There was a short distance to VN, but Darkness remembered that all objects flying over VN would be destroyed by the villains. In addition, Due to the jammers installed by the villains, GPS does not work in this place, which means he will not be able to understand where he is flying. Even if darkness gets together, he will be lost there for a long time, so he decided to record an appeal to Grigori. The computer said that Grigori was missing right now, but still he decided to turn to Hanel and Master Jean. Meanwhile, the real battle took place in Israel, part of the city here looked more like ruins. In the middle of all this hell was Master Jean, who was carrying someone's body on his shoulders. He constantly repeated the same phrase, he wanted Esther to finally come to her senses. Suddenly, someone's hand appeared from under the earth, and very quickly the hero realized that this would bring him a lot of problems now. Two villains appeared in front of him, who, despite the fact that they had arms and legs, very faintly resembled people. Moreover, they had several dozen teeth, and as soon as they emerged from the ground, they immediately began to attack. Master Jean could not believe that this was happening, because he only wanted to retreat, but now he would have to fight some more. It's good that suddenly, out of nowhere, a blue cat appeared. Which was able to destroy one of the villains with one blow. But of course the heroine decided to stop there, and began to strike the rest of the villains with her powerful legs. Master Jean said that the girl was just in time, and the blue one immediately asked him if they had caught the Rhineman. At the same time, while running away, Master Jean said that they had caught him, but out of nowhere the lieutenants jumped out calling monsters, and they attacked Esther. After hearing everything, the blue cat asked where El was, and Master Jean replied that he had most likely left to deal with the lieutenants. Meanwhile, the Israeli wars no longer knew what to do, and the situation looked like a real trap. One of the soldiers said that they must declare a state of emergency for the state, and they understood that if they stayed here they would be destroyed. Moreover, one of them said that if they retreat, the villains will enter the settlement and it will be a disaster. Therefore, it was decided not to retreat to anyone in the name of God, and to hold the defense until the last breath. But as soon as one of the warriors shouted this, suddenly lightning rang out in the sky and struck one of the villains. The warriors could not believe their eyes, because everything around them was lit up in blue, and the sounds died down. And when they realized that the source of this light could possibly save them, they were very happy. The villains, who could also observe all this, concluded that this guy is the supreme hero. A Hanel appeared in the sky, and the entire sky was covered with lightning, which struck the ground from time to time. And the Hanel's face was not particularly happy, and at that very second all the villains realized that they would die here. Still, they couldn't do anything other than attack, so they prepared to strike. There were a lot of them, 
and it seemed like they had lost their sanity if they decided to attack the Haino all at once like that. The hero got ready, and his body began to emit lightning, and his face became increasingly angry. It was at this moment that all the villains realized that he only had a few seconds left to live. A powerful explosion occurred that scattered the villains in different directions, their bodies were struck by lightning. He told them that he would not allow villains to walk around this earth like this and do whatever they wanted. Having said this, he made a swift dash, and literally in three seconds destroyed more than ten enemies with the help of lightning. Meanwhile, the battle between Bloody Lynx and Kim San was in full swing, and darkness, flying on his plane, was waiting for your moment when enemy air defense noticed him. He arrived in Vienne, and from that moment he realized that he could now be detected. Therefore, it was decided to turn on the autopilot so that the plane itself would fly to the specified point where the bloody lynx was located, clear from the radar that he was moving in the right direction. Meanwhile, the villains below were talking about the plane. One of them said that some fearless man was flying a jet plane in their airspace, and asked his comrade what to do. He told him that there was no need to ask about the obvious, because this flying object just needed to be shot down. Then he took a portable anti-aircraft gun and shouted that it looked like this stranger was chanting a request for death, since he had flown here. The launch took place, and the rocket flew out of the launcher at great speed, gradually catching up with the plane. But darkness was ready for this, because when the rocket took off, the plane immediately began to notify the one who was flying it about the danger. An explosion occurred and the jet was destroyed by a shot from a man, portable air defense system, while darkness levitated on a special device. It could fly, and as soon as darkness stood on it, it immediately began to move closer to the earth. This device was innovative and could easily lift and lower the person standing on it. Darkness landed, and from that moment he realized that he needed to start moving forward in order not to waste time. And so it happened, he immediately rushed towards the people who shot him down, because he realized that they would not leave him. The villains realized that this man seemed to be completely fearless, because he was approaching them at high speed. As he got closer and closer, at one point one of the villains said that this man's face seemed familiar to him. It was darkness, and the villains couldn't understand why the bastard came here and what he wanted. A portal appeared near the levitating board, and darkness pulled out a small submachine gun from there. Darkness immediately opened fire on all the villains, and in just a few seconds they were all dead. In parallel with this, the hero contacted the bloody lynx and said that he had arrived in Vienne, and first of all he asked the lynx to retreat. He ordered to retreat now, because then they will be able to fight by joining forces. But instead of following this advice, the bloody lynx sent a stream of energy towards its opponent. Kim San again flew at high speed into the rock, and after all this, another rather impressive explosion occurred. The guy did not feel pain, but understood the incredible damage his body had received. Instead, bloody lynx felt pain, and at the same time heard darkness ordering him to retreat, saying that it was urgent. All because of the fact that he ate the power that was released against the will of the bloody lynx, and his body cannot withstand it. The bloody lynx heard all these messages, but despite them, the descent was used, and specifically the power of power. Darkness could not believe that all this was happening in reality, and asked the bloody lynx what he was doing. The fact that darkness began to turn to the bloody lynx on you brought a smile to the hero's face, after all, he had never done this before. After that, he said that he had been waiting for this for a long time, and asked Darknessa to watch how he would now destroy this guy. He picked up considerable speed and prepared to deliver the final blow to the boy's body to finish him off. Dark began to shout at him and tell him that this did not need to be done, because in this case the bloody lynx would die. If things continue like this, he will die from exhaustion, and therefore darkness must find him in order to stop him. However, the VN was full of radio interference, and because of this, darkness would not be able to know the exact location of the target. He used the maximum speed value for his booster in order to move as quickly as possible. He didn't care even if the rocket board exploded, he swore that he would turn everything around at random to find the target. Due to the fact that the guy began to retreat, the bloody lynx had to chase him. He climbed onto the rock and saw in front of him the same Kim San, who for some reason was still standing on his feet. When he saw the enemy in full growth, he said that he expected that this guy was somewhere much stronger. And after that, the bloody lynx screamed and asked Kim if this was all he could do. At that second the guy realized that the enemy was so strong that he could not defeat him. 
He realized that he would lose, and this meant that this very place would become his grave, and the last place where he would end up. In fact, at this time, Sun did not push the bloody lynx much. Although he pushed him back slightly, they still maintained the position at 6 4. But the guy who had never participated in such an extreme battle before did not have the skill to calmly understand the situation. In addition, there was one problem that very frightened Kim, his mind was rapidly collapsing. For the first time in a long time, Kim San heard an inner voice that called him trash. An inner voice told Kim that he was fighting a very weak opponent, but the guy said that that person was very strong. Then the voice told him that in fact it was just Kim who was weak, and if he took matters into his own hands, he would tear this insect apart. After that, he ordered the guy to immediately let him into his body, and a very evil image appeared before Kim's eyes. The guy immediately asked the voice what he meant when he said this. A dark aura began to appear around the guy's body, and at that moment Kim realized that perhaps what he was so afraid of would happen now. He fell to the ground, and the aura around his body became increasingly black, and left behind an even blacker trace. In parallel with all this, the bloody lynx said that the guy would not succeed, he was introduced and heard that Respol was also attacked from different sides. But with such force it was impossible to turn him, because such a weakling as Kim San was of no use. An inner voice ordered the guy to give control into his hands and let him into his body. But Kim understood that this could not be done because a catastrophe would happen again without his knowledge, and he realized that this was too dangerous. He felt that this voice was getting louder and swore that this would not happen, and he would never transfer control into the hands of the demon. Meanwhile, the bloody lynx said that Rispel was watching all this from heaven, and ordered the guy to be sure to apologize to him there. Then the guy began to think that perhaps it was worth letting the voice into his body, because this was the only way to survive. Kim San's mind gave way, and this immediately became noticeable to his opponent. He saw a bright red glow, and realized that it was better to go a short distance in order not to get hit. He jumped literally 5 meters so that the enemy could not reach him instantly. Watching all this from such a distance, he couldn't believe his eyes, because he was seeing something like this for the first time. A bright red glow appeared around Kim's body, which looked like a demonic image. But what was remarkable was that this demon occupied exactly half of the guy's body, and the other half was under Kim's control. Bloody Lynx just silently looked at all this for a while, and after all, the whole battle he saw in front of him only an ordinary guy who was tenacious. Darkness, who had been moving all this time, also felt something was wrong and decided to check his locator. The aura exploded beyond the limits of reason, and he immediately noticed it. This meant that events would unfold much worse. And when he realized this, he slightly lost hope that he would be able to persuade his comrade. The demon separated along with Kim, and even the guy himself could not believe that this was happening. He stood directly opposite his opponent, and Link said that he knew that everything would turn out exactly like this. Res Pol once. His face became more embittered, and he said that he now realized that this demon is the murderer of Rispel, and he will pay for it. The demonic entity asked the enemy who this Res Pol is, because he does not remember the trampled and killed worms. Link said that this is good, because he will teach the demon memories that he will not forget forever. At that very second, the explosive Crimson Hurricane was used, and Blood Lynx used all of his strength for this attack. Its speed was close to the speed of light, and it was moving directly in Kim's direction. But the demonic entity moved even faster, even without particularly straining. Despite the fact that the demon stood still with Kim, and the enemy was moving towards them, the demon did not think of retreating. When the Lynx struck, with just one movement the demon was able to both block the blow and counterattack. The bloody lynx was already lying on the ground, and it looked like he had lost consciousness for a while. Darkness, using all its sensors, could not understand what kind of power this was, because the enemy released the entire descent in just one time. Lynx tried to get up, but then the demonic entity began to come closer to him. And having come close enough, he wanted to bring his hands to the body of the defeated enemy. But when Kim realized what the demon wanted to do, he stopped his hand with his hand, saying that he would not allow the demon to use his body. The demon replied that the body now belonged to him, and added that all the garbage should disappear. The guy was in a panic, and constantly asked why there was such a monster in his body, and asked him what he even was. While they were not talking to each other, Bloody Lynx found the strength to stand up. He said that everything should be the way it is happening now, 
a smile appeared on his face because he was confident in his abilities. And also the bloody lynx understood that there was one more important matter left, but at the same time he received a message from darkness. He told him that if the lynx uses the descent again, then he will die. The hero replied that darkness should not worry. After all, there was still an important matter left, but before that he asked Dark to excuse him and pass on the changes to the others. He also added that he was grateful to his comrade, and asked that his last wish be fulfilled. The most powerful energy flowed around his body and he began to run again towards his opponent, while listening to darkness dissuading him. But the Link said that he had not even hit his opponent once, and was about to do just that. Suddenly the demon stopped the argument with the bearer of his body, because he felt someone moving nearby. He struck with his hand directly at the enemy with great speed that the Lynx did not even have time to blink. Confusion was visible on his face, because the blow was very strong and incredibly accurate. Moreover, the demon did not strike with his own hand, but was able to cut the enemy's body only by changing the wind pressure. The bloody Lynx began to experience incredible pain, but despite this he was not going to stop the fight. He became even more furious, and pushed off from the place and began to run towards the enemy. He ran close enough, he jumped back again, and tried to deliver a quick strike from the air. But the demon was able to intercept this, and stood up to deliver not very strong blows to his opponent. At the same time, the monster listened to Kim ordering him to stop. I understand that this is useless, he began to shout to the bloody lynx to run away faster. A few seconds later, the bloody lynx was already lying on the floor, and it looked like he had spent all his strength. At the same time, he only thought that he had not even hit the enemy once, so it was not time to die. His hand barely moved, and he tried to use it to lift his body. But when he raised his head, he saw a demonic entity there, which was preparing to finish him off. Then the bloody lynx tensed his hand and said to himself that he had to hit him at least once. But the demonic entity had already prepared to attack, and extended its hand directly into the bloody lynx's face. At that moment, the hero decided to tense up for the last time and shouted that he would strike at least once. He extended his hand, but it turned out that the limb of the demonic entity was much faster than his hand. The enemy's paw was already right next to his face, and the bloody lynx realized that this was the last second of his life. He closed his eyes and asked Respal's forgiveness for the fact that he was never able to take revenge. But suddenly he felt that the hand had disappeared somewhere and was already at a greater distance from his face. Then he opened his eyes to see what was happening there, and he thought that he was already in hell. But when he opened his eyes, he saw that Kim San, with the help of his hand, was able to stop the hand of the demonic entity that had absorbed part of his body. The boy ordered the ancient demon monster to finish, and not dare to control his body as he pleases. He repeated these phrases several times, ordering him to immediately get out of his body right now. For some reason the demon did not answer, his response was silence, which I quickly turned into action. Half of San's body was now free, and he was exhausted after the demon left him. Bloody Link suddenly said that this was the last chance, and then the guy tensed a little when he heard this. When he turned his head, I saw that the enemy directed his hand at him in order to grab him. But after all this, he gave up, now Bloody Lynx was kneeling in front of the boy, and lowered his head. For a while he just thought about things, and this silence was slightly awkward for both of them. Kim San asked him if he was okay, but Bloody Lynx didn't answer that question. He just said that now he understood everything, and now he knows how everything really happened. He understood why Kim San didn't remember how it happened, and now the Lynx believed that it was seriously another person. He also said that he now realized that Kim is not a bad guy. But he also said that Kim chose the wrong side. Everyone is responsible for their choice, and also those who wield such enormous power. He informed the guy that he had made a frivolous choice. After all, there are things that you shouldn't do even as a joke, he extended his hand to the guy, he said that he was sorry. There was a mask in his hand, and then Kim realized that he no longer had this mask on his face. He put his hand to his face so that the bloody lynx would not look at him. After this, the hero said that he should go first, because because he is a hero, he must do his job. He was sorry, because now many more people would know about Kim himself. The guy looked with horror at the hero who was kneeling in front of him, because he noticed something very suspicious. The bloody lynx's gaze was somehow empty, and it looked like his eyes had no pupils. Taking a closer look at those, San began to peer into his eyes in order to understand that he was confused. And when he got closer, 
he realized that these weren't eyes at all, because eyes don't have that color. It's a real camera, and it looks like she's been watching this whole time. The guy screamed in horror, because now he realized that this camera had seen his face. A moment later, the bloody lynx disappeared somewhere, and Kim San was left screaming here in the middle of the rocks. The entire Grigori looked at the guy through the big screen, and now each of them saw his face. Hanel was angry when he saw this, and from his look it was clear that he was ready to tear this boy's body in half. The blue cat was also horrified, because now she knew a little more than everyone else. Kim's son is 18 years old. He dropped out during his first year of high school. Grades during school years were average. Both parents fought in the war and were killed. Darkness told everyone in Grigori that he is currently the leader of the villain team Seraphim. And until he was 17 years old, he was not a superman. Moreover, he became a superman for reasons unknown to everyone, and it is not entirely clear when exactly this happened. The blue cat who listened to all this could not believe that this was happening, and believed that it was just some kind of mistake. For herself, she decided that most likely she just misunderstood something, and it's all not true. Master Jean asked the Hanel how to act, because this matter cannot be overlooked. The hero said that we need to finish for today, because everyone who is on the team now needs to think about everything they heard. A few minutes later, the room in which the conference took place was completely empty. Meanwhile, Hanel came to the president's guards, who tried to stop him, saying that even heroes should not suddenly come to the president. And they said that the president was not there, and tried to stop this strong hero, at least with words. When Hanel opened the doors to his office, the guards were still shouting to him that the president was not at home. And when the hero saw that there was really no one in the office, only then did he believe the words of the guards. The guards went into the office with him and told him that they had just told him about all this. Hanel asked the guards if President John had told him where he would go. Instead of answering, the guard said that it was disrespectful to call the president by name, even to a hero. But when Hano looked at this guard, he had to answer that they themselves do not know where the president is, a real hermit has been brought in. Hanel's gaze became a little less angry, and it was clear that he was not going to answer the guard. He silently began to leave, and the security decided to ask the guest if he wanted to leave some kind of message. It was unpleasant for these guards to have such a conversation with the hero, and he seemed more like a villain to them, because he did not look entirely kind. Hano then moved to the river, across which passed one of the largest bridges in the city. He approached one of the benches, because someone was sitting on it in an official suit and drinking something. It looks like this man was drinking beer, because there was an accompanying smell around him. Hanel sat down right next to him and also began to look at the river, which seemed to be flowing even faster than usual today. The hero said that he knew that John was here, because there were no other places where he could walk. Seeing that the president does not react at all, Hanel said that perhaps it would be more convenient for him if he called it darkness. There was a short pause, after which Hanel asked darkness if he should fight their opponent. He replied that most likely he would have to resort to this, again there was no other way out. After this, the hero asked if he could defeat this opponent, and if there was even a slight chance. Dark replied that Hanel would not be able to defeat him. Hanel expected such an answer, and told Darkness that now everything was clear to him. At that same second, John handed his small can of beer to a friend, and at the same time said that Hanel still had to do this. After all, they are heroes, and only they have the opportunity and chance to defeat a strong manifestation of evil. After all this Darkness said that they have two tasks that need to be completed immediately. Firstly, it is strengthening combat capability. They have two S-class opponents and at least one SS-class. Li Dei Rong cannot so loudly declare a one-sided all-out attack. Then Hanel asked what is the second problem, because he also needs to know about it. Dark said that it is necessary to gather all the heads of world security heroes immediately, and hold an urgent conference. The very next day everyone arrived at the meeting point and were ready to discuss important matters. There were really a lot of people here and they were all from different cultures. But they always had the same goal, they fought against evil because they were the chosen heroes. Despite the fact that they fought in different parts of this world, something still united them. Perhaps this was their goal, or perhaps the similarity of forces, but they gathered like that day quite rarely. And Haino also realized that this event was truly unique. Everyone was sitting in the conference room, and a photo of Kim's son was shown on the big screen, just in the nick of time. 
Dark was explaining the situation all this time, because he realized that there were a lot of people who still didn't understand what was happening. He informed that everyone present had just seen a simulator reproducing the death of Respol. This is the last battle of the Bloody Lynx. The second supreme hero, Princess Luzin, said that this was definitely an unusual evil hand, and most likely a Deshane, a supreme evil hand. Dar said that he allows this. Even if everything drags on, the evil hand must first be destroyed. Someone present asked if there would be enough people. After all, even if there are now small losses in the ranks of the Grigori, this will give rise to negative thoughts. It was the head of the guardians named Guardian, and he said that the reality was that they couldn't all rush to catch him alone. Spiritual Shaolin named Huan Young Hyun said that he would agree with the guard. However, it was not clear whether this boy was a villain, or whether, on the contrary, he showed his good side. Then Dark pointed to the demonic part of Kim's body, and added that this was a distortion of space caused by some powerful force. And when he notified everyone that he had found something really most similar to him, then the head of Ultra Nippon Hanzo asked what it was. Then Dark replied that it was a black hole, and it was possible that a black hole could have been discovered on Earth. It is not this boy's good and evil that is the problem. The boy, by his very existence, undermines the safety of the Earth. Therefore, he believes that this goal is unconditionally subject to destruction, and he sees no other way out. But the problem is that this hand is practically unbeatable. Based on his analysis, this power ignores all summoning spells. Warang leader, named Pan, asked if this hand was truly invincible and superior to all of them. Then the deputy head of the Temple Knights, named Joshua, interrupted him by saying that someone like the Blue Cat might be able to defeat such a powerful fighter. Dark said that based on his analysis, these fighters are not suitable, and in a one-on-one -on -one battle this is impossible. Then Jesus said that they had good dexterity. If magic is not countered against it, then the fighters will be more useful in order to resist the force. Dark he said that he definitely wouldn't be able to resist, and asked Jesus if he saw how the boy pulled out Rispel's hand in one movement. He also added that to withstand one blow you need incredible luck, not to mention three or more blows. Dark asked everyone present if they were ready to allow this. No one answered anything for quite a long time, because they understood that their enemy was quite strong. Hanel stood up from the table and said that they did not have a surplus among the hero. However, they have gathered here to be prepared for any unforeseen circumstances. Gregory will be the first to launch a full-scale attack, and when they fail, then everyone else is responsible for the next offensive. Today they concluded their meeting and Hanel asked everyone to be much more careful than usual. Moreover, he turned to Princess Lusson and asked her to be more careful, because she, like everyone else, was in danger. When Jesus said goodbye, he said that the king messenger could not be present due to illness, and then the Hanel replied that let Edward and get better. Moreover, he continued by saying that he would visit the king, but suddenly someone interrupted him, shouting his name. It was Deputy Chan, I Hanel asked this evil man what brought him here. The State Department MP said that this already looked like a mockery, and asked why Hanel didn't look at him. Coming closer to Hanel, he said that it was necessary to talk about Rispel secretly, and also said that the hero promised that he would take care of everything. Then Hanel closed his eyes and said that there are many guests here, and they should go away and talk. But the man became even more angry, and began to shout that he had already listened to all these whims. Suddenly, someone appeared behind this deputy and asked him what was wrong with listening to whims. The world's heroes gathered at this place, and then suddenly some redneck came up and yelled something. The man's rage knew no bounds, and he turned around to see who dared to talk to him like that. He asked the guard if he even knew who he was. If he had known, he would not have spoken to him so dismissively. Then the guardian asked him who this little man was and what he was like. He replied that he is a member of the Parliament of the Republic of Korea, and this is actually a very important position. The guard only asked him what this all means, and what this position influences in this dialogue. The man did not know what to answer, and suddenly began to cough. Hanel approached the guard and said that the senator was already leaving, and therefore the guard should stop. The hero turned his head towards the deputy and said that he should stop disgracing the state. The man was embittered, but despite this he understood that he was now in a losing situation. As he was leaving, he began to shout to Hanel that he would not leave after such humiliation, and the heroes would still regret it. 
Hanel realized that the deputy was not changing, and the guardian was upset that some deputy there dared to say something to him. He turned to Hanel and asked why when he called him, he didn't come, but hung up and didn't answer calls. The heroes replied that the guardian probably knows that Hanel is busy with someone else, and called him from a jushi. When the guardian was leaving, he asked Hanel to come sometime with that gloomy guy, and said goodbye. Hanzo approached Hanel and said that he had a few words for him. He said that everything was strange, because demonic beasts began to appear too often on Mount Fuji. And curses come out ten times more often than last year. Hanel said that this happens not only there. After all, the whole world is now uneasy. In fact, he believes that something alarming is happening. The hero asked what about Hanzo's friend, and he replied that this is the guy he is raising, and his name is John Jansu. The stranger greeted Hanel and said that his name was John Jansu. Then members of Gregory said that he was very pleased to meet you, and added that if Chan is under the leadership of a Hanzo, he will soon become a great hero. They began to leave, and Hanzo invited Hanel to Japan, because there they could drink a glass of sake. At that moment, Dark approached the Hanel and asked the hero if he knew this young Jansu. He said that it seemed to him that he had seen this character before, but could not remember where it was. Someone knocked on the door of the office where the blue cat was now, and the girl allowed her to enter. This man said that it was a bear and immediately greeted the blue cat. The girl greeted the guest and said that she was glad that the bear managed to enter the first division. He replied that he had to go to his parents because Grigori did not accept him, and the guardian scared him very much compared to Mr. Hanel. He also thought that now that he was an adult, the blue cat might finally want to go on a date with him. But the girl asked him not to be arrogant. The bear decided to change the topic of conversation and asked the girl if she happened to remember a guy named Chan Jansu. She said that she remembered this name somewhere, and asked the bear what happened to him. He answered her that he had come to meet the blue cat, and she replied simply to say that she did not have time to meet with some hooligan. Leaving the office, she asked to simply knock him out with one blow, and then the bear said that he had already tried to do this. There was a short pause, and at that second the bear was very tense, and just silently looked at the blue cat. She asked her comrade if he really lost to such a weak opponent. They moved to the training camp and turned on the lighting, which could be turned on remotely. Now three people stood in the middle of the large training hall, and Jianguk decided to speak first. He said that it was a great honor for him to meet the blue cat, and introduced himself to her. The blue cat replied that she knew who young Junsu was and asked him to get straight to the point. He answered her that she was even cooler than he had heard about her, and said that he would immediately move on to the topic of conversation. After all, he came because he wants to join the Grigori, and in fact, this is the only reason he came here. The blue cat immediately asked this stranger if he really wanted to join the Grigori. Then the bear grabbed him by the clothes and asked where this madman was going to go. The cat asked the bear to stop. And she said that he knows it or not, but Grigori is a collective of super people. The guest grabbed the bear by the hand and said that he was sure that the blue cat had already noticed this, but he was ready to demonstrate it again. Grabbing the bear by the hand, with just one blow he hit it with all his might on the concrete floor. The bear could not believe that this happened, and for several seconds he simply stared at the enemy lying on the floor. And then rage was visible in his eyes, he couldn't believe that the stranger just threw him to the floor like that. He stood up and asked the stranger how he even dared to attack. The blue cat asked the bear to stop, but the bear simultaneously shouted that he was going to die today. I understand that the situation is getting out of control, Nuna told the bear that she would go on a date with him if he stopped now. Then the bear immediately stopped and took Chan's hand and said that in life it happens that people quarrel. The girl tied her hair into a bun and said that despite the fact that Chan looks strong, one sparring session is needed. This training hall was built by darkness, and to prevent the heroes from destroying it, he used secret technologies. The girl advised the newcomer to use the force for his own pleasure. Can he really try his best, because the girl might get hurt? Then, well, she asked him if he really didn't know who she was, and ordered him to attack. Joan said that since she was asking him, he did not dare to linger. He folded his hands near his stomach and looked like he was ready to use some kind of technique. Within a second, he used one of the techniques, and energy began to circulate around his fist. He tried to hit the blue cat, but at the last moment she managed to dodge. The blows continued, 
and now several ghostly fists flew straight towards the girl. But, in order to dodge, she had to retreat a few meters in order to catch her breath. Chan Jansu began to use one of the techniques in order to direct a large beam of harmful energy at the blue cat. A huge ball was directed towards her, and the speed of this attack was quite impressive. When this ball reached the blue cat, an incredible explosion occurred that lit up the entire training room. The bear immediately screamed in the direction of this explosion, as he was worried that the blue cat would not get hurt. The explosion was very bright and it was difficult to see anything through it. No matter how the bear tries. At one point, through this explosion, a blue cat suddenly became visible, flying out of there at high speed. Yung Jiangsu was very surprised when he saw her silhouette, because he expected that such an explosion would at least knock her off her feet. But this did not happen, and the girl grabbed him by the neck as soon as she jumped out of this explosion. Well, after that, with all her strength, she hit his body on the floor to show superiority. The bear was simply incredibly glad when he realized that the blue cat was still able to easily defeat this man. But the girl ignored him, at the same time asking where he got such powers, because he was determined to be a man. After all, becoming a superman in two years is simply unrealistic, and so she asked who Chan really is. He said that it didn't matter at all, and asked if he would be added to the Grigori, depending on what he could do. The blue cat thought for a bit, and then said that the guy failed his test, and now he won't be able to join for sure. Chan was very angry, and asked why she made such a decision, since she had just recognized his power. He began to list reasons why, in his opinion, the girl's open-mindedness could be influenced, such as his past. But the blue cat said that it was all because he was weak. The guy couldn't believe it, because he had just demonstrated quite incredible strength, using several techniques at once. The girl repeated this again and said that this team was assembled from the best and strongest from all over the world. Moreover, she added that he did not become a hero because he received useless power. After all, the power of his level is widespread in the world. And on the very first task of the Grigori, in her opinion, he would have died with such force, and therefore she is not going to accept him into the team. They began to leave with the bear, and when he left he decided to take advantage of the situation and expressed a few kind words to the guest. Hanel and Dark watched this all this time, but decided not to show themselves. He said that he was surprised that a person became a superman in two years, and it was not like an increase in strength. It was very strange, because he did not look like someone who could become a superman in such a short time. Dark said that this is really very interesting, because this person did not use that method. Hanel said that this method is like deciding to die. And then Dark hinted that perhaps someone was behind him. After this, the heroes decided to observe this character, because his strength already creates suspicion. The subsequent action already took place in Vienne, and specifically at the Seraphim headquarters. A lot of villains had recently gathered around the van in which they lived, and they were idly walking back and forth. Ruslin asked his friend what all these villains were doing here, and he was even more interested in how they found out about this place. Then Shutrai said that he started the rumor, and the presence of villains here is planned. Person was already a little angry, and said why he did it. After all, they deliberately settled together, which no one knows about. Shutrai answered him that he just started a rumor that they had caught a bloody lynx, and this is nothing more than a chance to increase the seraphim. In any case, there would be no point in hiding, and he decided that it was better to spread rumors in order to increase his strength. Person liked the idea, but he was still nervous that something might happen. One pair of villains said that they noticed a familiar face and decided to come over and say hello. It was Kamajin, and it looked like he was talking to Person. Seeing this, the villains concluded that this team is incredible, but still they decided to come closer in order to discuss some details. The Kamajin from behind and asked if he was here with the same thought as them. The villain turned his head and asked again, since he did not fully hear the questions asked to him. Then one of the villains said that they need to pretend that they are lower and drive him away, and so on, the reputation of excellent Grigori catchers will become theirs. Gamajin began to laugh and said that even for villains, climbing on everything ready is a very bad idea. Well then, one of the unfamiliar villains extended his hand to him and said that Gamajin was not the only one who thought so, and offered to be friends. But then the villain said that he had a better idea, and the stranger asked what this idea was. Gamajin immediately dealt a sneaky blow with his razor-sharp sword, and pierced the enemy's hand. He immediately began to scream in pain, 
and with his other hand he grabbed the hand in which the knife remained sticking out. But Gamogen did not stop the attack on this, and jumped up from the place where he was standing, preparing to strike. When the blow occurred, it became obvious to everyone that it looked like this newly arrived villain would never rise again. Gamogen said that it looks like there are a lot of scoundrels like him here, and this is absolutely not the case. Moreover, he emphasized that the best solution would be to kill them all, and then only the strongest would remain. All the villains who heard this were incredibly tense, and no longer even thought about showing off. Shutrai and Person watched all this, and could not believe that this really happened. After that, they gathered together with their old company and went in search of their leader. Person asked Shutrai if the guy was still in the same condition in which they found him. He replied that he felt much better, but still the situation with his mental health was not ideal. Gamogen was not particularly worried about this guy's health, but rather thought more about his appearance. When they walked for a few minutes, they saw Kim San near a lonely tree, and it looked like he was just looking into the distance. Person was very happy when he saw him and immediately began calling him. He screamed louder and louder, and after a while the guy heard him. The reaction was not long in coming, he turned his head and there was already a smile on his face. Moreover, he no longer looked like someone who had just recently gone through a very stressful phase of life. After some time, the Shutrai announced to him the information that he had recently learned, and Kim San decided that it was just some kind of joke. He reiterated that their entire team had been targeted by the Grigori, and he thought that everyone should know the names of the members of this organization. He was never able to find out who Dark was, but she found out enough about the blue cat, and Kim should see this with her own eyes. When the Shutrai handed over the paper with the information to the guy, he began to panic and was very surprised. The guy simply couldn't believe the words that were written here, because it all didn't look as he expected. Now he realized that the blue cat was actually his classmate named Ji Yoon. Also Shutrai added that during the investigation, he found out that they are very close, and therefore he considered it right to tell Kim about this. At that moment, the guy remembered all the moments of his life in which this girl appeared, and all these memories were warm. The brightest moment was when the girl turned to him, and smiling sweetly, told him that she would be waiting for calls. Out of fear, the guy began to laugh, because as you know, laughter is the most reliable defense mechanism. He said that it seems that Shutrai was also mistaken this time, and Ji Eun cannot be a hero. Along with everyone else, looked at the guy and understood that it would be very difficult for him to believe in anything in the future. The guy started talking about how Ji couldn't be a superman, because they had studied together since the third grade of high school. Shutrai then confirmed that he 100% understands Kim's confusion, but in such moments you need to be more calm-blooded. The guy squeezed the piece of paper that contained information about his classmate and said that he refused to believe it. Moreover, he shouted and said that Ji Eun cannot be a hero. After that, he began to run away, and the Shutrai at the same time shouted to him that he should not leave alone, because it was very dangerous. He ordered the person to run after him faster, because he couldn't be left alone now, and the villain understood his mission. Shutrai actually didn't understand why the guy was reacting this way, the blue cat had practically done nothing wrong yet. Gamogen, in turn, decided to say that there was nothing wrong even if he killed the family of the blue cat, introduced himself often did this. After some time they all calmed down, and the guy kept repeating that he was fine, and person suggested that everyone go fishing. Shutrai he said that if we talk about fishing, then thanks to Gamogen, all the collected villains fled. But nevertheless, the team noticed someone near their trailer, and it seems that they were the most motivated villains. There were two men there, one of whom was wearing a regular sweater, and the second in a more classic suit. Shutrai said that he was surprised that there were at least two people left here, and they did not go home. The team came closer, and then the newly arrived villains also stood up to their full height in order to introduce themselves. One of them said that he was 18 years old, his name was Dumas, and he wanted to join Seraphim. And the second added that his name is Jang Hyuk Min. Shutrai noticed that one of these newcomers was too young, and then Gamogen noticed that Shutrai himself was only 23 years old. Dumas said that despite the fact that he is only 18, he grew up and grew up in Vienna, and if he is accepted, he will be faithful until the end of his life. The second newcomer said that he did not know that Dumas was so hot in recent days, and also said that he would serve forever. Let him ask the guy what he thought of these villains, and Kim replied that they seemed quite kind to him. 
Then this new guy started to come closer to the group, and everyone got a little tense when this happened. But for some reason he began to come closer and closer to the person, and then everyone began to wonder. Having come close enough, Dumas bowed and said that he would be devoted to him to the end, asking the person to accept him. But he answered him that he was not the leader of this team, and Dumas decided to ask again who was the leader of them all. Person pointed with his hand at the boy who was standing next to him, and hinted that this guy was the head. Dumas was very surprised that the most dangerous person in this gang was a child who seemed to be the same age as him. But despite the fact that he was very surprised, he very quickly realized what needed to be done now. Having bowed, he asked for forgiveness and said that he would pull out his tongue right now for making a mistake. Shutri noted that this is a good result, since the team will grow by two members. And Gamogen answered him that he would most likely grow by one person he said that he also agreed with this, and there would be only one more person on the team. Chan, who had been standing silently all this time, tensed slightly when person abruptly approached him. After all, the person grabbed him by the neck and lifted him to a small height, not allowing this man to breathe. He immediately began to ask who sent him here, and whether it was the Guardians or the Highlanders. Moreover, he added that if he does not confess within three seconds, he will cut his throat. As soon as person counted to two, Chan immediately said that he was sent by Blake, from the Mountaineer organization. Shutri could not believe that this man turned out to be a spy, and immediately asked why he came here in the first place. He replied that his boss ordered him to monitor and report every move of a guy named Kim San. When is Shutri realized that now it seems that everyone knows about the real nature of their leader, now he is in even greater danger. Dumas said that he would take care of this agent, and this could be his first assignment. Without thinking twice, Kim Sana said that this was correct, and he allowed the newcomer to act. Without thinking twice, Dumas struck with his knife right at the city of Chan, who at that moment did not understand what was about to happen. When this team noticed, they were very surprised by what was happening, and did not expect everything to happen exactly like this. Chan grabbed his throat, from which blood was flowing, trying to stop the arterial bleeding. Dumas certainly didn't feel any regret for this enemy, despite the fact that they seemed to have become friends while they were waiting for the team to come here. Person, together with Gamogen, began to look at Chan's death with indifference, but Kim himself could not look at it just like that. The guy immediately started shouting what Dumas had done, and then he replied that he was just taking care of the spy. But then he realized that he might have done something wrong, and apologized to such a man for killing him before interrogation. Person said that this is not the case at all, and Gamogen said that in fact he would have done the same thing if he did not know the rules of their team. Shutri decided to explain the rules to the newcomer, and quietly turned to Dumas to explain everything. He told him that in the period he would only kill when Kim San ordered them, and independent behavior in this team was unacceptable. The guy said that now he understood everything, and asked for forgiveness several more times. He then separately asked for forgiveness from Kim San, and said that now he would keep all this information in mind. Meanwhile, the action moved to the training center, where some teacher was praising his students. He sent all his students home and advised them to be careful, and they, in turn, said that they would see each other tomorrow. A voice from the side said that Maruchi, that was the name of this coach, is, as always, busy with incredibly important things. This man was very surprised to hear a familiar voice, and decided to turn his head to see who was talking to him. It was a Hanel, and he said that the guy was still the same ardent young man, and they still hadn't seen each other for a long time. Ma Ritchie was glad to see the Hanel come out, and immediately hugged his friend and asked why he came to him. But after a few minutes he said that despite the fact that the hall is quite small, he invites the hero to come inside and talk. Having come here, Hanel immediately began the dialogue with a proposal, he suggested Ma Ritchie should join the Grigori, because his help is really needed now. He replied that he had already made this decision a long time ago, because he realized that such work was not for him, because he could not punish the villain. Ma Ritchie he said that Hanel knows his character, and because of this he cannot be Grigori's assistant. Then Hanel said that if Ma was too modest, they would start throwing mud at him very soon. Come to think of it, Ma Ritchie was truly the strongest martial artist on par with the Blue Cat. But still, he did not consider himself so strong, and constantly told Hanel that he overestimated him. But he was serious and said that this time he must definitely enter the organization, because it was wrong that such a talented person lived as a recluse. 
Then Marichi agreed and said that he still had one case that he had to close. And he asked his old friend to pay him the overdue rent for this training center. The rent was almost a year and a half overdue, and Hanel was very angry, but then said that he would talk to Dark about it. After all this, the action moved to the forest, where Darkness was now located. He constantly moved from one tree to another, his locator showed that his target was somewhere here. And wandering around like this for several minutes, he found a man who was doing something unclear, but it was like training. When this man noticed Dark, he immediately stopped and silently began to look at the guest. Dark greeted him and said that Mr. Kip Chong Hwin has grown so much that he is no longer recognizable. Not seeing any reaction, Dark said that it was probably better for him to call him a hero by the name of Wing. After a short pause, the Wing said that he did not expect to see Dark here, and asked what brought him here. He answered that he had grown up and was now worthy of praise for his nutrition, despite the fact that he was still far from his older brother named Respol. Tip said that Darkness is abusing the right to talk about his brother, as their organization has still not been able to find his killer. Then Dark he said that perhaps the Chongkip need to personally look for this killer, and then they might succeed. Wing became angrier, but Dark knew what to say to make him calm down. He invited him to join the Grigori. The guy was very surprised when he heard this, because he expected to hear anything from Dark, but not an offer to join the organization. Like he said that it looked like Dark was joking, because when he begged to join them, Dark didn't even listen to him. And then he answered him that at that time the Wing was very young. Wing said that now that he is so strong, maybe the Grigori will at least enroll him in the Boy Scouts. Dark said that even though the Wing is making progress, he is still just an ordinary rookie. But despite this, there is a factor that can have a very strong influence, and it cannot be ignored. Darkness said that these days it is very rare for third heroes to have the same skills as Wing. The guy said that these were very good words, and he would think about such a tempting offer. Just a few days passed, and a large group of heroes gathered at the Grigori headquarters to discuss important details. Hanel stood near the entrance and said that their primary goal was Seraphim, and they should ignore everything except this goal. This will be a full-scale war, and Master Jean and Dark will have to lead the operation. Until that day, everyone needs to take care of their condition. There will be no reinforcement troops, because they are in VN. The more opponents there are, the larger the battle will be. Haino also added that during the penetration, they will not penetrate the VN and instantly end the mission. Meanwhile, Shutri told the others that recently they had a lot of work to do and could not train, and today everything needs to be fixed. He told the person to demonstrate some technique to their leader so that he could try to repeat it. He just immediately took a stance and told Kim that it was an easy movement and he just needed to repeat it. He focused all the energy he had in his body and tried to remember exactly how to do this technique. Red blood energy began to be released, and Kim realized that it seemed that this technique would not be as easy. An instant, and the person began to jump from side to side, simultaneously emitting a large amount of energy in causing damage. It was a four-leaf clover, and this technique was not really the simplest, and quite a few people knew about it. He turned to Kim and said that since it was quite easy, he should try it. Sure try was definitely not happy with all this. Even though he said that he needed to try something easier, the guy told him that it was at least worth a try. The guy also realized that it was approximately the same level compared to the fight with the bloody lynx back then. He tried to focus all the power he had in his body and use the little combat experience he had gained earlier. The guy thought that he just needed to try, and then he would definitely be able to repeat this technique. He took a fighting stance and began moving his arms above his head, simulating the flow of energy through his limbs. These poses were constantly changing, but nothing supernatural was happening around Kim's body at that moment. He tensed even more, and then everyone thought that perhaps now he would radiate energy. Black energy began to spread from the tips of his fingers, but it was quite transparent. Very soon this energy turned into just a small wind direction, and that was all. The guy immediately turned to the rest of the team and said that it looked like it turned out pretty good. Person was a little surprised and said it was simply excellent. Dumas, meanwhile, said that this technique is not at all difficult, and it is quite easy to repeat it simply by observing the person. Then person turned to Dumas and said that this was an advanced skill with a class A difficulty level. Dumas said that he does not find it difficult, and in order to reproduce this technique, it is enough to simply get into the right position. When he got into this position, he jumped away from several places at once, 
and he managed to produce this very person technique. Gamogen who watched all this, did not really understand how an 18-year-old guy managed to reproduce such a complex technique. But the guy only said that in his opinion he did approximately the same as person showed. Kim immediately ran up to him and with surprise in his eyes asked how he managed to do all this. But he just said that he simply repeated what the person showed, and that's where his skills end. Person told Gamogen that he should also show some of his techniques, that we would, and he repeated it. Then the Gamogen took out his knife and asked Dumas if he knew how to use his weapon. He replied that he uses it often, and after that Gamogen asked him to repeat this technique. Day by day, energy began to radiate upward into his sword, which spread in different directions in streams. And after all this, he struck vertically, thereby releasing all this energy. It spread in several directions at once, and created a huge number of cracks in the ground. It was a technique of liberation. Kim San said that it would be simply incredible if Dumas managed to reproduce the same thing. He took out his small knife and tried to repeat the movement exactly as the Gamogen did. Having collected enough energy in it, he launched a horizontal strike, and it seemed that the force of such a strike was only slightly weaker than the Gamogen strike. The villain who watched all this could not believe his eyes, and Dumas, meanwhile, said that this time it didn't turn out so well. And turning his head, he asked the Gamogens what kind of technique this was it was more complicated than what it was before. He replied that this was his secret technique, and he was surprised that Dumas was able to simply repeat it. Shutri asked the newcomer how he was able to repeat just what he saw. And he said that it's the same thing, and he just does everything he sees. Person recognized Dumas as a young genius, because such skills are incredible genius. Kim San was also happy and said that Dumas is incredibly strong. And Gamogen hugged him and added that he would become a terrible villain. The action moved to a small hut which was located in Vienne, and in which the old man lived. At this time, he was chopping the yard, and in general was doing what he did on an ordinary day. He was talking to himself, but suddenly he heard that some guest had arrived and was talking to him. It was a blue cat, and the grandfather immediately recognized her and asked why she had come again. The girl said that she was not sure that this could be called a quick return, because actually quite a lot of time had passed. The girl who was adopted by her grandfather was very happy that Ji Yoon came, and a smile immediately appeared on her face. She ran up to the girl and wanted to hug her, Ji was also very happy to see her, and to understand how much joy she brought to the child. Pell began to ask why the girl doesn't come more often, and the blue cat apologized, saying that she was a little busy right now. The little girl asked to come to the blue cat more often, because it was completely boring to eat here alone. The girl talked a little more with the child, and then sat down on a small mountain of firewood and began to talk with her grandfather. The grandfather told her that he asked the blue cat not to come again, because the hero should not be friends with a person like himself. But the girl answered him that no matter what people say about him, she does not know anyone who would support the Serbian orphanage except a Josie. Besides, it was Ajos who showed her the method of using power, and the blue cat was grateful to him for that. The grandfather said that she often beat children, and then the girl interrupted him and asked him to be silent. They were silent again for a while, and then the grandfather realized that he had to ask that very question. Dita asked G why she came here and what would bother her. She answered him with a question, she was wondering what a Joshi would do if he had to kill a friend with his own hands. He answered her that, of course, everything would depend on what this very friend did. The grandfather then supplemented his answer, saying that when a hero looks at a person, he should not pay attention only to his external image, but judge by his actions. The blue cat told him that this man had done wrong and made a big mistake, and asked if she could do as she wanted. According to the grandfather, there is no reason to forgive this friend, because this right is in the hands of the victims. The grandfather himself was a bandit who killed thousands, and to wash away his sins he began to do good deeds but everyone else still considers him a brutal killer. He also added that he will not die gracefully, and his end will clearly be stupider than death from a rabid dog bite, or it will become darker. The girls didn't quite understand why they should say this, and asked what was wrong with the Ajos, who answered her that this should happen, and this would actually be right, and justice would be restored. The blue cat did not answer anything to this, and a minute later said that she would come a little later, despite the fact that she could not appear more often due to responsibilities. Suddenly she was stopped by Payal, who started screaming and asking her not to leave here. 
The girl told her that she couldn't leave because the demon would come out soon, and the girl tensed up a little when she heard this. All because the child continued, saying that a huge demon would appear to eat the blue cat like all the people in the world. Therefore, she asked to stay with Pell, because somewhere there was the only safe way. The blue cat didn't quite understand what the girl was talking about, and at that moment the grandfather noticed that she had been behaving like this for several days. The blue cat bent down a little and said that she would kill this demon, or Kim would save Pyol in a way. The grandfather took the girl to his place and began to say goodbye to the blue cat, who told him that they would see each other later. Even when the girl left, the girl still said that the girl should not leave, because it was only safe with Pell. An hour later, Hanel said that the main goal is Kim San, and everyone else doesn't matter, and the operation needs to be completed as quickly as possible. The heroes came forward, and it was a pretty impressive team of pretty strong heroes who also helped each other. Meanwhile, Dumas and the Shirtri were picking berries not far from their base. Shirtri told his friend to be careful not to pick poisonous plants, but to collect only edible ones. Someone answered her that he was born in Vienne, and lately he has really felt the taste of life. All because he lived his whole life among garbage, and after living with Kim San, he now understands everything. From that moment on, he realized that there was something for which life was truly worth living, very simply, and for this he was grateful to their team. Shutrai he said that the same situation happened to him, because all the team members are, for the most part, no different from him. Dumas was about to say something, but suddenly stopped to listen to the sounds for a couple of seconds. Shutrai was a little tensed by this, and he turned his head towards Dumas, who at that moment had already jumped in his direction. There was a targeted explosion that looked like someone had sent a large amount of energy towards the two. When they looked around, they saw that a burst of this energy had destroyed all the trees behind them. Some girl from the outside said that she didn't even think about killing them, because now there was no point in making any noise around. It was Ellie, and she said that she was looking for Shirtri, and she was not interested in the others. She ordered the Shirtra to follow her quietly, and if she refused, she would die, saying that in any case she would not remain unharmed. Then Dumas took out his knife and ordered the Shirtri to hide behind him while he dealt with it. Then the girl jumped off the branch and asked what kind of child this was, and what he forgot here. Let's direct the sword of the wind god in his direction, she expected to deal with this opponent with one attack. Dumas was very frightened and put a knife in front of him, which took upon himself the entire attack. He didn't even see how this energy rushed towards him, and only thanks to luck he managed to hide. Then Ellie she said that this little guy is lucky, but he has very little time left to live. Dumas saw the technique she was using, and at that very second he decided to copy it. A moment later, the phantom sword also appeared from his hands, and he was ready to repel the attack. Ellie wasn't surprised by this guy's strength, but she couldn't exactly understand how he copied her technique so quickly. They crossed their blades in battle, and Dumas was determined to eliminate this girl right there. A rather powerful explosion occurred at that second, and the guy realized that perhaps he had won the battle. He asked the Shirtri if he saw how he repelled the attack and was able to carry out a counterattack. But when he looked around, he saw that one of this Ellie's minions was already holding his sword at the throat of his comrade. Shirtri immediately asked for forgiveness and said that he did not want to be a burden. Or she said that she was very surprised that the guy managed to repeat the sword of the wind god in an instant. But she also said that this did not affect anything, and asked to tell the commander that if he wants to save the Shirtri, he must come to the Kauri forest. There is an hour for this, and if he is late, then Shirtri will die. After that, without even listening to the guy, she pushed off with her henchmen from the place where she was standing and disappeared in an unknown direction. Meanwhile, near the trailer where Seraphim were usually based, someone was already standing and watching for a long time. It was a group of Grigori, and it seemed that they were now ready for action, and had never been so close to the goal. Looking at Dark, asked him to check if their headquarters is really located here. Darkness used one of its sensors to use a thermal imager to see who was inside the trailer. He looked straight at the trailer, and within a few seconds everything became clear to him. There were three characters there, and Dark told everyone else that Shirtri was not there for some reason. On the way here there were many traps and escapes from him, but not one of them worked, something definitely happened to them. Then the group noticed that someone wanted to go inside, and Hanel asked Dark to listen to what they would talk about there. Dark he said that he would try, and used another of his sensors to listen to conversations at a distance. 
Dumas suddenly ran inside the trailer and told Person that this time they were in big trouble. He started talking about how Shirtri was kidnapped and an ultimatum was given to Kim San. Everyone who was in the trailer was very surprised and were ready to listen to Dumas, because he was the only informant. They all went outside to discuss further action, and a plan for how everything would need to be done. Dumas said that he did not know what to do, because they had very little time left to make a decision. Person he said that there was nothing to discuss here, or rather, they couldn't send Kim to such a dangerous place just to save the Shirtri. He also added that this is not even discussed, because the Shirtri himself would have done the same thing. Gamogen also decided to add his opinion, and said that if they send Kim to save him, then the Shirtri will kill them all upon release. Kim San began to think about what to do in such a situation, because Highlanders are quite dangerous individuals. But despite all this, the guy understood Shirtri as part of his family, and he cannot refuse him. Without hesitation, Kim said that he would go on this mission, and they needed to separate a little before moving forward. Person didn't quite understand what the guy meant, and while he was asking, Kim said that while he was going, he, along with everyone else, had to save Shirtri. He looked into the eyes of everyone in turn and said that if everyone considers him to be in charge, then they should do as he just said. Everyone was silent for a while, but at the same time they understood that in fact there was only one way out of this situation. Person he said that he was listening to his commander, and this time he would do what he asked. Gamogen, in turn, said that he would also follow Person, and together they would definitely be able to find Shirtri very quickly. Dumas didn't know what to think in such a situation, because he had never experienced such stressful circumstances. Everyone decided that they needed to move forward right now, and said that even in such nervous times, we need to act decisively. After some time, they all walked away from the trailer and discussed a few more details. Tim said that they would meet later, and their special operation should begin. Everyone fled in different directions, as if they understood that Grigori had been watching them all this time. Kim Jong said that they are separated, and some action needs to be taken to keep track of everyone. Then Hanel said that this was even better, and ordered everyone after Kim, because this is their goal. Person and everyone else came to the place where Dumas had the fight, and he said that Shirtri was here. Dumas was worried that Kim wouldn't be able to cope there on his own, and then the person answered him that he was very strong and not so easy to deal with. And after all this talk, person he said that he needed to start tracking, and added that there was only one method for escaping and surveillance, and he was a master at it. They began to move, and Kim, meanwhile, had already arrived at the meeting place that Dumas had told him. When he arrived, he was slightly frightened, since initially he saw nothing at all around him. He began to look around to find someone, but he couldn't do it. This guy couldn't even suspect that now the full complement of Grigori was watching him and waiting for the best moment. Kip Chong meanwhile, he said that he was not entirely happy that this freak made him drag himself here. Hainel ordered him to be quiet, since he feels that someone else will come here now. Suddenly the guy turned around, as he also felt someone's presence, and very soon he realized that it was a man he already knew. It was the butcher, and Kim was not yet clear whether he was happy to see him or not, because the area around was very empty. But within a second a huge number of warriors appeared around, and Kim realized that he couldn't just leave here. He told this butcher that he was here himself, and asked where Shirtri was now. For some time the butcher was silent, and simply looked straight into the guy's eyes with an angry gaze. But within a few seconds, he, along with his entire army, knelt on one knee in front of Kim. He said that he, Daniel Blake, was finally able to see Kim, and asked him to be spared for the unforgivable behavior he resorted to in order to meet. The guy didn't understand at all what this meant and why Blake was doing this. Meanwhile, in one of the dark basements, very gloomy and scary dialogues took place. Two people were talking to each other, saying that they didn't even know that such lousy people existed. They approached Shirtri and said that if he does not want to die, he must send his friends with the help of some kind of connection to the fortress that is located on the mountain. Well, if he doesn't want to do this, then he will now lose several of his fingers, and then he will die suddenly. He once again told Shirtri to call everyone to the mountain, saying that he probably has some kind of special connection. But the prisoner did not answer, but only looked condemningly straight into the eyes of his executioner. After that, he closed his eyes and prepared himself for the fact that he would now experience incredible pain. A moment, and splashes of blood flew in different directions, and Shirtri began to scream very loudly because of this. The pain was simply incredible, 
and one of the people said that if Shutri spoke now, it would be strange that he chose to die alone. After that, he took his knife and said that he would now cut off the second finger, and so on ten times. Shutri with his last strength he said that he has person's number. One of these executioners was delighted when he heard this information. Well and then Shutri he said that he forgot to call 114 and ask for this number for some people, so it won't work today. The man said that now they will see how well the prisoner will joke when he has no fingers left. Suddenly they heard the door start to open, and one of the executioners said that they couldn't come in here, and they talked about it. Person appeared in this room along with Gamogen. They clearly didn't come here with good intentions. When person walked inside, no emotion could be read on his face, he simply analyzed everything that was in the room. First he noticed someone's hand, which was chained to the wall. Within a second he realized that this was sure try, and he was tied to the wall and bleeding. Then one of these two men asked what they forgot here, and why they came at all. Dumas was the last one to enter the room, and when he came to sure try, he realized that now life would end very painfully for these two men. Person was completely emotionless, and gave in front of Gamogen do whatever he wants with these two scumbags. And Dumas gave orders to take Shutri out of here and take care of his wounds. The men who stayed in the room were angry, especially when the villain approached them, and they realized that now, most likely, they could not just die. Gamogen he said that in vain they thought that they could live comfortably after what they did to the commander-in-chief of their group. When he introduced himself, they now realized what awaited them. One of them told him to his face that they were ready for anything. Well, then the villain told them that not the most ordinary death awaited them, while simultaneously grabbing one of the men by the face. He hit this man against the wall with all his might, and thereby broke several of his vertebrae. He offered his finger to his mouth, and advised him to be a little quieter from now on. Also Gamogen he said that he understands torture, but the only thing that distinguishes him from these men is that he is a kind-hearted man. So he told the man not to shout very loudly because he might like that shout. He could no longer even answer him, since Gamogen had crushed all his airways with his hand. From this room, within a few seconds, an incredibly loud scream was heard, which spread very quickly. Dumas approached his friend, he immediately asked if he was okay now. Shutri hastily said that everything was fine, but quickly moved on to the topic, asking where Kim was now. Person answered him that he went to the butcher, and now he is not around. At that very moment, the Shutri grabbed him by the clothes and asked if Person was really so stupid that he told him to go alone. Then Dumas asked everyone to calm down, and explained that Kim himself gave the order to everyone else to leave, and went to the butcher himself. Gamogen came to everyone else's room and told everyone that he had not had so much fun for a long time. At that very second, Shirteri gave the order to everyone else to follow Kim. He didn't care about his condition, and the fact that person constantly asked how he was feeling. He also realized that he needed to take power into his own hands for a short time, and asked Dumas to take Shirtri while they Gamogen found Kim. Dumas said that the two of them need not worry, because he would quickly catch up with them. Meanwhile, the guy was in the middle of the forest, and no longer understood what this whole show was all about. And he decided to directly ask about butchers what they even are. And he replied that he was not going to Kim. He further told the guy that, as he understood, he was the one, and if this is true, then Kim must demonstrate his true face. The entire Grigori division, meanwhile, watched these negotiations, but did not hear what they were talking about. Master Jean made the assumption that they might start fighting among themselves at some point. Dark answered him that this would play into their hands, because if during their battle at least one dies, a better situation could not be imagined. Kim San asked the butcher what this even meant, and he told him that he urgently needed to meet the demon. The guy became more frightened and said that Blake should stop talking nonsense and free his comrade. But he replied that there is no need to pay attention to such people, because now there are more important things to do. Suddenly Blake sensed something and told Kim that the negotiations might have to be interrupted. Taking out his sword, he asked for forgiveness at such an important moment, and said that it seemed like some rats were following him. Draw your sword completely. He asked who was there, he was wondering who dared to interrupt the reception of such a holy being. Haino realized that they had been spotted and ordered everyone else to take their positions to repel the attacks. The entire Grigori squad was ready, and it looks like they will start an incredible fight any minute. Kim, who turned his head, saw that Grigori was here, and this time it was not the only hero. 
The butcher, in turn, was calm, and asked what all these heroes forgot in Vienne. Did they really want to fight with the butcher, for no known reason? Hanel told Blake that they had not seen each other for a long time, and he had been waiting for this meeting for a long time. Then the butcher noticed the Hanel and said that the best hero had arrived, and as they say, he is a rare genius in battle. In the butcher's memory, this was their first meeting, and Hanel quietly said that of course Blake did not remember anything. He absolutely did not understand what this hero was talking about, but he said that if everyone had gathered, it meant that they were definitely full of determination. He waved several fingers. He gave the order to all his soldiers to eliminate the violators. The Grigori also did not stand on the defensive, but began to attack their opponents. Kim was scared the most, he came here not to kill someone, but to save his friend. Kip Chone was the first to enter this incredibly brutal battle, and immediately showed himself to be a very strong warrior. He instantly used the powerful hammer technique, and thanks to it, he eliminated several henchmen at once. But they were not confused, and a small group formed the technique of a large turtle. Hanel very quickly noticed what they were planning and gave the order to Esther to smash this turtle. Then the girl landed a short distance from the main character and prepared to use the technique. For her it was a standard technique called the Twelve Zodiacs. This time she decided to use the sign of Taurus, since it would be effective against a small group of enemies. A moment later, this sign was able to manifest itself, and when it appeared, it eliminated several enemies at once. Ellie realized that she needed to intervene and also join the fight, despite the fact that she was quickly noticed. Ma was the first to come into direct contact with her Ruchi, and immediately struck her with a side kick. Ellie recognized almost everyone who was there, but she was not familiar with the man who hit her. This guy told E that it looks like the girl is a C-rank villain if she could dodge such a quick blow. Meanwhile, the blue cat was also breaking up her attack, and it looked like she was very angry. Kim at that second still did not understand where all this was going, and was only looking around, frightened. But literally a second later he saw that it was approaching him, and from this a variety of sensations appeared. All this happened because Ji Yoon tried to throw a powerful kick right at Kim Sun. Quite suddenly, a butcher knife began to fly from the side, or body directly towards the blue cat. She noticed this at the very last moment, and for this reason she dodged, thereby avoiding striking Kim again. The butcher asked how the girl even dares to do what she is doing now. Did the green brat really dare to take a swing at the sacred demon? Then the blue cat ordered him to move away, the one introduced was not even half the power of her. They were exhausted in the battle, and Kim also noticed this, and his reaction was not long in coming. He started shouting at Ji Yoon to get away from this butcher, apparently he is actually a very dangerous warrior. By that time, the person had already run up and found his commander all over the battlefield. Approaching him, he said that it was very dangerous here and that he needed to stay away, but Kim San tried to persuade him to let him go. Person ordered Kim to get ready, otherwise such a mistake could cost him his whole life. At that moment, just one of the warriors tried to attack person from behind, but it's good that Gamogen covered him. The villains didn't understand what all this commotion was, because there wasn't even a chance to talk calmly with the head. Shirtri watched this entire fight from the side, and thought about how best to act in this situation. We had to get out of here, because both sides were targeting Kim. He didn't think that all the Grigori would come here. But he was haunted by the fact that Hanel was nowhere to be seen. During this brutal fight, Gamogen ordered Dumas not to lag behind and stay close, and he said that he need not worry. Suddenly, Dark jumped up to Gamogen, and it looked like he stuck some kind of explosive device to his shoulder. When the villain looked at his shoulder, he saw a small bomb there that glowed brightly red. A few moments later, a powerful explosion occurred, but it's good that the villain managed to dodge it. Being in a defensive pose, he said that it looked like the hero had been given a defective product. But for some reason Dark said that he had planned it that way. It seems that the Grigori were acting according to a pre-prepared plan, and the Butcher was the first to notice. He saw a handle in the sky, and ordered all the warriors to switch and attack only him. When they raised their heads, they saw that this hero was moving towards Kim with incredible speed. And the moment he got as close as possible, Person used one of his techniques. But since Hanel is one of the most powerful heroes on this planet, he was able to dodge this blow, and even launch a counterattack against Person. The guy was at an incredibly small distance from his defender, and because of this he did not understand anything. But the most important thing for the Hanel was that now Kim had absolutely no idea what was happening. 
therefore, he quite successfully managed to throw it a considerable distance to the side. Now he gave the order to Esther to use the technique that they had discussed in advance at headquarters. Esther used the twelve zodiacs technique again, but this time she used a different sign. This was the sign of Aquarius, and was one of the most interesting and powerful signs that Esther had in her arsenal. This jug of ghostly water suddenly leaked this same water, and this meant not the best news for the guy. He couldn't understand what it was, but Hanel just focused and looked at the flow of this water, all knowing what would happen next. The water began to spread in different directions, but at the epicenter itself it was not visible what was happening. Despite all this, it's a shame realized that they both had disappeared, and it was unclear where they were now. The butcher was the angriest of all, since for him this only meant that he would not be able to complete his job. Master Jean ordered the rest of the Grigori to immediately disperse and retreat. The warriors who were fighting with the blue cat at that time did not understand what to do next. The butcher gave the order to catch every single one of them and eliminate them on the spot. At that moment, Dark used his nanotechnology to track where Hanel and Kim are now. The sign of Aquarius is the ability to move objects located in the area of the Aquarius jug. But the catch is that even the magician himself does not know where to move. But thanks to his abilities and a huge number of satellites, Dark was easily able to find where they are now. He closed this panel and called the capsule to move to this point as soon as possible. When the capsule appeared, Esther also noticed it, and decided to voice her proposal. She told Dark to wait for her and take her with her to the point where the guys are. He said that this capsule was only for one passenger, and she told him that she needed to be with Hanel now. After thinking a little, he ordered her to go first, and explained that the autopilot would take her to the point, and he would follow right behind her. Sure try meanwhile, I tried to find where the guy was now, but it was quite difficult. But literally after half a minute he realized that Kim was in the rocky Balhi desert. Person said that you need to go through countless mountains to get there, and Sure try, in turn, raised his head and said that they would save time. A glider appeared above their heads, and this only meant that soon he would throw down the ladder and they would be able to escape. Person ordered everyone to hold tight, everyone was most worried about Dumas. Suddenly, someone heard something moving near his body, and this was not very good news. It was actually a butcher knife. And he managed to cut this rope ladder quite accurately. When Shutrai saw this, there was real horror in his eyes, since it was not clear how to get out of such a trap. He quickly realized that the butcher was responsible for this blow, and ordered to turn around, because Dumas had fallen. It turns out that the butcher was only able to reach the part of the rope ladder that was holding this guy. While still in flight, this guy shouted that he would catch up with them, and everything would be fine with him. Meanwhile, the action moved to the rocky desert at Parhi. Kim San stood up and tried to understand where he was now and what was threatening him. A Hanel stood in front of him at full height, and the guy seemed to understand what was waiting for him now. There was fear at his lyceum, he understood that now it would be the most difficult battle of his life. But to understand the full context, it's worth moving to the conversation between Hanel and Dark that took place a few days earlier. Hanel said that he believes that Kim cannot be a villain. There is a possibility that they will be able to persuade him. Dark didn't like this at all, especially when Hanel said that Bloody Lynx started the fight, and Kim, on the contrary, tried to stop it. Darkness could not believe Anil's words at all, and asked whether he was really saying such nonsense. Then Hanel continued speaking and said that this boy definitely had kindness left in his heart. And if he is persuaded well, then they will be able to find a solution. Perhaps Dark agreed that the boy was good, but he knew that the demon that sits inside his body is truly evil. Hanel said that Kim looked like he was resisting this demon, and that's why this changes everything. Dark said that in his humble opinion, this demon has consumed him, and now there is no turning back. Even though he understood the Hanel's feelings, actually attacking a good youth is quite a difficult task. However, this young man chose the path of evil. As a result, two of their colleagues died, and therefore the boy will have to bear responsibility. When leaving, Dark advised Hanel not to hesitate, because he is a first-class hero, and the demo that sits inside the boy is evil in the flesh. Before doing anything, Haniel decided to ask the boy if he was Kim's son. While the guy still couldn't say anything, the hero said that he was pleased to meet you, although most likely he already knows the Hanel from Grigori. Kim asked if he brought him here to fight, and he replied that he literally did not want to fight at all. Moreover, Hanel informed him that he knows that Kim is not a villain, 
because everyone has the right to make a mistake. He made the assumption that the guy already regrets that he has gone so far. And Kim confirmed, saying that he did not intend for things to go that far. Hanel wanted to lend a helping hand and say that if Kim came with them, they could overcome the monster inside him. They no longer had any reason to fight, and Hanel promised that the guy would return to his normal life and he would take responsibility and help. In fact, this is what the guy wanted, just to go back to life and pretend that none of this happened. He told the hero that it was enough to stop all this, and asked if he could live peacefully with his friends. Hanel said that this is impossible, because these are villains, and they must be punished for what they have done. Kem was not ready to agree with this, because he did not know how the fate of his guys would turn out. The hero got a little nervous and said that he could send them to a treatment center, and this is the only possible option in this situation. Kem didn't want them to spend their entire lives in a mental hospital, and such a proposal from Hanel infuriated him. He said that he would not allow this to happen, and that it would be better for him to get rid of the Hanel and run away with his friends. The hero asked him not to get excited, but the guy interrupted him and ordered him to get into a fighting position. The hero gave him one last chance and recommended that he think very carefully before taking a decisive step. The choice was simple, Hanel offered him to fight or follow him to get help. But Kim interrupted him again and told him to stop looking down at him. He swung his fist, but since the Hanel was ten times faster, he managed to hit the teenager right in the face. The guy couldn't come to his senses for some time from this blow, and Hanel had already taken a fighting stance. After some time, he felt that it looked like this guy was about to strike, and the decision was made to retreat a little. And this was the only right decision. After all, this is exactly what Kim did soon. Having retreated a few meters, Cornelia opened up the opportunity for himself to kick his opponent. This attack was quite successful, because the guy flew several meters and almost lost consciousness. Moreover, Hanel quickly moved behind him and delivered a two-handed strike directly to his head. Because of this, the boy flew into the ground at great speed, and it was not visible what happened to him down there. But Kim managed to land on her feet quite successfully, taking virtually no damage from this attack. Then he noticed that some objects began to appear around him, preventing him from moving. It turned out that this was the so-called stone wall, because of which he now could not go anywhere. But he very quickly decided to destroy one of the components of this wall in order to get out. But when he struck one blow, cracks only appeared on the wall, but it did not crumble. Suddenly, above his head, he saw several bright sources of energy, and then he understood why these walls were put up. An instant, and a very powerful explosion occurred in this stone chamber, which the hero directed there. After the explosion, a huge cloud of dust appeared, and they could not understand what happened inside. Until a few seconds later he saw a guy flying at great speed to counterattack. But Hanel was not at a loss either, and a moment later a huge stone structure began to fall on the guy's back. It was a tree deity of a much larger size than before, and it prevented Kim from moving. Using his strength, he tried to lift this tree deity with his shoulders. In a fairly short time, he was able to lift this object directly on his head and hold it there for several seconds. Moreover, after that, with great effort, he threw away this deity, whose weight was tens of tons. But after he threw away this item, the guy noticed some kind of glow in the sky. It was Hanel, and he was preparing to strike Kim's son directly with lightning. And he did it quite successfully, because the lightning overtook Kim's body within half a second. When the smoke cleared, Hanel saw that Kim's immobilized body was lying below, coughing heavily. The guy immediately realized that he was almost not much stronger than Bloody and Lynx. Despite the fact that he was also strong, he was not comparable to this hero. At that moment, it seemed to Kim that this enemy was not from this world, and he had no chance of winning this fight. In the meantime, he said that it was not too late, and the guy just needed to make the right decision, and then everything would be resolved. Kim realized that there was no way he could defeat him, and in this case, he might have to resort to plan B. An inner voice spoke inside his body and offered its help. Kim thought, because in the battle against the bloody lynx it turned out well. And he thought that it was possible that the same thing would happen this time. One who comes to an agreement with himself one day will easily get along in the same way always. An inner voice said that Kim just needs to borrow his body for a little while like last time, and then he will tear this flea into pieces. The guy realized that he needed to do everything like last time, only slightly. An inner voice agreed with him, and then the guys relaxed, 
at the same time allowing the demon inside them to act. Hanel witnessed how black energy began to be released from the guy's body and scatter in different directions. He initially did not understand what was happening here, but after a few seconds the realization came to him. All this looked very terrible, because black energy filled everything around. It was at that second that Hanel realized that only now the real battle was beginning. Half of Kim's body was occupied by a demon that glowed bright red. And this demon told Hanel that now he would kill him, without any regret. The hero focused, because he realized that now he needed to use all his strength in order to win. He took a special stance and absorbed countless lightning bolts into his body. This was the technique of the God of Thunder, and after using it, all the Hanel's indicators increased significantly. He looked focused, and already saw the demonic entity attacking him from the air. But he was prepared for this, and his body was still emitting a huge amount of lightning. Even though the demon's attack was incredibly strong, Hanel somehow managed to block it. Kim could not understand that Hanel was able to repel this attack, because in the future, no one had succeeded. It was then that the hero realized that perhaps the demonic entity was within his power, and he could win this time. But the demon was angry, and considered his opponent just a lousy bad thing that needed to be crushed quickly. Hanel was also focused, but his mind was not driven by anger. Two energies clashed in battle, and from the outside it looked really poetic, because the light and dark energies were fighting here. Esther watched this entire fight while sitting on a rock, choosing the right moment. Dark approached her and immediately asked how things were. The girl told him that it was a life, and death fight, and in general, this was the first time she had seen a Hanel give his all like this. Darkness confirmed these words and said that there is no need to interfere in the fight, because they can only become a hindrance for the hero. Hanel fought a hard battle, but surprisingly did not lose, after all, he still had an ace up his sleeve. The demonic entity's skill is still imperfect, and if Hanelia has the upper hand over him now, then an opportunity will arise. Then Esther made a decision and said that if he reached a dead end, she would shoot him with this weapon. It was the bow of the twelve zodiacs, and Esther used the power of the archer to summon it. At that same second, Dark realized that from the bow of the twelve zodiacs, a generic man could shoot three times, and superhumans five times. However, this bow allows you to use all twelve techniques. There is, of course, a risk of failure in using the same technique twice a day. However, if you do not interfere with the zodiacs with other witchcraft, this is not a problem. The zodiac is the most powerful offensive force, but whether it will affect the target is unknown. While Dark was thinking about this, Esther used her secret technique, which few had seen before. She drew the Apocalypse Knight Spectral Bow and prepared to fire. He began to shout to Esther that it was impossible to mix Zodiac techniques with the Temple Knight, eating interfered with the possibility of exhausting all the power. And if used again, death will follow. Esther said that everything was fine, and that's what she came here for. Darkness quickly realized that there was no point in dissuading her. And he just told his friend that it was necessary to deal with the enemy in one attempt. Meanwhile, the action moved to the secret headquarters of the state, where the walls were now saturated with the resentment of one deputy. He really didn't like that Hanel dared to humiliate him, because he didn't understand how he could say that to a member of parliament. He promised himself that he would not forgive this hero, and immediately began to look for the director of the military air force. In front of him, he saw two ordinary soldiers who were insulting the command and control office. From the conversation, he realized that a hero of the highest category is in the midst of a battle, and now there is a fierce battle. The soldiers talked among themselves, trying to determine the location, and tried to contact the commander. This was the battle of top-class heroes, and everyone was panicked and didn't know what to do in such a situation. Moreover, one of them noticed a deputy who was shouting that he had received permission to command from the commander. He notified that he was now the commander and ordered the launch of the combat aircraft K-0. The soldier began to take the deputy out and say that it was impossible to get permission, and he could not be here. But the deputy escaped from his hands, and while the soldier was saying that it was equipped with a special missile, and it could not be launched without the order of the president, the deputy pushed aside all the soldiers who were around and said that now he would do everything with his own hands. He grabbed the command microphone and ordered the launch of K-0 immediately, saying that this was the commander's order. The plane, which was at its home point, began to warm up its engines and prepare. The battle continued in the meantime, and became more and more fierce with every second. 
Hanel's strength was running out, but he was still able to fight further. The inner voice in Kim's body constantly said that he would kill and would immediately shred the body of this hero. Meanwhile, Chanel understood that there was not a minute to lose until the guy finally became obligated. The realization came that we needed to put an end to all this immediately, using the maximum power technique. Even a person like Dark, watching all this from the side, could not understand whether Hanel would win this time. The true talent of this hero is not at all in strength or skill, but in the ability to use the forces of nature. In this state, the Hanel can even fix the weather and control it like God. And it seems that at that very second the hero was doing just that, and was trying to control the weather. The sky directly above the battle site became increasingly gloomy, and an increasing number of lightning bolts were cruising there. The demon realized that he needed to repel this attack with any effort, otherwise everything would end very badly. Hanel told Kim that with this blow he could kill him instantly, and the probability of this was quite high. He told the guy to stop all this and follow him, because it's not too late to come to his senses. But the demon had already occupied quite a large area of Kim's body, and shouted that he was now going to kill the hero. Hanel said that it was in vain that Kim decided to die for such a stupid idea. He used the thunderstorm rain and directed all his energy into the sky, or rather into the area that was above his head. At that same second, a stream of point energy hit the target, and such a bright light illuminated everything around for many kilometers. Lightning tormented the guy's body, and even the demon felt pain for the first time in a very long time. All the energy was gone, and now Kim's body lay in front of the Hanel's feet, and it didn't seem to move at all. The hero closed his eyes, because it was a little hard to believe that he had just killed a teenager who, in fact, had little to do with anything. But suddenly the body of this teenager was once again enveloped by a demon, and it seemed that he could now control his half completely calmly. Don't waste a minute. The demon immediately carried out the attack and moved straight towards the Hanel. The hero could not have expected this, and as soon as he opened his eyes, he saw the demon's paw in front of his face. The demon managed to inflict quite serious injuries on the heroes, and Chanel quickly realized this. Is Kim really dead? This question was constantly in the hero's head, because if this is so, then the battle will be more difficult. The demon wished only evil for the enemy, and wanted the body of the guy in which he was located to turn off in order to capture him completely. Dark Eye realized that Hanel had taken up his task again and was trying to convince the enemy, so he ordered Esther to get ready. She pulled the bow of the apocalypse and began to gaze intently at the target she was about to hit. Meanwhile, the demon was just swinging to finish off the Hanel, who could not move after the missed blow. Seeing that the demon had an open weak point, Dark immediately gave the order to Esther to open fire right now. A shot was fired, accompanied by an incredible flash right around Apocalypse's bow. This projectile reached its target and pierced the demon's body through and through. This body caused Kim to fall to the ground, and the hole in the demon's body quickly became overgrown. The enemy deviated, and Esther told Dark that she was aiming for the head, but the enemy managed to dodge. He told her that there was nothing to worry about, because the girl was able to inflict a lot of damage with this shot. The demon was lying on the floor and experiencing incredible pain, and from this Kim also woke up. This demonic entity said that it would not forgive these small fleas, and would tear each of them into pieces. He swore that he would kill everyone and leave no one alive, and in this way he would be as cruel as possible. Suddenly, Kim heard someone say his name, and this made him finally wake up. Hanel told Kim that he was a human and ordered him not to allow himself to be consumed by a demonic entity. He told him not to lose consciousness under any circumstances, otherwise it would lead to irreparable consequences. The hero shouted louder and louder that they were people, and Kim should never forget about this. The guy said the word man several times, and it was clear that his gaze was completely empty. Dark couldn't understand why Hanel was talking about this nonsense, but he got distracted when he saw a glow on the left side. He realized that Esther was preparing to take another shot from the bow of the apocalypse, and asked the Dark to step aside. He said that the girl would die immediately if she used such a complex technique again. But Esther doesn't even turn her head to Dark she said that this was better than the death of Hanel, and for this reason she went for the gift. Suddenly the girl felt someone's blade near her throat, and someone said that it was time to finish. It was Gamogen. And he told Esther that if even one of her hairs moved, he would immediately cut off her head. For some reason, Gamogen did not immediately notice that Dark was still near the page, 
and he immediately pointed his gun at the villain's head. He ordered him not to move if he did not want to lose his head in one moment. Person at that moment just crept up on Dark from behind and said that if he moves, he will also die. The situation is quite interesting, and it seems that the only one who can survive in it is Person. Esther also decided that she could influence this situation, and ordered the person not to move, otherwise, she would shoot at Kim. Let him, in turn, order everyone to stand still, because if even one moves, then everyone will die. Gamogen laughed hard and said that he was surprised that Dark could not expect such a development of events. But Darkness thanked him for his concern and said that he need not worry, because he had foreseen this too. Gamogen was delighted, but so far he didn't really believe in Dark's words, since it could easily be a lie. He said that now all the Grigori are already on their way from here, and as soon as they arrive here, the battle will continue again. Person realized that the situation was quite interesting, and this made him even angrier. Everyone pointed their weapons at each other, and it was not clear how it would all end. Or maybe someone will stop them. Three sixth-generation fighters appeared in the sky, quite rapidly approaching the battle site. The pilot of the first plane said that he needed communication with the satellite to fully complete the mission. The hero and the target were too close and the pilot said that since there was a fight between them, it would be impossible to do it. The soldier told the deputy that the rocket was the most powerful on the planet, and if the hero was seriously injured, he might die. It, the deputy started screaming at the top of his lungs and said that the Hanel wouldn't even blink an eye like that, so you need to shoot immediately. But in fact, the deputy is glad that the hero also has injuries, because this means that he will definitely die. The fighter pilot said that he was ready to fire the Iraq missile, and it was already operational. Having made a full adjustment, he said that the bomb would be dropped in a few seconds. The bomb gate opened and a bomb fell out and quickly began to fall down. In the air it changed a little and went into a combat position. Meanwhile, Hanel stood opposite his opponent and tried in every possible way to convince him. To say something since he had already regained consciousness, but the demonic creature was still silent. Hanel told the guy to get ready, because it doesn't matter who dies today and how this battle ends. All this time, the hero fought not with a demonic entity, but with Kim San. From the guy's voice, one could conclude that he was tired and completely broken. He started crying and said that he sincerely wanted to end this all. Dark saw this and was incredibly surprised, but he was even more surprised by the sound from the sky. Raising his head, he realized that some object was approaching them. And thanks to the corridor magnifier built into his helmet, the task of detection was even easier. Dark quickly realized that it contained the most powerful bomb in the world, and it was approaching directly to the battle site. It's an Iraq, and it can destroy heroes and villains without much effort. Dark immediately shouted the name of this rocket, simultaneously forcing him to pay attention to it. The villains also looked into the sky, and person I realized that in this situation you need to behave as unconventionally as possible. Devices from his hand to protect against the explosion. It's just that at that very second he began to run towards his commander, and Gamogen tried to stop him. By that time, the guy heard the voice of a familiar villain, but it seemed it was already too late. An incredible explosion occurred, which, despite the fact that it was very loud, also covered everything around in flames. Person was at a safe distance from the epicenter, and saw a bright orange glow in front of him. Nevertheless, the explosion spread, and the person was thrown back several meters by the blast wave. It was simply incredible, and Dark, in turn, tried to discern a handle in all this. It was lucky that the device that he threw towards the hero flew correctly and created a protective shield around his body. Daknost and Esther went downstairs in order to apply first aid if something happened. Hanel said that he was fine, and also noted that Dark really saved him now. The hero had serious injuries, puncture wounds and overall looked terrible. He needed to be treated immediately. But instead of retreating, Hanel asked the blow where is Kim's son now. A group of villains was not far from the explosion, and tried to understand where their commander was now. They screamed trying to find him, but Shirtrite said that person must first heal his wounds, because he was close to the explosion. Meanwhile, the pilots checked the condition of the object and said that it was impossible to assess the situation due to dense smoke. The hero's condition was also unknown, and the order was given to open fire again. The pilot could not believe that he had just received an order to relaunch the rocket but the deputy actually ordered it. Preparations were made for the second bombardment, and the pilot checked all systems for serviceability. 
but suddenly the pilot felt that there was a collision with some object in the air, and everything had to be checked. He looked to the right side, he saw nothing, and when he leveled his head, he noticed a demonic entity on the protective glass of the fighter. There was real horror in his eyes, since he was one of the first people who saw with his own eyes the personification of death. The deputy who was at the headquarters heard the pilot scream, because he saw a real monster. The face of this demonic creature would frighten anyone. After all, he looked like a real Satan. The pilot didn't even manage to get a good look at this creature, but a few seconds later it jumped on him. All he had time to do was scream very loudly while the demon was approaching his plane. After this, a powerful explosion occurred, and the sixth generation fighter crumbled into many metal parts. Gamogen, who watched all this, said that it seems that now the commander looks completely different. A sure try added that he should return to his body. Only person was sure that the commander was in danger when he was in such a state, because now it was not him, but only a demon. Several more explosions occurred in the sky, because having dealt with one plane, Kim immediately jumped onto the second. Hanel, who was watching all this, could not understand what this guy was up to and why he was cracking down on the planes. Dark told his comrade that it was like the personification of despair, and added that he did not know that such creatures existed. Now he has come to the realization that no one can stop him, and he doesn't know what to do about it. The demon moved constantly, and now there was only one plane left, which, with the help of technology, could levitate in one place in the air. He decided to go with him, but for some reason this attack was much weaker than the ones before. The demon landed right on the glass of this plane and grabbed it with his strong hand. Everyone who watched what was happening from the ground could not understand why this plane did not explode like the others. Moreover, it became even more strange when this plane began to fly away. Darky said that they had problems, because the dynamic entity flew away along with the rocket, and noticed that in that direction there was the city of Parhi. As soon as he said this, the Hanel fainted, and Esther tried to help him get up. Meanwhile, the action moved to the outskirts of the city of Perka, where now it was also not entirely boring. There were two warriors standing here, and it looked like they had just been in battle, because they were breathing very heavily, and all their bodies were covered in blood. In front of them stood two villains who said that they did not believe that there could be such weak heroes. Suddenly, a woman appeared out of nowhere, and it seemed that she was hostile to these villains. It was Princess Ryashin, and she used heavenly fireworks, which was her secret technique. She began to spread the flash in different directions, and thanks to this, the villain was immediately eliminated in the blink of an eye. After all this happened, Ban immediately came running to the princess, because he didn't even expect that the princess would attack the opponents like that. The princess said that there is no need to wait so long, because at this rate, Warang will be called the weakest organization of heroes. Moreover, she added that even the retired old woman alone did better than several heroes who were young. Suddenly, this old woman heard something, and moreover, she began to feel some incredible amount of energy. She told the heroes nearby that something was coming here, and he fell silent for a while. The princess did not make any sounds for several seconds, because she was trying to understand what was the source of the sound. An order was given to evacuate all village residents immediately, but the heroes did not begin to carry it out, since they had not yet understood anything. At a short distance from the forest area, if there was a group now, a plane could already be seen falling at high speed. And when he crashed into the ground, an incredible explosion occurred, from which everyone immediately retreated. Ban advised the princess to be careful and stood in front of her in order to protect her in case of emergency. Nothing was visible through this fire, because it was still very dense and did not allow anyone's silhouette to pass through it. But after a few seconds it was clear that a demonic entity was moving through all this fire. The princess was scared when she saw this, because she had never seen someone with an incredibly strong dark aura. She reordered the bank to quickly evacuate all the villagers and bring all the warang to this location. Looking at the princess, the demon repeated several times that he would kill her, and his step became faster and faster. After a short period of time, he began to run and look straight into the eyes of his enemy with his angry grin. The princess prepared herself, as she understood that an enemy with such a strong dark aura would definitely not be an easy target. She sent red sparks directly at the enemy, as she understood that this was her fastest technique. But it seems that the dynamic entity did not care much about this, since its dark energy was quickly able to absorb this technique. These sparks disappeared very quickly and did not cause any damage to him. 
The princess quickly realized that the enemy did not even move or try to avoid these attacks, because his energy itself absorbed everything. After all this, the hero used a flash to throw the enemy away and by himself some time. But this flash also did not cause any damage, and the demonic entity only stopped for a few seconds. Well, nevertheless, this demon still had a confident grin, and obviously knew what he would do next. But still, something happened that made him think a little, because the princess used the black spot technique. She directed all her strength to hold this spot, and so that the enemy could not break through it in any way. But nevertheless, the demon was still confident, and realized that he had incredible strength, capable of shaking his enemies. With one movement of his hand, he was able to break this technique and get out of the spot. The princess was incredibly scared, because she understood that she did not have the strength left to use any kind of protective technique. After all this, Demona struck the princess, and her blood gushed in different directions like a fountain. The woman instantly experienced unearthly pain, because her hand was cut off, and the arterial bleeding became more and more intense. She could not believe that some creature could have such great power, and simply looked at her executioner. The demonic entity swung its hand in order to finally finish off the enemy. The demon screamed, and at the same time prepared to kill the princess with one very strong blow. Suddenly, some kind of aura appeared around his body, and this did not allow him to develop this blow further. This aura became more and more dense, and after some time the demon was raised to a rather impressive height in the sky. These were the heroes of Var, and they used a collective technique to seal this demon. Ban ordered the princess to be taken to a safe place right now, because she must not be put in danger. But even with her hand cut off, the princess was worried about the villagers, but one of the heroes said that they had all been evacuated. He advised her to move away so that he could help her with a comparison, but she told him that all heroes needed to retreat immediately. She explained that this demon is sucking up all the energy, and the technique needs to be completed right now. Clear from the face of this demon that he had everything under control, because he still had a lot of strength left. He was extra loudly saying that all these little insects, despite the fact that they are trying to resist, will still die suddenly. Dark energy erupted from this dome, and it became obvious that it was becoming even stronger. Ban was the first to notice this, and then he realized that he needed to stop performing this technique. But before he gave the orders to do this, the demonic entity left the dome and headed towards the earth. As soon as it landed, an incredible explosion occurred, and many heroes were eliminated after this. Ban gave the order to stay in the camp and take the princess away, while taking care of her wounds. But with the last of her strength, the princess said that she needed to retreat, and the Ban did not understand why she should do this now. Using some kind of technique, the princess explained to him that he needed to retreat now, and order the heroes to retreat at least 100 meters. At that second, Ban understood everything. It seemed that Princess Ryashin was going to use the most powerful flame spell she knew. The fire burst straight out of the ground and instantly enveloped the princess's body, simultaneously increasing the temperature around her. Ban gave the order to the other heroes to gather everyone and retreat, because they had to go at least 100 meters. It was a very powerful spell that burns everything in its path, and some even said that the smaller the area affected, the stronger the heat. Ban very quickly realized that the princess was going to kill herself, because it was impossible to survive after using this technique. The demonic entity said that no one would get out of here alive. It was about to move towards the heroes who were running away, but the princess suddenly told him that she was still standing here. Using summoning magic, specifically the wings of the phoenix, she looked her opponent straight in the eyes with contempt. She notified this creature that it would die here with her, and nothing else could save it. The temperature around became higher and higher, and even the trees began to burn. Moreover, the iron swords that remained lying on the floor were already red-hot, and were deformed from the effects of temperature. But nevertheless, the demon still stood at full height, and we were already looking at the enemy. The princess quickly tried to figure out what to do next, but it was not obvious who could withstand such heat. It became even scarier when this demon began to move, gradually approaching the princess's body. He looked truly menacing, and even though the heat caused him little damage, he was still able to move. About a few meters away, he stopped and looked at the princess, ignoring the fact that the earth under his feet was turning into real lava. The princess understood her mission, because such a monster should not come out into the world, and she swore that she would do everything to prevent it. By that time, 
the demon had already approached her quite close, but the princess still repeated that she must destroy her at any cost. The demon got ready and said that now the princess would die, Ryasin had literally a second to make a decision. She closed her eyes and thought, is there really nothing that can be done about this situation now? But when she opened them, she delivered a rather significant blast of energy directly into the demon's body. This brought her incredible pain, but the princess also realized that this attack needed to be developed further. With the help of the situation that had developed, she had half a second to secure her arms around the demon's body. After that, the princess used the spreading of her wings, and it seemed that by that time, a plan had already appeared in her mind. Moments later, using this technique, the princess rose with the demon to a height of several hundred meters. The bank, which by that time had already retreated along with the rest of the heroes, saw only a large beam of light in the sky. This color constantly spread brighter and brighter, and the princess held the demon close to her. With the help of these phoenix wings, she was able to fully fly, while at the same time not letting go of the very heavy demon. Moreover, she managed to reduce the altitude above sea level, which had a positive effect on energy costs. The demon thought that this old woman seemed to have gone mad before her death, because she was doing some strange things. The princess only smiled in response and said that this is called the great sacrifice, and such evil in the flesh cannot understand anything. And then the old woman suggested continuing their failed dialogue in the next world. The demon did not understand what she meant, but it was already too late to jump away. At some point during the flight, the phoenix's wings remained glowing even brighter, emitting more heat. Then these wings closed, thereby creating a temperature inside themselves of several tens of thousands of degrees Celsius. Ban, along with the rest of the heroes, had already gone out to the cliff to see what happened at the battle site. The realization came to him that the princess was dead, because it was simply impossible to survive such an amount of heat and energy in the body. The temperature after the explosion remained lower and lower, and the sea also calmed down. If you look closely into this sea, you could see that at the place where the battle took place, someone's body was lying. Of course, it was Kim San's body, and at that time it was not yet clear whether he was alive or dead. The next day, according to all the news, mourning was declared, because yesterday in Porhi the princess died in her 68th year. Hainal was also taken to the hospital after being seriously injured, and the details of the incident are still unclear. The deputy, who was at home at the time, could not understand what was happening around him. He asked if the guardian had really lost his fear, since he was going to harm the heads of the members of Congress. The guard ordered one of his assistants to arrest him right now. The deputy was confused, and at the same time shouted that the guardian was allowing himself too much and was making a big mistake. But after lighting their cigar, the heroes only said that the deputy was abusing his power, and launched that rocket. He asked the deputy if he knew what he had done with this action, and how he influenced the course of events. But he replied that everyone misunderstood him, and in fact, with this action he wanted to protect the country. No one believed him at all, and the guardian only silently looked at his assistant. At that moment, he broke off the deputy's hand even more, thereby immobilizing him. Perhaps this man's arm was broken, but after the assistant did this, the deputy began to scream even louder. Leaving the office, the guardian ordered his assistant to push him into a prison for villains today. But he told him that they were still detaining a deputy from a country that was not theirs, and were going to put him in prison for villains. Fear answered him that if the protests were raised as a sign of diplomacy, then he would quickly decide, and until that moment, let the deputy sit in prison. But meanwhile, the action moved to the hospital, which was one of the best in the whole country. While here, Hanel said that he could not believe that the most legendary hero had come here. This hero was in a wheelchair, and said that he could not help but come when such a hero was in a deplorable situation. This was the chief of the Temple Knights, who was a member of the third generation of supreme heroes, under the pseudonym of the Lion King Edward IV. Despite the fact that he made fun of the Hanel, he said that he looked good, and this only meant that the evil had passed. He took it out on his phone. He said that he would never see something like this again in his life, so he decided to take a photo as a souvenir. After that, he cleared his throat, and Hanel realized that he also had something to say. He told the guest that he had heard that Edward was already doing very badly with his lungs, and he hoped that his visit with Hanel would not make him worse. He said that everything is fine, he will feel even better if he laughs from the state of Hanel. After that, he put away his phone and decided to ask the hero how the battle went. 
He answered him that it was a complete defeat, and he could not find any other words. Then Edward told him that they were not athletes, and it didn't matter to them whether they lost or won, what was important was whether they could suppress the enemy when they met again. Therefore, he decided to ask Hanel if he could suppress the enemy when they met again. He thought for a while and said that it was useless, because despite the fact that he did not use all his strength, it was difficult for him to resist. And when he finally reincarnated, Hanel was scared to even think about what could happen. Edward said that he suspected so, and handed his friend some kind of artifact. It was his most powerful weapon, the Sword of David. It made him the supreme hero. He argued for the transfer of this artifact to Hanel by the fact that there was no need for it to gather dust in the hands of a living corpse. Hanel said that he is grateful to Edward, but accepts him only in words, because it seems to him that he will not need a weapon. Then Edward thought a little and said that Hanel still had fire in her eyes. Lowering his voice a little, Grigori's member told him that it was not the hero who lost that time, but he. And now he will fight until he loses his pulse. Besides, he is not as special as Edward, and therefore will not be able to use the sword properly. Edward then said that despite the lack of a sword, Hanel still has a friend. The only one who was able to knock him down and gave him his first defeat. The Grigori were at a conference, and they talked about the fact that Esther was still in the hospital, and in general the atmosphere in the organization was not very good. They agreed that this strategy was a complete failure, and with it they suffered a huge number of casualties. The Blue Cat was not very inspired by the fact that Dark was constantly looking for something on the computer during their conversations. But Darkness was silent for some time, because he needed more check all information. Then he closed the laptop with a strong blow of his hand and said that the work was over. But he did not answer any questions, but only left the conference room and said that he would be back soon. When Master Jean asked him when he passed, he told them that he would go to the Seraphim team of villains. Meanwhile, Sher Terry was near all the other friends, and told Kim that he had found Dumas. They walked to the exit from their shelter, and the guy didn't know what to expect from all this. Sher Tri told him that he had found Dumas, but that did not mean that he could save him. Kim was simply silent, and without a word came out to look. They were all silent, and waited to see what reaction the guy would have to what he would see now. Kim was simply silent, he looked at what he saw on the floor, and could not believe that having such power he could not prevent this. Dumas' body lay on the floor, covered with special polyethylene. He moved the package a little and saw that underneath it lay the body of the dead Dumas. Person came closer to the chemist and said that it seemed that he could not get out of the forest, and he had a through wound on his forehead, which means that he could have met Dark. Kim squeezed the plastic that covered his friend's lifeless body and was very angry. The guy could not understand who he even wanted to become. A hero who saves the world. Or a villain who destroys it. He told Kim that she couldn't stay here for long and needed to move out now. Even though he didn't understand what he meant, he very quickly noticed that dark energy began to ooze from the guy again. A demonic grin began to appear, and now the guy no longer disdained to let this demon into his body. Everything became clear to him, now he understood that the villains must unite with each other. It seems that the guy has finally become a villain, and there are no good intentions left in him. He remembered the questions he had asked himself before. Then he thought what he would do if he someday became a superman. Will he get rich? Will he become successful in sports? Will you be loved by everyone? Everything turned out completely different. Kim's son chose a dark path and became the most legendary and deadliest villain in the entire observable universe.